Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being well our family run customer service team are on call 24 7. they're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible and not only will they take your order they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Good morning, good morning. And what a fabulous day we've got for you today. It's going to be really, really good. We've got some amazing things on here, including Elna sewing machines available. <laughs> Can't believe that. They've been like gold dust, haven't they, sewing machines? And we've got Jane Brogan coming in later to take us through all of the sewing machines. But before then, of course, we have our early bird, we have our panel of the week, and then we have Sally Ann Harrison waiting in the wings there to show us her first thing. Now, let's start with our brand new fabric early bird offer, which is amazing. I'm not sure if the birds are tweeting. Are they tweeting? Oh, yes, I can hear them tweeting. Very good. So that's our early bird offer. Now, what we have got here is two pieces of fabric and a panel. So these are half a metre each. Let's have a look at these. This is all in the bundle, so it's $16.95 for all of this. So you get two half metres. This is one of them. It's, it's all sewing themed, look. Can you see with all these lovely things on it, all these little sewing machines and pin cushion? It should be over £20, all of this. And this is a half metre. This is one of them. So in these lovely colours here, and it's a really beautiful quality as well. It's a lovely feel, 100% cotton. And then we also have the same print, but, oh no, it's not the same print. Oh no, it's a different print. Look at this one, this one's nice. This is in the blue. So look at that, this one's, this is more dressmaking with panels and things. Isn't that fabulous? 
with the rulers and have dressmaking guide. There's lots and lots of half metre of uh, this one as well. So there's lots of little projects you can make for the sewing room out of this. It's really cute. But then you also get this lovely panel. They can often be £10 each, these panels, but look at this. Again, this is so cute. That could be the centre of something, centre of um, a small quilt, lap quilt. You could actually cut out various bits and use them as a plique. You could make a bag. That would be really, really nice. Big cushion for the sewing room, for your chair. It, I mean, even just as a simple wall hanging, that would be nice, wouldn't it? It's just so lovely. That's really pretty. So that's just a nice little sewing stitches, it's called, this one. For £16.95, and that's all of that, so you're getting the panel and the two half, half metres all together. And it's lovely quality cotton. Now, a quarter of the stock has already gone. Um, so if you're thinking about it, and don't forget, the reason we bring this early bird is to get us going, get us started in the day. And once you've paid your PMP, your £3.95 PMP, that's it for the day. You don't have to pay that PMP again. So you check out your basket, come back, buy something else, and then check out again. PMP doesn't matter anymore because you've already paid it the once, and that's all you have to do. We're gonna, gonna, I'm just going to get them out again one more time so you can really see the detail of these. These are absolutely beautiful. Half the stock is now gone. Can you see all the difference? So this one is all the sewn implements. You've got threads, quick unpick, buttons, lots of different sewing machines, all these decorative scissors. You could, these could be lots of store, you could make storage bags, you could actually combine them and make a sewing machine cover. Um, you know, look, make a mat to put your sewing machine on to deaden the noise. Lots and lots of things. When you've got sewing fabric like this, there's lots of things you can do. And of course, if you've got sewing friends, you can make some really beautiful gifts as well. And then we have, I think this is, this is possibly my favourite of the two, because, of course, it's dressmaking. So look at this. They've got all the detail on this. All the, I, love, I just love it. It's got all the patterns. It's sort of got patterns from different ages as well. So there's very much 60s here. And then you're going back a bit in a little child. Save time as you sew. It's so lovely, all these little things. I mean, you could even do, you know, some, some of the little tiny bits. You could actually do with button covers from it. Make a little sewing case. Make some zipped bags. You could, you could use it for card making. I keep catching that zip which comes in a minute. That's really lovely. And of course, don't forget, as well as those two half metre pieces, we also get this fabulous panel. Look at that. So that's beautiful as well. And I, I mean, just I just love the, the sizes of these pieces. If you cut them into the pieces that they are, you could make little bags out of this. You could make a little needle case. Or you could, here, I'll look, you could, do, you could do a nice little needle case with that one because it's got needles and pins. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this. This is really lovely. Makes a great gift as well if you know somebody who sews. We've now got less than 20 of these available, so we are going through them very, very quickly. Really lovely, beautiful quality fabric. So you're getting a metre, which is two half metre pieces, plus the panel. Oh, there's our little bird again. This is our little birdies, our early bird offer. <laughs> now, we also have, of course, the panel of the week. So this is growing in popularity, and this is something that we started quite a few weeks ago now. Each week, one of our beautiful panels is presented at a special price with a huge saving, only for the week. On this one, this is called a marmalade. Marmalade. You have 16 strips, and you're saving 11 pounds. This is 8.99 for this. It's like, it is, it's really, it is a treat, this one, isn't it? And I love the fact that you could 
you could totally cheat, as I always say this, you could totally cheat, and you could actually just use a piece like that without cutting up the strips. You don't have to cut them up, and then you can do a bit of quilting on it. It looks like you've joined them. I was also thinking today, because I need, I need another nice bag, what I was thinking was you could actually use just half, half of the panel, you could make a bag, so both sides of a bag, like that, so it goes sort of that size now. And then you can make the bag out of those top ones and you could make the handles out of the bottom ones. And you've got a very, very quick tote bag, which looks really lovely. Or, of course, cushion covers, a bolster cushion. Or oh, what about, you could do pin tucks between each bit. That would look really nice. Or what about a draft excluder? Hopefully we won't need them much more, but because you've got the long strips, that would look really nice. I mean, there's so much you can do with this. What do you think, Sally Ann? What would you do with this? I'll just put you on the spot there, haven't <laughs> I? <laughs> what would I do with that? It's just even cushion covers. It's cushions, it shouts that strippy sort of cushions. Yes. It comes to mind. Um, Quite simple, really. Yeah, simple, straightforward, strippy cushions. And you could, I mean, if you if you do tucks, as, as um, Hannah was saying just now, you can do tucks like that in it, and then you could do twisted tucks, a bit like you're doing yeah. when you're pulling yours back in a minute. And that sort of thing would look really dramatic with these stripes too. Also, lots you could, lots you you could add, add like rickrack or lace or braiding between each, yes. take the panel as it is, and just add your own braiding and rickrack trims. So that you get create a little bit of depth going on there. That would be yeah. good too, wouldn't yeah. it? So so much you can do with this. You Sally and that and I just taking one look at this and think, yeah, we can do this, we can do that, yeah. we can do. <laughs> so really lovely. So this is eight ninety nine for this lovely big piece, with all of this only this week after Sunday if stocks are still available, it goes back up to its regular price, and you are saving eleven pounds today or any other day this week. Now, how to get in touch. If you want to get in touch, if you've got any questions you want to ask us or any comments or something you want, because if you want to be interactive, then please do. You can get to us by email, studio at sewingstreet.com. And on the Facebook, you can join us. I've got that sort of scrolling by my side here, so that's, you can message that. Um, and of course, on the website, um, must talk about the website because if you go onto the website and you click watch live, um, no, there's, there's a little hint there, we've got www.sewingstreet.com, you can scroll down and you can see all the products that we have got on the shows today. Now these aren't in the order that the shows are, um, we've already gone, we've put them through there so you can have a look. These are the sewing machines that are available. So the 720 is back, but it is limited stock. Now this is a very, very popular machine. Um, we've got Jane from uh, Elna who's going to put them through their paces for us, but just so you can find them. And then also the, is that the 570, did you say? 570, we're not demoing it today with Jane, but just let you know there are some available and it is in single figures. Nice little machine there. And then this one, this is the big boy. This is the 780 plus. We are going to spend some time looking at this one. It's an absolutely fabulous machine, it really is. Now, they're already on. So they're on there at the moment. Um, if you go to pre-order, you can also see everything else as well. So these are all the other things that we've got to, including what we're going to do in just a minute there. Um, and we've got a lovely William Morris. Look at those fabrics. Oh, I can't wait to get those and I'm open those. We've got this brand new Aurifil thread. They say it's sash code, but it's actually any hand sewing, 12 weight. It's beautiful in a kit, beautiful fabrics. Look at those. Uh, we also have on there a William Morris quilt, which we're getting to. There it is. Split pay. Absolutely amazing. So that is later on today. So don't miss that. So you can, you can pre-order anything that is there. And of course, you can see what we've got. But let's have a quick look at the menu for today. So as I mentioned, Sally Ann is here. She's got her quilt makeup bag, which is really lovely. It's really, it's really cute. 
and she's already on the pre-order. You can already buy it. We've got different Liberty bundles. We've got kits for you there. Nine o'clock, we've got fabrics and tools. Some of those lovely fabrics we hinted at just now. 10 o'clock, Sally Ann is back with the William Morris Stand and Stars quilt, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's huge, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. And that centre star looks so three-dimensional. At 11 o'clock, we've got the Elna 780 with Jane Brogan. And then we've got the, at 12 o'clock, we're staying with Jane with the Elna 720 and the 664 Pro machines. So we'll be putting those machines. People are already asking about the 720. We do have a limited number of them, I'm sorry to say. They're like gold dust sewing so machines at the moment, they really are. So it's very exciting that we've actually got some here. Right, now, Let's go through these kits. We've got three bundles to make this lovely makeup bag that Sally Ann has designed. We're going to start with the pink colourway. And what the bundle includes is this really beautiful Liberty fabric. So Liberty fat quarter. Obviously the instructions. You get also get a fat quarter of the plastic and it comes folded but Sally Ann is going to give a tip on how to iron that. And then you have the pink, half a metre of the pink blush, plus the zip. So you've got all of that there. Now, the instructions are very, very clear and easy to follow, beautifully presented. So they come as well with this kit. So it's 19 99 for all of this. You will need a few other bits and bobs. It says what you need in the front here. Um, most of those will be things you've got or you can order them on our website. Things like the friction pen, the fabric glue, threads, etc. So you can order those things or there might be things you've already got. Um, you do need to have some kind of wadding and I think you've used a fusible, yeah. you've used a style Starville. Starville, is it called? Starville or, or, or Bozal. Bozal, Bozal. So yeah. either of those. Again, they are on the website. So that's the first of our kits. That's a really lovely one with this beautiful pink. Then we have a blue one. So again, we have the, ha the half metre of the plain blue. We also, of course, have the instructions and the plastic, which is a fact the fat uh, quarter and then we have this lovely liberty print which is pe peeps through the windows so this is really pretty so that's the blue and of course the zip each time the zip this is the most popular for, um, for at the moment by the way and of course the zip that comes with it and then we have the neutral so again we have a nice, it's sort of like, um, it's got a fleck in it, this one, actually. I like that. So it's this lovely sort of creamy colour. Obviously the zip, the instructions, the fat quarter of the plastic, and then this beautiful pinky floral. And again, is this Liberty? Looks like it, it doesn't is it? Liberty, yeah. isn't it? Really beautiful. So it's 19 99 for this one. This is a neutral one. And then we also have, if you've got your own fabric and zip, etc., we have got the pattern on its own. And as I said, the pattern is fabulous. It's very clear and easy to follow. Uh, the pattern on its own is 9 99 Just showing you here how lovely it is. Very, very clear. Now... We don't have it in the studio, but we're going to see Sally Ann use it. But that's the Starville um, fusible. So you just need a half metre of that, and it is on the website. We do also have, now she also uses some little rickrack trims. So we do have these rickrack trims. So we have them, so that's, a, that's the Starville, that's the, the wadding that you need. Just in case you're buying these things separately. And the Rick Rack we will look at later on, but that's just to give you an idea. So if you want to do the Rick Rack to finish it off, as Sally Ann has, we have those. And again, they're on the website, but we will look at them later. But what we want to do now 
is get on to the demo with Sally. So over to you, Sally. Um, I know a lot, this is an extension of the Liberty chain needle case, which I think we did in sort of December time. So if you like that technique, this is a variation of that. So basically, it's, this is actually machine sewn, whereas that one tended to be hand sewn. Um, the other thing I would say about my patterns is if you buy one of my patterns through Sewing Street today, that I have got a little pattern club um, and everybody's welcome to come and join the club and in there there's extra demonstrations and people share their makes so you can see what people have made, what colours they've used, which is always really interesting. Oh, that's lovely, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because it's, I mean, even though it's the same pattern, as you say, the difference oh, that people amazing. use is, it looks so good, doesn't it? Yeah, the differences. So, where should we get started? I, I'll just pick up, so this is the one that I made, this is my sample, I'll just... And it's really difficult to take photographs of. And I can remember when I put it on the internet in initially, somebody said to me, Aren't, isn't everything going to fall out through the holes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Can you see? So the idea is that the little windows actually feature, you can see through and you can see the sort of feature fabric behind. So there you go. And I, and I just added a few little pearl buttons. And there's the rick rack that Wendy was talking about. And then it's just a quilted. So it's nice, nice sort of simple design, but yep. it just looks really stunning. It does, doesn't it? And I, saying that, I'm going to love to see it in the blue because I haven't. Obviously, I've made pink. I've got a pink sample, and I've made a. Sorry, I've brought a pink sample, and I'm making a pink sample. But it's a little bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Because it's called Little Pink Bag, and we're doing it in blue. But it's going to look great in blue. <laughs> does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> you can be blue if you want to be. Okay, so the technique is built around the fact that when you actually make your little windows, they all the wind all the strips are bias strips. So I thought I'd just be really clear to start off with. And it actually shows you this inside the pattern that you need to cut bias strips. If you don't cut bias strips and you cut them on the straight grain, you won't be able to fold the little windows back, if that makes sense. I'll just show you. Can you see all of these are cut on the bias so that they peel? See that? Yes, they wouldn't fold like that, would they? No. If they weren't. Okay. So don't cut them on the straight of grain. So I'm just going to give a... So I've taken the pink piece and I've just folded across straight. Can you see that in the... Yeah, so you folded it on the cross you, to get you, the bias. Yes. So And then you would cut your strips. So I'm just going to... And the pattern requires two inch strips. I think I'm going to stand on tiptoes to get all the way across here. <laughs> That's quite high, <laughs> isn't it? So. Okay. Jane, thank you for saying good morning. I can't see anything on my on my thing. I don't know what I have to do. Oh, we've got a message across the screen. Morning, Wendy. Morning. Big wave, Sally Ann. Oh, big wave, Jan. <laughs> you don't even have to say who it is. Big wave, Jan. <laughs> Could you say good morning to my granddaughters, Amber and Casey? So you've got to say good morning, Amber and Casey. I hope you're having a good morning. Of course, it's half term, isn't it? Sally Ann, can you say good morning to Amber and Casey? Good morning, Amber and Casey. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, you have to be. Well, the last thing you need to be doing is cutting out with the rotary cutter and not concentrating. <laughs> I have a finger to um, <laughs> prove that point. Yeah. I actually cut through my finger uh, when I wasn't concentrating <laughs> and cutting at a silly angle. Right. So you cut your bias strips at two yep. inches wide. Yep. And in the pattern, it tells you what size to cut them. So I'm just going to sub cut them into some lengths so you can see how we're going to work with these so I look let's take off that end so you're just sub cutting them into smaller strips yep. and all this is in the pattern yep, as you it say. just gives you the dimensions and that in the pattern then we're going to give them a little press Oh, you were going to give us a tip on pressing the plastic too. We mustn't yeah. forget yeah, that. Yeah, we won't forget that. Because obviously that is that, something. Because I know it's quite terrifying. People look at it and think, oh, you I can know. iron that? I know, you yep. just say, oh, I can <laughs> iron that. <laughs> okay. So these, you're just going to iron them in half down the middle. Oh, 
Okay. So is that with right sides together? Because it's a plain fabric, it's not easy to see. Yeah. So, so yes, right it, sides together or no, wrong, sides wrong sides together? Wrong together. sides together. Yeah. And then you go and you iron the edges to the centre. So basically you've just created yourself a crease so that you can get that edge on that crease line. So, so basically it looks like you're making bias binding there, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So I usually say, oh, spray everything with spray starch. This is one area that you don't want to spray this with spray starch. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you want it to bend. Yes, yeah, so you don't want it to stay stiff. Yeah. I thought we were just going to start talking about our lovely um, best press. <laughs> I've got that uh, quilters cut and press board now. Yay! I, fi I finally ordered it when it came into stock and I've now got it. So it's really exciting. And there's some fabric we've got on the shows later that I am definitely going to put in my basket. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's look at the blue colourway of this, just why um, Sally Ann is... Oh, the quarter of the stock's gone. This is uh, why Sally Ann is busy ironing there. So this is the blue. So again, this is a Liberty print, and this is the blue version. And you'll see this is on the back, and you also see it sort of through the windows. And then you have a pale blue, which you create the windows out of. Look how it picks up the blue in there and then you've got your PVC plastic and that is um, qu uh, fat quarters worth there um, you've got the pattern and you've got the zip so that's the pattern and the pattern although it's called little pink bag of course what you make it in is up to you so we've got a blue version here and it's very clear instructions on how to make it how to you know to cut the strips in the first place and then how to make it. And it includes everything you need to know, including all the notions and things you need. This is really super, super popular. A third of the stock's now gone. Just going. The one we're working with is blush. So, Sally Ann, you're busy ironing. You mustn't do it without telling us. What are you doing? <laughs> you're, you're ironing the plastic. <laughs> So what, what are you doing to iron okay, it safely? Okay, so I've, I've opened up the plastic and I've got it to, so it's just one layer. I've got an iron that's, I don't know whether it's on the hottest, this little one. It's probably on, I would recommend like a two, two spot. Two on spot on yeah. the iron, yeah. And no steam? No steam. No steam. Just dry and I've got some baking parchment. And if you put the baking parchment on top, as you can see, it just irons up absolutely fine. You can iron all the creases out get it nice and flat before you begin. So it gives you a size to cut. There looks like there's plenty there. Oh, there's loads. Yeah, you, there is loads. <laughs> you could make quite a few. But because it's see? extra wide, although it's a fat quarter, it's a very wide fat quarter. So yeah. that's plenty, isn't it, to do other things as well. But can you see that it's completely Yeah, so you're just losing all those out. creases. Yeah, so don't be terrified. And I, I, before, I've even sort of gone as far as to try and... I've cut a hole in it and melted it a little bit, and it will it will melt back together. I mean, I'm not suggesting you go there, but there there is that facility. <laughs> if by any chance you get a little nick in it, you know, iron it and keep ironing it, and it will sort of go back together. Mm. It's 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 more pliable than you ever think it's going to be. Yes. So, so yeah. that's great. So that's a quick tip on how to iron plastic. Yeah. So that's baking parchment. I've used there. So in the pattern, it tells you what size to cut your piece that you're going to need for the front part of the bag. That's all you need it for, just the front part, so you really have got plenty. You've got loads. You could make a whole load of these, couldn't you? You could. You, you could <laughs> you make, go into you a could production more, line. Yeah, if you're not sure which colourway to go for, go for all three and make them as gifts for friends. You've got plenty. And then, as in page, page four, it actually shows you about positioning your bias strips on top of your clear vinyl. So you're just going to, I don't know if you can see that on page four, so move over Yeah, there. so you're pushing them so that the join is underneath. Yeah, so the join's going to be underneath and you're going to 
put it in position. You're going to work from the centre outwards. It seems to work better that way, but it tells you all that in the pattern just there. So you can see the first one, I've actually put a clip either end and a pin in the middle. Yes. Um, and then you build the strips out. Next strip would be go. So they butt hard up against each other. Yeah. And do you sew them together? Or no, so you, you, you sew them down the, that, that crease line. Okay, so you don't down the centre. Down the centre, all of them all the way out. And then you sew them the other way. So you sew them down the centre, all 10 strips. And then you sew them across the other way, and I think, to create three. So these are... Oh yes, you've marked it with the ruler. And then you've, yes, this is so on page I've used eight. A friction, yeah. yeah. You've used a friction pen. Yeah. Um, which again, we have got on the um, heat away pens. We have got that on the website. So do have a look if you haven't got one. But yeah, so you're sewing them horizontally across. Yeah. So in a similar way that you would if you were doing twisted tucks, you would go vertically then horizontally. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can <laughs> use like a toning thread or you could use my favourite, which is the monofilament. I use that a lot. And I use that for some of this. And I'll show you the difference in a minute. And, and another part of it I haven't used. I've just used an ordinary 50 weight. So. That's lovely. So you just butt them up against each, each other, other. Sew down the centre. Yep. Oh, this is on the piece of plastic that you've cut to size. Yep. So then you end up with something. So you can see the first. So these are three strips. So I'm going to move it over here. Three strips. Ignore that bit for the minute. And they're just sewn right way down the centre and then across at regular intervals, Does ready it to make. Yes, and that's how you can then make the, the yeah. little windows. Oh, that's lovely. And now Sue's just messaged in to say that the Hi, 720 Sue. Elna is back in stock um, and we will be demoing it at 12. It is already available on the website though. So if you want to get a pre-order in. Okay, so we've so got the strips in then. place. What's the Whoop. next step? It's running away. <laughs> Please don't fall over. <laughs> I keep kicking this mat down here. Right. These, so. I love the detail in the instructions. You've got uh, this. I'm just reading one here. <laughs> You'll probably curse me at this point, <laughs> <laughs> but I have deliberately given you oodles to play with here. So you have options. I like that. So do yeah. sit and read these. In. I mean, I always say this. Read the instructions through before you start. Yeah. But you'll, you'll be having yeah, that, a good old smile for seven. yourself when it you do. It does say at the end, you can stop the cursing now, yes. Because <clears throat> what I've done is I've deliberately made it too big because then you can pick out your best bits of stitching. <laughs> And or, or, to, or you could make it longer. So yes, true. This, just to show you, this is the bit that I cut off just before the show. So yes, I've made it bigger. As you, but you could, as you say, make it bigger. You if You could wish make to. it bigger. There's enough fabric, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. There is. But that's the bit I cut away. Okay. So let's have a look at making the, the windows. Making the windows. So I've started a few, and the, for the first three, five rows there. I've used an invisible thread. I don't know if you can get in really close. Well, you're not going to be able to see if it's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> That's the clear, clear thread. And then I've started with some pink just here. Okay, so this is a 50 weight cotton and that's what I'm going to continue with now. I'm also going to use um, a stiletto to help me. I mean, you don't have to, but it will help you hold things in position. And I'm, use, I'm using a quarter inch foot. I re would recommend that you use the smallest foot you can get away with. We were, we were running around this morning, weren't we, trying to find a, a really small, narrow, narrow foot. foot. Yeah. But you want it, it needs, it can't, because we did think about the zip foot, but it can't yeah. really, because it needs to be able to hold down that little folded edge of fabric. Yeah. Uh, we do have the stilettos or tailors alls on the website again. Um, so if you haven't got one, it is a really useful tool, isn't it? Oh, to it just is hold down uh, the fabric etc when you're about to sew. So I've got a quarter, I'm gonna quarter inch foot and I'm going to turn it the stitch length down to about two because I'm going to do some curves so I want to make make the curves as smooth as I can which you can't do with a bigger stitch. So I'm going to start off by just holding it back. Right then. 
So you don't try and pin it back in, in advance, you do it as you go? As I go, yeah. So I'm not quite sure. So I'm actually starting sort of in the seam allowance. So I've got a little bit more run in. And I must admit, I've never done this stood up before. <laughs> I know, I know. It is always a bit more awkward when you're trying to demonstrate it. And it's not clear on the screen. You know, so I'll just warn you all out there, this is, this is difficult. It's not difficult to do <laughs> if you don't have to try and do it, standing up at a strained angle. <laughs> right. So I'm just going to sew right to the, the grid line, and then I'm going to lift the presser foot and pivot and go into the next one. So uh -huh. I'm doing one okay, side. Okay, so I was going to ask you, do you do one window at a time, but you don't? You do one side of the whole strip? Yeah. So I'll start on the next one, I'm just holding it back. So here I would use the stiletto. Is it available? Oh. Okay, so we're just we're just saying um, that Sally Ann is using the Elna 570A today. We're not demo demoing it today, but it is available. So we've put the graphics in there if you're interested. Just because we're in low single figures, and we just know that sewing machines have been so hard to get hold of. Um, as soon as we've got them available, we're bringing them to you. Yee! It's been crazy. I wonder how many more stitchers there are out there. You know, sort of since since last year. I bet you it's, it, it must have exploded. Oh, it has. It definitely has. Um, sewing machine sales have gone crazy. Lots of craft projects have gone crazy. I just hope people continue. Um, yes. That people with don't their give new up. Hobby. Yes. You know. Yeah. That'll be nice, won't it? So I've reached the bottom so now and I'm just going to gonna go okay. round and go back up the other side. So you're just pivoting down, again. pivoting, yeah. yeah. And using that stiletto or tailor's awl, whichever you want, to hold, hold it down. You can actually use um, uh, a toothpick, you know, a very fine toothpick oh, as yeah, well. Oh yeah, you could, couldn't you? Yeah. But no, I haven't mm. said that. You need a tailor's awl. <laughs> I just think it looks so effective though. You can have all these lovely little windows. So I did some sat down in the green room before I came in. I think these are better actually standing up and sort of like looking down on it. Yes. But in fact, I think it might be, you know, looking down on it I think is really helpful rather than looking yes, sideways. Yeah. That's something that we have to be careful of actually when we sit at the sewing machine. We need to sit in the right position. Um, you should actually have your your lower arm should be level. So you should you shouldn't be like that. You should actually be so that your lower arm is level with the machine. Um, so lower your seat normally. You need to lower your seat. Um, otherwise you tend to hunch over and then you start getting pains in the back of your neck. Talking about sewing machines, I'm going to keep on talking about sewing <laughs> machines today. It's because you're excited that you've, we've got some. <laughs> we <laughs> really are. So the 570 is back in stock, as is the 720. So the 720 is one we are demoing, demo, I say we, Jane is doing at 12 o'clock. Uh, this is the fabulous pro sewing machine, absolutely fabulous. People have already got them in the baskets, um, but do remember it's not yours until you've checked out, and we are limited on these. So, um, all right, so this is this is when uh, Jane's not quite here yet, but dear Jane, <laughs> lovely to see you this morning. I bought my Elna Excellence 720 Pro Sewing Machine from Sewing Street last year. I love it. Please reassure everyone that it's really good. We, we, I've added that bit on the end, but I'm sure <laughs> that's what she was going to say. <laughs> oh, here's the rest. Hold on, we can get the rest. No, no. Oh no, it's different, Louise, it's a different message. How <laughs> funny is that? <laughs> We're back in stock and it is already going baskets, but they are, I mean, when I'm saying they're limited, I'm not, I'm not trying to sort of make you buy something quicker than that, but, we, but they are limited um, purely because we just haven't been able to get sewing machines since January. It's sort of a nationwide thing. Um, you know, my, I've had, I've helped my sisters and sister-in-laws buy sewing machines last year and they both had to wait over three months. Having ordered it, they had to then wait three months before they could get it. Um, so we, we haven't bought them to you until we know we've got them. 
So it's not a case of buying now and getting one day in the future. Oh, we got the rest of the message from Louise. Um, I love my, uh, please re reassure me about how I am removing my AccuFeed AD feet. It seems too easy. It probably is very easy, but we will ask Jane to just confirm that you're doing it absolutely right, I'm sure. But we are glad you love it. Oh, so we guess we guessed the end, end of that in, <laughs> incorrectly. <laughs> but we will ask. Don't worry, loads. We will ask, and she'll be from twelve o'clock. So Sally Ann's just going round. A few more of her few more rows. Rows. And then we're done. Let's while she finishes these, because we've seen how she's doing it. Let's go through the different colourways we've got. Blush. This one. This is, oh, hold on a second, that's not the blush. This is the blush. So many different pinks. So this is the blush. This is the Liberty print that comes with, oh, so, it just feels so gorgeous. It really does. This is the Liberty print. So it's a fat quarter of this. And as well as this, you also, this is when you buy the kit. This is for 19 99 so you get the fat quarter. You also get a half metre of the plane. Is this Rosen Hubble quality? Yes, so it is. So again, this is lovely. This is half metre of that. And you get a fat quarter of the plastic. And this is plenty to do other projects as well. I've made um, a sewing machine needle caddy using this so that they, they all the different needle types sit in PVC windows so they're very easy to see um, also a zip so you get the zip that you need and of course you get the very clear easy to follow instructions so that's the blush kit now we have the blue which at the moment is our bestseller of the three there's less than 20 of these available now so this is the blue this is a lovely print and then it's teamed with the plane and look how that matches those flowers it just makes the blue on those flowers really pop and you'll be seeing these through the blue because this is what you use for your outer to make your windows with of course the pvc and the pattern and the zip so you get all of that for 19.99 to create this it's really lovely little bag and as you saw uh, with Sally Ann you can actually make it bigger she made it smaller to suit the project but you could make it longer if you wanted and then we have the last colorway here is the natural colorway so this time we have and this is lovely it's sort of it's got a fleck through it it's a seeded cotton this time that's your half meter you have the PVC, you have the instructions, you have the zip, and you also have this really pretty pink fat quarter of Liberty. So that's really pretty. So that's the neutral pack. How are we doing, Sally Ann? Okay, we're on the last one. Eh? She's on the last one. Where are you from, Sally Ann? <laughs> I'm from Bristol. Oh. Oh, I'm surprised you haven't said anything about my accent. John always well, <laughs> goes on about my accent. That was what I was alluding to. It's a, <laughs> it's a lovely accent. It's a real country oh. accent. Because I always think I don't have one at all, but apparently I do. So. Yeah, it's really funny though. We were talking. I was talking to my husband about accents yesterday, and we were saying you don't think you have one, do you? You never do. No, it, you don't. No. I honestly don't think I do Even until I hear myself and then I yeah. realise I do. Yeah. People think I come from London. No, never been in London. Never lived in London. It's Portsmouth, mate. Portsmouth. <laughs> Portsmouth. No, they don't. They don't. Uh, they don't pronounce T's and H's, which I try and instil into my grown-up boys that they do have T's and H's <laughs> in words. Okay, so so we're there. We've now we got our finished. little windows. Brilliant. But with the PVC behind. Yep. That's why things won't fall out. <laughs> yeah, nothing's going to fall out. <laughs> so, 
yeah, so oh, see, look how lovely that begin looks. to see how. So this is the the back. Move that to one side. This is the back, and I've. I've started to put the zip in because I didn't know about the availability of a zipper foot this morning. <laughs> so I sort of took it halfway. So what I've done, <clears throat> and this what I put this in the wrong way around to start off with, is you, if you're right-handed, you want your zipper pull on the right-hand side. If you're left-handed, on the left-hand oh, side. Okay. Yeah. So think about how you're setting it up. So I have got my zip in so I've got my zipper pull up, pull on the right and I've got I've sandwiched it between two pieces of fabric which are going to form the outer and the lining right sides together okay does that make sense yes and I've just ignored the fact that it's too long because okay. you're going to cut it off yeah and, and so that's the thing about working with a nylon zip you can sew through them can't you so yes. it's, not, it's not a problem although I do must I must admit, I do that bit by hand when I go through a zip, just to be sure. Ooh, you're more careful than me, I just go <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is my piece of Bozor or Starville. I think it's fusible, we're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> it's Starville, this one, but right. it's very similar, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm just gonna sandwich it in here. And some of the reason also that I didn't put it in when I put in the zip is because I didn't want that bump at the top, mm. which would go into the seam. Does that sort of make sense? If I put it in there, I would have ended up with a little bump in my seam, whereas now I'm just going to press it up against that seam line and hopefully avoid a bump. So let's get these things out of the way. Whilst you're doing that, we've got a message from Marilyn here. Shout out hi. from Bristol to Sally Ann. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, great, Deb. We're looking forward to the William Morris quilt. <laughs> We're going to get all the Bristolians. <laughs> you know, if you ever go abroad on holiday, you're bound to meet somebody from Bristol. We always have. We've always, whenever we've been on holiday, we meet somebody who comes from Bristol. So you must be good travellers. <laughs> oh, we are. We're obviously not at the moment, though. Lots of people are loving the quilt behind you, which is not surprising. I mean, it just, I, I, this, well, you're sort of covering up most of it, but the star right behind you, it just looks so three-dimensional. It's really fabulous. Look at that. And I think it's sort of, it's sort of aimed at like um, intermediate, but once you've mastered how to do the star with the Y seams, which obviously Sally Ann's going to show us, it's quite straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But look at the fabric. Look, you can't really see it that clearly, but look at the fabric on the outside. Out, not the out, out, but the inner, the inner out edge, the inner border. It's got hairs. Yeah. It's really fabulous. We've never had this fabric before, and this is the only way you can get it. It's really great. Anyway, that's actually at 10 o'clock. So <laughs> Just getting excited about that one. But now, because Sally Ann's now just ironing, so she's ironing the wadding because it's a fusible wadding. Thank goodness. Um, and it is fusing, so we're all and right. And it is fusing. <laughs> and then you can, of course, you can quilt it, can't you? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to put Just a sort of aware of the time. Yeah. How are we doing? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you've got half the zip in. Now you're going to attach the other half. Yeah. So. I would quilt this. Do you want me just to put a couple of lines through it, just straight? Yeah. Without that might be yeah. Just, yeah, just to give us an idea. Yeah. Are you going to go diagonally across? Yeah, so I'm yeah. just going to go diagonally across. So we, uh, in the pattern, it shows you how to do it, and you do it with a walking foot. But I'm just going to put across just to keep, actually keep it in position at the moment. Right. And a really quick way of um, doing repeated rows, if you want to do the cross grid, is to use your quilter's guide, which is the metal rod with the bend in it. Most machines will come with one of these and you think, what do I do with that? And that's what it is. And you can actually put it in the back of the ankle there. There's a little gap in there. Or you put it in the back of the walking foot. And what you do is you do your first row, as Sally and Anne is doing now. Put your quilter's guide in and have that on the first row, the distance from the needle that you want your grid to be. 
and then you can do parallel row after parallel row after parallel row really very easily. Are you, have you increased your stitch length? Yes, Sally? I have. So if you were using a walking foot or any foot really, you're going to increase your stitch length to about three, just over three. Yeah. Obviously, you cut your wadding slightly bigger. Yep. Did you do that on purpose as yeah. well? <laughs> I know, because you should do, shouldn't you, when you're going to do yeah. quilting? I just get rid of some of this. You can see the wood for the trees. So you're yeah. doing that without using a ruler, because that's because you're experienced. <laughs> Don't know if I go that far. Okay. So, having a too long zip has advantages. So, I am going to sew that in position. So, is this right sides together? So, this now? is right sides to the, the right side of the zip. Give me some clips. And here's one I made earlier by the looks of it. <laughs> Different kind of bag, that one you've got there. That one you've, you're getting your things out of. Did you uh, make that one? Yes. 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 Pretty too. Have you done a pattern for that one? Yes. The, uh, and Sewing Street have sold a pattern for that have one. Have they? Yeah. yeah. So, all right, let's just change over. So, uh, do you think I might be able to just get away with this foot? Have you not got the zip foot there? Yeah. So we don't forget we've got the three different kits for this at 19.99 each and we also have the pattern instructions on their own if you feel you've got your own fabrics at home and your zip etc. So the instructions on their own are 9.99, very clear instructions and it tells you exactly what you need and then cutting right, right from cutting out on the bias etc all the way through. If you want the blue kit, do be careful because there are now single figures of that one left. We are really running out of that one. Um, that is the one, the blue kit is this lovely one here, which is this beautiful blue, which is a bit different, this. I mean, you know, this is called a little pink bag and we're sort of thinking cosmetics, but of course it could be a little wash bag could be a little peel bag, it could be a little haberdashery bag when you're going to classes and things. What do you use these little li little zipped purses for is entirely up to you. So back to Sally Ann, you've just put the other side of the zip in. So. so that was with the right sides together and you just sewed the zip? Yeah, so that's the zip in. Right, now I'm going to actually cut it square. So I'm going to undo my zipper pull so that my zipper, so the I don't zipper pull cut it off. Still <laughs> <laughs> because I've done that before. <laughs> right. No, I've never done this like this, you know. I've always cut the zip to size first. So this is interesting. I like finding out new ways of doing things. So this time you are going to use a ruler. Yeah. And these creative grid rulers are fabulous, aren't they? Because they've got the lovely grip on the underside. Oh, so we've just put the um, graphics up for the little ruler that Sally Ann is using. It's a good size, this one. It's a good size to take to classes. So you just go through through the zip as well? Yep. With your rotary cutter? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right, let's make sure the zip. But don't put it too far because you don't want it to come off the end now. No. Okay. So now I'm just going to sew all the way around and then turn it through. 
got time to do that or no? Yes, you've got time to do that, yeah. As long as you're quick. No. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever have that when you're in a car and somebody says, you know, you can't see you're driving. Oh, can I, is it, is it clear? Can I turn yet? And they sort of, yeah, yeah, fine. Oh, if you're quick. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, you are putting the walking so foot on this time. So I am putting the walking time. foot on for this. So, yes. We have to say that the walking foot does not come with this particular machine. Um, this is the 570, which is the one that Sally Ann's using. So the walking foot would be extra. Do we sell the walking foot, Hannah? So you'd have to go through an Elna dealer. Uh, we have sold them in the past. Um, but yes, I mean, a walking foot, it's, I must say, if you're going to buy any extra feet, there's two. Walking foot, invisible zip foot. There's two feet that you can't live without. I haven't got the right walking foot for this one. Oh, um, so. if you, ha you need the right one for, for your yeah. machine. Um, not all walking feet fit yeah. all machines. It I mean, depends are, on the shank, isn't it? Yes, whether you're doing it's a high shank or yes, a low shank. Yes, so it depends if you've got a high or low shank. The high shank tends to be on machines that they're really expensive, like all singing and dancing, embroidery, etc. machines, and that's because they need the higher lift to get under. Um, and the low shank is the more general one that you're going you're to be used to. So I'm just going to use an open toe foot. Yes, if we haven't really got time to do it, can you just talk us through what you're doing? Are you going to do it with your regular foot? Yeah. Okay. Right, Let's you see what you happens. Put, yes. I mean, the reason to put the walking foot on is to help feed the layers evenly. That's the point of it. Um, okay. But you're going to do it without because you're going to be big and brave. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know whether it's going <laughs> to like wobbly, it very much. Little wobbly bag. We may have a little wobble here and there. Yeah. Let's see what happens, shall we? So you're just going to sew through the zip. So do you start a little bit further in and then go back? Yes. So I'm going to start a bit further in, go back. And what about stitch length again? Are we? Yeah. Well, at the moment we're. At Four, but let's turn it down to about three. Okay. And I don't believe it when the needles come unthreaded. <laughs> I'm okay. doomed, I think. Work while you rethread, <laughs> let's round up the kits and so you can do it. So basically what you're going to do is she's going to sew down, across and up, but do make sure that the zip is a, is a good open. half open, otherwise you're not going to be able to turn it through. But we'll come back to Sally in, the, Sally in a second. She's just resetting the machine. So before then, let's look at this, the blush. This is the one that, that Sally Ann's working on. So with the blush, we get the half metre of the blush plane and the fat quarter, the big fat quarter of the PVC and the zip and the instructions, full colour instructions, and this is the fabulous Liberty Print Fat Quarter, which shows through the little windows, but also is on the back of the bag as well. So you've got both. So that's really lovely. And actually, you don't use the whole lot. So there's a little bit left to do something else with, which is always nice. We can always find a use for a bit of Liberty. Then we have the blue. This is the most popular and it's now very limited. So this is the blue. This is the lovely blue Liberty print that goes with the blue. As soon as I put that blue on top, you see how those flowers pop out. It's beautiful, isn't it? And of course the instructions and the PVC and the zip. So all you need to add to that, if you wish to, well, obviously you need your wadding. So oh, you can use bosal or you can use the starlet or you can use any other kind of wadding. It's up to you entirely. Um, but also Sally Ann has used some rick rack. So you can also add the rick rack. And that just gives a nice finishing touch. And then of course, we've got the neutral or natural, which is this beautiful seeded cotton so it's not absolutely plain. It's sort of like got tiny, tiny flecks in it. Reminds me of um, proper vanilla ice cream, that does. And the PVC, and the instructions, and the zip. So this is all for the 19.99. And this is the beautiful fabric that comes with this. So this is this lovely print, this all over print. And again, that will just peek through 
the windows and be the back as well. Or, of course, if you want, if you have your own fabrics, you might want the instructions on their own, in which case that's quite easy to do too. So these are the instructions, very clear of what you're going to need, how to cut it all the way through with diagrams as you go to show how it's constructed. And then don't forget the quilt that's behind Sally Ann is coming up in her next hour, which is at 10 o'clock. It is already going on pre-order. It's absolutely superb and it's huge, huge. So that's at 10 o'clock. So you've done the bag, you're just turning it through yeah, now. Yeah. Obviously take a little bit more time with the zip than I did. <laughs> but, um, if you've got a point turn or something like that, that helps turn out those corners, yeah. doesn't it? And again, if you wanted to press it, would you use your baking parchment again? Yeah, to press I would. Because you've got the plastic windows, haven't yeah. you? So there it is. Okay, a little bit scruffy. It needs a little bit of TLC, yes. I think. Well, you but it gives would, you you normally would take an a little idea. bit more time. And when do you put the rick rack on? Um, last. So you would put that on now. Yeah. yeah. The rick rack would go. The idea with the rick rack is it covers up any lines, so you'd put it in here. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. And do you sew it or glue it? I think I glued mine on with a little bit of fabric glue, something like high tack. Yes. Yeah. Can't resist poking out that last corner. Yeah, it's lovely. I just love the way you can see that pretty Liberty print through the windows. Yeah, it's good. Very good. Thank you ever so much. So we're going to see you back um, with this very gorgeous William Morris quilt. Yes. And you're going to show how to do the tricky yes, wisings. Yeah, we're going to do the centre star to start off with. So the yeah. centre star to start off. Which I think off. is that, that is probably the most complicated part of the quilt, isn't yeah. it? So it's an eight point star, and um, because it, because it's Pieced, it's called a rolling star. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? Galina says, lovely, thank you both. So thank you, <laughs> Sally Ann, because I'm you. just sitting here, really. We're going to go to the break now, and then when I come back, I have got some fabric and tools. And these fabrics are absolutely amazing. See you in a bit. <laughs> Hi, I've been asked to do a little bit of an introduction about me, so here goes for Sewing Street. I'm Sally Ann Harrison, I'm based in the UK in Bristol. Um, I lived here all my life, apart from a short stint in North Carolina, where I lived um, for three years from 2000 to 2003. I specialise in patchwork and quilting. I am a complete patchwork and quilting addict. I love small piecing, I love wool applique, all forms of applique, um, and I also like making small little crafty projects. How did I get into sewing? Well, I've sewn all my life. I remember the first thing I ever made was um, like a little bikini top from one of my mother's old overalls when I was about nine. Um, I got married when I was about 20, 21 and started making curtains at that time. So I was a curtain maker for a long period of time. But it was in 2000 when I moved to the US that I really got into quilting big time. I discovered a local patchwork and quilting store. I took classes. Um, I made loads of quilts. I made some fantastic friends. Um, I met a great tutor called Michelle May. Um, and by the time I left, I was actually beginning to exhibit in 2003. So that's how I got into doing what I do. Tell us something unexpected about yourself. Well, one of the, the strange things about me is that I'm the world's worst knitter. Um, I can do most crafts. I crochet, I do punch needle, I do obviously patchwork and quilting and dressmaking. But knitting, mm -mm. I the pins go in all sorts of weird directions. I have to concentrate. If anybody you know, rings the doorbell, I can't stop mid-row. I am the world's worst knitter. Sewing tips to share with viewers. Um, it's got to be the beard trimmer trick. I mean, why use an unpicker when you can use a beard trimmer to take out the seams that you've sewn incorrectly? It's just the best tip ever, I reckon. And a claim to fame. 
Probably my claim to fame based on my sewing career was that in 2017, I was invited to the Houston Quilt Festival, the International Quilt Festival, and it was there that I demonstrated some wool applique. It was a fantastic experience. And if anyone's debating going to the International Quilt Festival next year, go. It is absolutely fabulous. And that's a bit about me. Thank you very much for listening. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Welcome back. Now I'm standing right in the way of the star. No, go that way. Look, look, look. Oh, this is coming up later. This is so amazing. And it's already going on pre-order. But before we get to that hour, let's have a look at what we've got here. Because what I've got here that I can't keep my hands off is brand new. This is a brand new set of Aurafil yarn uh, threads. But these are 12 weight. They are 12 weight, which means they are great for Sashko, and that's what they're sort of uh, designed for. But if you do any kind of hand embroidery, hand quilting, hand sewing, these are beautiful. Now we have less than 30 boxes of these, and they're $47.95 for all six of these. And they are large spools. Do you mean how much is on each spool? probably says it on here somewhere oh this is I can't we've we have got 325 meters on each spool so it's a, a huge amount 325 all 100% cotton we've only ever had 12 weight of a fill on the show twice before and they sold out straight away. These are absolutely, you can use them for machine embroidery as well. You can use them on your sewing machine, use a top stitch needle um, with a bigger eye. Um, they were designed for Sashko, which is basically a running stitch, which is on the, you know, you sh it's shown that's all about the stitch on the, uh, the product or the project. But these are perfect for cross stitch, for embroidery, for hand stitching, for hand quilting. If you wanted to do something like, um, big stitch hand quilting one of our lovely tutors at festival of quilts teaches that this is the kind of uh, threads you could use now we do have some details on these coming up here so you can read here what it says so it's 12 weights and uses look at those uses hand applique hand embroidery hand quilting cross stitch embellishment and lace machine applique blanket stitch buttonhole stitch machine embroidery machine art quilting sash co red work Lower looper surging and long arm quilting. In other words, you can use it for everything. So hand quilting is the most popular use for these. And they are absolutely gorgeous because they're thicker. Basically 12 means they are a thicker 
threads. So they will be more obvious on the top, on the surface. They will stand out, which is why you've got these really lovely, vibrant colours, including this variegated one, which is sort of the orange and red and peach. We're now, we're now uh, less than 20. So if you're interested in these 300 and, what was it, 325? 325 metres on each spool. If you're using it on your sewing machine, they say don't put it in the bobbin because actually it's thicker. So if you were using it in the bobbin to do bobbin work, for instance, then the best thing to do is to use a separate bobbin case and then you can adjust the tension on that to suit this. But don't mess up your regular bobbin because you don't want to mess a tick. It's more, it, we, we think it's more for handwork. Um, this is really, really beautiful for handwork. 100% cotton is Aurafil, which is a really, really well-known brand. A lot of quilters will use Aurafil threads. This pack was actually designed with the Sheba guys, the Sheba guys. Now we do sell their book, that's Borrow and Sashko, and they worked with Aurafil to design this range, this little set. So they have got, um, you know, that it's, in other words, it's stitchers who know what they're doing, who've designed this range of threads to make sure it's going to be top quality and it's going to do what it says on the tin. So it's actually going to do the job in hand. Really, really beautiful. I love it. Good range of colours. And the thing about using a th thicker um, thread like this, rather than embroidery floss, for instance, you haven't got that business of having to separate the different the yarn, so you only use two or three strands, etc. It's a single strand, but it's 12 weight, which means it will be nice and visible on the surface. So great for any work, any hand quilting work, any top stitching work, any borrow, etc. Anything like that. I mean, a lot of people hand quilt now, and it is a very relaxing, mindful way of quilting. And this will give you some beautiful colours to choose from. We really do have less than 20 now. They're going down and down and down, which is not surprising because they are absolutely superb. Um, they should say 12 weight in the graphics, but it doesn't, but it is. And it isn't just for Sashko, although it's very good for that. It is for all sorts of hand embroidery. And of course you have got red if you want to do red work. If you want to be traditional with your Sashko, you can use the white. If you want to do some really beautiful embroidery, you can use this variegated one. I love this. And look at this, look at this lovely green, blue, plum. It's really beautiful. So really lovely colours there to make a, your project really stand out with some fabulous top stitching on the top there. Or hand stitching or embroidery, etc. That's really beautiful. So that is that lovely pack of six. What does that work out per reel, Hannah? <laughs> OK, it's under £50 and there's six in there, so um, it must be about £8, something like that. Seven ninety nine a spool, so it wasn't too bad, but 325 metres on each. So that's a lot of thread for your money. Really lovely. They will last a long, long time. They really will. So that's really lovely and they come in this lovely little box. 100% cotton. Orofil 12 weight and this is the first time we've had them and they are absolutely beautiful so don't miss out on that because they're gorgeous right I come back to them I'm sure but let's look at some of these fabrics because it's all about color you've got those beautiful threads can I go for the can I go for those one please 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 there's no bundle we've got these all as individual pieces so let's start with the top one. Look at this. Look at this. I couldn't believe this when Hannah showed me this. This one is BGUV49. Look. This is called Kaleido on Multi. Isn't that really, really kind? What happens if you go in? Does it actually go that's absolutely beautiful. So it's 749 for half a metre. 
This is the whole half meter. 100% cotton. Now these are free spirit fabrics, so you'll know the quality of that. But I just absolutely love those. Non-directional, so you can put them in any way. I just think that's really gorgeous. So there's that one. <gasps> so lovely, I love it. I love the colours on that. And we also have this one. Do you need the code or can you work this one out? Oh, white. Right. Let me go back to the first one a second. That's this one here. You can see all these swirls and all the colours in it. Well, you see, I, I, um, Emma's just said, what would you do with it? You see, I, would, I see this as a dress, of course. Of course I see it as a dress. Um, but yes, you could make a skirt, you could make a top, you could make a shirt, or if you're not thinking of dressmaking, you could use this. I mean, this would make a really dramatic border on a quilt. You could make bags out of it, cushion covers. It's just absolutely superb. And because the colours swirl all around as they do, you can actually sort of use it in thinner strips, but you'll still get that lovely colour if you did. It would look so cool just you know just to strip like that as a binding so you can get quite a lot out of this half meter and of course because it's half meter you can buy one two three four units of it to get a bigger piece and it will be cut for you so let's look at the next one which again superb it does h-e-u so this is lovely too. It looks like it does look like it's sort of you can colour it in. I know this is this is really beautiful too, isn't it? Look at that. Really lovely. Swirls of colour. I'm not sure there's a right or wrong way up. I don't think there is because this time that goes that way and on that bit it goes that way. So I think you can have it up anyway. Let's see if I do it this way. It just looks really beautiful. I'm not. I'm trying to think. Does it look like waves? It just. It is like doodles, isn't it? It's sort of, and it just with the colours. It's like the depth that it goes in. You sort of feel like you're going down into a tunnel there. It does. It feels like it has movement. Just from a fabric. So a quarter of the stock went on this one before we even showed it to you. But I don't blame you. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. We don't have all of the fabrics from the collection, but if you go onto Free Spirit's website, and search this collection there are a couple of free quilt designs so that you could all oh, look at this one here now we don't have all the fabrics for this but it gives you an idea of what you can do with these fabrics I mean just look at that that is absolutely amazing it's like we were saying isn't it so obviously had the, just just by putting it into strips and things it's absolutely amazing Yes, Glennie says beautiful colours. I totally agree. So that's that second one. And then let's go for the black and white before we go. Now, so again, we've got, so these really do look good together as well. Even though we've, we've not done them as a bundle, you could decide to, because they've come from the same collection. And again, it just, it, you almost feel like it's writhing and moving. This time it's just black and white. So it's really nice, really different. It's <laughs> a Bargello gone crazy. <laughs> it is really lovely, isn't it, with the swirls in it. And it's, it's, very, it's just so very unusual. It's just the way it's, you just feel like it's loads of fabrics which have been coiled and moved and put together. Absolutely fabulous. Again, 
There's no particular direction, so you can have it any which way. I just like the way the definition and it gets, you feel like it's disappearing into, into holes and coils. When you, yeah, when you cut it up, if you imagine this again, if you just imagine it as a, a border, it still looks stunning. Just, just strips, even if you have it, if you think of it as, you know, cutting it into squ little squares, Again, if you sort of fold it up into little squares, each one would be really lovely, really different. Look at that! Look at all that! It just—it just looks as if there's texture and depth to it. So these really are beautiful. I absolutely love these, and of course, you know, free spirit quality as well. So that's really gorgeous. Ah, oh, so Hannah says she's found these on Etsy and elsewhere in the UK, but it is quite difficult to get. Look at this one, look at this one. Oh, this is amazing. So we think the print doesn't look as big as it is on the website. Um, it's just, but again, you know, even a small, I mean, it must, it must be huge, must it? Look at this. Let me see if I, if I hold it up, you'll see a bit more. Look at that. That is gorgeous. That really is absolutely gorgeous. I, that, I think that's my one. That is just so pretty. And again, it's got that same sort of flowing feel. This is definitely my favourite, this one. I just love the way it looks like it's rolling and swirling. And it is, it's absolutely right. If you just, you can just take small bits of it. I mean, just look at that. There's a cushion cover or something. Or if you cut smaller shapes from it, it's just every part of it would look really great. So even if you just cut a small bit. Or again, a strip. Every time I fold it, you get a different look. So if you're cutting squares or triangles and creating your own quilt, the colours are absolutely gorgeous. It just looks, you can imagine, I mean, it's not a, an odd kind of triangle, but look at that. It just looks incredible, doesn't it? It does, it, oh, a pinwheel block, yes, would be absolutely stunning. You could have a dark background with these. Look at those, it's different. It just looks so incredible. Really gorgeous. And again, there's no sort of right way up, really, because it's just a big sort of swirl. Very clever. So that is that collection. The first one we started with is the most popular. That's the most popular one here. So I love this too. Oh, I don't know now, you see. It's difficult, isn't it? This is just so fabulous, it really is. That would make, a, that would make an, an amazing cushion. But you know, I just also, I do like the way they go together. It really does, even though they're such sort of, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same idea, it's the same theme with these swirls, but you've got sort of small, smaller ones on this one, this kaleidoscopy one, and then larger on this one. But that is really stunning. And don't forget, on Free Spirits, you've got quilt ideas if you want to make quilts. Look at that. It does look absolutely stunning, doesn't it? It's very contemporary looking. And the full instructions are on there. Is it free, you say? Yeah, that's free. So it's Free Spirit, F R E E Spirit. And then you can download the free patterns. All these f f f frees. And look at this one. This is, this is the first one I showed. But we have more. We have a lot more. So we have another collection, equally as bright and colourful, Tropical Leaves. Now we don't have a bu Maga Bundle. Again, these have been kept separately, but they do go well together. So I'm just going to fan them out a bit. 
but this is definitely the bright and bold day. Look at, the, look at those lovely colours. Beautiful. And they would go beautifully together. But that's up to you. So we're doing them by the half metre. So this is our first one. Oh, so Glenys has ordered them from the last one to make cushions. I think they will make beautiful cushions. Look at that. This is beautiful, yes. Think garden cushions. Think applique too. Look how these flowers, you could easily cut these flowers out and applique them onto something because they're lovely and bold and the leaves, really lovely. You could use if little scraps, you could fussy cut some of these little pieces in self-covered buttons. And you could, you could make sandwich bags, lunch bags and things, because also if you use, what we've also got on this show is the Odie coat, you can make them wipe down. Or cushions for your dining set, or placemats, something really vibrant like this, or a nice little lap quilts that you can make. So when people stay for the evening and it starts getting chilly, you've got little lap quilt to put on. So that's a really, really pretty one. Lovely big flowers on that one. But we, we have more, we have more. Okay, so this is called Fern on Black. We've also got it on the white, but look at it on the black. Sort of, yes, carnival headdresses. It does, doesn't it? It looks like feathers. And again, splashes of colour. And on the black there, that makes those colours really stick out. So again, beautiful quality fabric. It's got some weight to it. And it will make lots and lots of items really beautiful. Or, because of the all-over design, yet again, you could use it in smaller pieces as well. If you imagine it in a smaller square, it's not a square, is it? But almost. <laughs> almost square, there we are. You can see just, just a sort of small square looks really gorgeous. Or section of a bag, or it could be the back bottom of the bag, or the, it could be the top of the bag, and then have, we've got canvases on this one as well. You could put canvas on the bottom. So you could actually use this as part of a design to add that splash of colour. That's really lovely. So this one is six ninety nine for the half meter, but you could have that. You could have a centre of the cushion, or you could have the centre being plain, and then have all this round the outside. And then the centre you could then use if you've got a circular stitch attachment for your sewing machine, which we had in another show. You could stitch some beautiful designs in the centre, or you can use some colours and do some decorative stitching, couching. So many colours that you could work with it. That's, that is very popular. But we do have it in the white as well. So this is really beautiful and summery. Again, lots and lots of colour going on there. Very, very pretty, very dramatic. I think they are, are they feathers? Because I think they are feathers, you know. Oh, fern. Okay, they call them ferns. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> yes, you, you, have, you have these carnival queens dancing with their big feathery headdresses on. But they are ferns, actually. If you look, they've got the, um, the leaf print on them. If you go in close, you can actually see it. They've got the print. But it's, you're still in, you can't get out of carnival mode. <laughs> So I don't know if you're actually dancing in there. I can't see it. <laughs> it's really beautiful, lovely quality fabric. <laughs> That's lovely. And now we have also have, and these do really do go beautifully together. So we haven't put them in um, into a bundle, but you can if you want to, or of course you can buy them in multiples. So that's up to you. We've got the purple background leaves. Now this is the only one we have here with a purple background, 
but it does go beautifully with the others. If I put those back on top, look. Look how well they go. All of them. They all go. Let's get that. I'm trying to find a bit that hasn't got a great big wadge of seam allowance on it. They all pick, all of these go together. They would make such a colourful quilt or furnishings or, or cushion covers or bags. Lots you can do with these beautiful bold colours. So this is the leaves. This is the purple leaves. It's nice to have something a bit different. It, does, it doesn't look as purple in the, on the um, screen I'm looking at as it is. It's quite a royal purple. This looks a bit blue on that one, but it's really beautiful. And again, all over print, so you can use small areas. You could cut this into small triangles, etc., if you wished. And then we have, again, the same one, but this time on the white background. So that makes those leaves really dance out, doesn't it? And again, you could put that with it quite easily. That goes nicely with it, as I think so does the floral. So these really do, they're beautiful fabrics that go nicely together, 100% cotton, lovely prints and a good weight. And these are brand new today, it's all new stuff. This is 6 .99. Lots of ideas. This is tropical sunshine vibes this has, especially if you've got your carnival, carnival feathers on. Oh, funnily enough, <laughs> everybody's feeling this vibe. This is the most popular one so far. $6.99 for half a metre. And then we have the white one. I like both. I like both. You could do stripes. All of these colours together would look so beautiful. I think, isn't that lovely? See, I, I like that, but I also like the idea of having a big floral with it. I think that you could have that. That can be the centre and it's got the black background. And then this can be the border. It's just lovely, isn't it? You need, do you need new garden cushions, Hannah? I do keep thinking, because I struggle to grow plants, I do keep thinking what I need to do is I need to just get lots of really flowery fabrics out in the garden so I can have some colour by having, as you say, cushion covers and maybe some bunting, things like that. And I don't have to water bunting, no. I think I might have killed my palm for lack of watering. Oh, so yes. Oh, OK. So it's the heavy rain. Nothing to do with me. <laughs> oh, they have died. Oh, they will come back. OK. <laughs> it looks bad. Uh, it was a birthday present and I managed to keep it indoors for ages. No, it's not a palm. It's a lily. What's it called? Palm lily? I don't know. Anyway, I managed to keep it and I put it outside and then I seem to have lost it. Oh, let's do the Odie coat before we go on to that. Um, so this is the Odie coat. Is it best? Which way is it best for that? Talking about gardens, it's $14.99 and then you can make your fabric into an oilcloth so you can make it sort of waterproof by putting on the Odi coat. Now you can put it on before you sew or you can put it on after you've sewn. It's up to you really which way round. Um, I like the idea of this as plant pot, plant pot holders. Um, because Debbie Shaw in one of her books, it might be, might be her half yard outside or something, but she's done these plant pot plant pots and you can do it out of fabric and then you can coat them with this. They really, really look lovely. So you can do that for table mats, for chairs, you can you know, do it on cloth, anything you're going to have outside. Or of course if you're thinking makeup bags and you want it to be able to wipe down, it's really useful. So it's really useful to have this. This is one of these things that you must have in your stash. $14.99 for this pot. Directions for use on it. 
and it just means it just means that you don't have to be looking for oil, oil cloth or waterproof cloth every time you want to make something that you need oil cloth for you can just use this because normally you won't get all of these beautiful vibrant colors in an oil cloth you won't get the choice that you can do and you can do this yourself you can just create it so very very handy to have definitely but i've got some more fabrics this is all about look at this all of these beautiful colors again this is not a bundle we've got them all individually it's really it, to be honest with you it's what we've got left because it's Dan Morris and it's actually two different collections here. Let's start with the top of the pile. Chop it is <laughs> Hannah's trying to tell me what it is. Chopper chopper. Chopper chopper. Chopacania? Chopacania in the blues. Now this one here, it, it just looks like batik, doesn't it? It's all computer done, but it's very, 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 very clever. It looks beautiful. Uh, down to four meters of this. So if you're wanting this and you're thinking more than half a meter, bear that in mind, um, because we've only got eight, eight sets of this, in other words. So this is, uh, this is a beautiful blue. Love the blues on that with the hint of purple. Does look like a deep swimming pool really gorgeous and it's a lovely it's a lovely sort of soft cotton really sort of it feels a bit crisp and a bit sort of oh definitely summer feel the summer in that oh jumping in the pool that would be so nice wouldn't it so as well as this we have again oh look at the next one oh oh and the next and the next oh my goodness okay <laughs> i'll share i'll share look at this Put that one away. Ah, oh, there's only two meters of this one. Look at this. The colours, it's this is digitally layered up and it just it just looks gorgeous. All those different tones, you sort of got like a swirl of autumnal colours underneath, and then you've got these vibrant blue leaves coming over the top. So this would be really beautiful very pretty so if you wanted two meters that's four but i would get it now because if you are thinking of autumn projects we might not get it back again we just don't know and it is really really lovely it's an all over print so you haven't got to worry about direction you can cut small pieces out of it if you want to because it'll still look fabulous even as a small piece next one oh and the next one, the next one. This is so lovely too. This, this is Hannah off to Hawaii. She's off to Hawaii in this one. Lightweight kimono on the plane. This, is, this would make a lovely kimono. And it would go beautifully with that one too. Kimono in your pyjamas. This, this would make really lovely pyjamas actually. Because it's really lovely cotton. They would be f nice and cool. So it's very, very pretty. Really beautiful, lovely print. So again, you've got the sort of blue background and then you've got these sort of lovely orangey flowers on it. So it's very, very print, very, very print, very pretty, beautiful print. You can actually just, while I'm looking, look, you can see here why we always say that you cut off the selvages. Can you see how the selvage is sort of more gathered? And that's because it's more tightly woven. So that's why we always say cut them off and don't try and use them in your project. Otherwise, you get rippled seams. But it's a really good example of that. So that's the beautiful one there. And now this is another one that's making me go, oh, 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 oh. This is, this is, look at this. Oh, 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 oh. Look. <laughs> look at that. So it's the same as that blue one we had earlier, but it's all in the reds. It looks sort of fiery almost. That is absolutely stunning. 
it is the vibrancy of these colours and you know it's good quality. 749 for half a metre. So, you know, the reds are this is this isn't just red, this is this is Dan Morris red. This is really vibrant, but it's got some black in there, it's got some yellow, it's got some orange, it's got some pink. So it's it is oh is, is it expensive to print? All oh, right, to get that deep colour. This is really beautiful. I just love this colour. So I didn't know it was a more difficult colour to print. There we are. I know it can be a difficult colour to photograph, but not when it's like this look. These lovely, lovely design. Beautiful. And again, it has that batik feel, but it's done digitally. Some people aren't comfortable using batiks because of the way they're made. But these, you're getting the best of both worlds here. You're getting the look without having to worry about the ethical design of it or losing the dye from it. Look at this one. Sorry, I've just, because I, I, <laughs> I don't want to miss seeing all these beautiful fabrics. Look at that, it's really lovely as well. Just looks like you could almost feel ripples on a lake there, but it's in the pinks. So again, it's got those beautiful mix of colours. And as I say, we haven't put them in as a bundle, but you could, you could quite easily combine these. Not that we have much left of any of them. But this is a really lovely one. So it's almost a stripe in a way. Very nice, very pretty. And then we have, oh, we've got three more of these. Then we've got this beautiful one. Look at this. This is called Red Swirl. So again, this is beautiful. A mass of fireworks going on here. And we're showing you all these beautiful prints, 749. Dan Morris, 100% cotton, beautiful soft feel to it. This is digitally sort of printed, layered colours. Really, really beautiful. We've got two more. Oh, I'm going to leave that one till last. Look at this. Phoenix. Is this what it's called, or is this what you've just named it? Oh, right, okay. Phoenix, right, it's just called Orange Swirl. I prefer your Phoenix rising, rising from the flames. This is really lovely again, isn't it? It's just, it's just the sort of depth of the print because there's so many colours layered up. Very, very pretty. Lots of things you can do. And again, because it's like an all over print like this, you can use it as a big piece or you could easily use it as small pieces. You know, if you imagine small triangles, um, if I find a triangle, it still looks dramatic as a small triangle or a square, etc. It is definitely fiery. I don't start singing that in my ear. Because <laughs> then I'll start and I really can't sing. And then look at this one. I love, I think, I don't know, I think this might be my favourite. I have a lot of favourites today. Look at this. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? It is so gorgeous, isn't it? I don't know if there's a right and a wrong. Does that look better that way up? Not really sure it matters. But absolutely gorgeous. Really lovely, vibrant colours. Oh. Now, I'm just going to go back to the Orifor because actually looking at all of these lovely, beautiful, colourful fabrics brings us back to the Orifor that we looked. And if you missed the beginning of the hour, let's just reiterate. The important thing that's missing on the graphics, I'm afraid, is it's the fact that it's 12 weight, which means it's thicker. So it's really good for Sashko, um, but it's also really good for other 
hand quilting. There's a whole load of uses for it. We'll just see there on the screen. Basically, any kind of stitching is listed there. Uh, first time on air today, we are very limited now. You get six reels. We never get 12, rate, 12 weight aura fill like this. Um, you get these six reels. Did I just say 12? Six. Six reels, 325 metres on each of them. It's going to keep you going for a very long time. And rather than embroidery floss, it is a single yarn, single strand, but still thick. That's what it means when it's 12 weight. So it's, the stitching is really going to show on the surface. So you're going, if you wanted to do some big stitch hand quilting, or if you wanted to do something like sash coat, or if you wanted to do hand embroidery, imagine French knots in these, they would really stand out. Beautiful, vibrant colours. You can use it on your machine as well. Just be careful of the tension. Make use a top stitch needle and use a different weight in the bobbin. Or if you do use it in your bobbin, don't use your regular bobbin case um, because you don't want to start fiddling with the tension on your bobbin case because it's very hard. It's very minute adjustments and it's very hard to get it back to standard. So you can get a separate one and use a separate one. We think it's more for your handwork, really. Hand quilting, hand embroidery, hand stitching, cross stitching. These beautiful, vibrant colours, and all six come in this box for 47 99 325 metres per spool of really good quality. This has been created by Spig Guys? Sheba Guys. Sheba Guys. Uh, I think we think they're dogs, and they are the authors of the book, Borrow and Sashko, that we have had on the show before. And so they know what good hand stitching should look like and they have created these. They were asked what kind of thread would they use to do their borrow and sash coat and this is what they've come up with. And these are these beautiful colours that they've come up with. So absolutely superb pack here, 47 99 So it works out about 7 99 per reel or 325 metres per reel. So that is a lot. Really lovely. When everybody's checked out that has this in their box, we're down to single figures of this. So if you do want it, do check out. Don't lose it because it's not yours until you have checked out. Now, oh, talking about single figures, the 570A, which is the one that Sally Ann was using earlier, that sewing machine. We, Jane is not going to be talking about that one today, but we do have a few in stock. Um, but I think we're just putting the graphics up now, this. We are in single figures for this. So this is a nice, nice little machine with an LED screen, that's LCD, LCDs. And I get my LEDs and LCDs mixed up. Um, some nice features on there, nice stitch. It's got, got a little pull out thing on the side with all the different stitch choices you've got. We do say, do look elsewhere at this machine so you can just Google that machine and then you can see that we have got it at a good price for you. We're generally about £100 less than elsewhere. We can't promise you that, but that's what we genuinely are. Um, so do have a look and possibly we've made a mistake on the price, but if we have, grab it now because we'll honour it. And you can do it in three split payments. So just mentioning that. Now, Jane is coming later. We know that a few of you have asked questions and we will try and put those questions to her. Let's introduce the two machines that Jane is going to be featuring. So she's going to be doing the 780 plus and that will be at 11 o'clock. It's a computerized machine. Look at that lovely big LED screen. Split pay available again as usual. It, it pretty, I don't think it makes a tea, but it does a lot out. It does a lot out. It really does. Absolutely fabulous machine. The reason we're letting you know now, though this is for later, is because we know how hard it has been to get sewing machines. And we have got a few of these. And so we're letting you know. And then also, back by popular demand, and this has already got a lot of interest on the web, is the 720 Pro. 
this is a really lovely machine. So 720, but it's got such a lovely big gap between the machine and the needle. So you've got lots of space for quilting, for bag makers, for soft furnishings, and of course for dressmaking. Uh, a lot of you have already got this one in your basket. Again, it's available on split pay across five payments of 33980 each. But do be aware, it has got a lot of interest on the web. And although we have got stocks, we have only got limited stocks of all of these. Not trying to pressurise you, but I just want you to know that. It is amazing how quickly they go. I, but I know from experience that it's very, very hard to buy sewing machines from retailers at the moment because of lack of stock. I um, mean, they're all crying out to get more in. And they will come in. Now the Suez Canal blockage has stopped and planes are running a little bit more, et cetera, et cetera. They will start coming in, but it's gradual. It's gradually we're getting back to it. And of course, a lot more people have taken up sewing in the lockdown, which is fabulous news for all of us. We think that's brilliant. Long may that continue. Now, we have got a monochrome cotton canvas bundle. So these are 100% cotton, but they are heavier weight. They're sort of canvas weight and they are wider. Let me open up the grey. You possibly wouldn't want to use this in quilting. Can I hope? Yes. So it's nice and wide. But if you're thinking bag making, or maybe you're doing cushions for the garden or the backs of cushions, you can mix these with any of those beautiful prints that we've had. The great value, 10.99 for three, so that's one and a half meters for 10.99. So that's the gray, the black and the cream or off-white. That's really, really handy to have. They're nice go to, they're nice to have, and they're really good if you want, if you wanted to make a bag and you're thinking a bag, one of the, some of the bags I like is when you have a dark base and then you have a pattern around the top. So it's two thir a third and two thirds. So the third would be the dark base. This is going to be the bit that sits on the floor or whatever, gets, gets more grubby. And then you choose one of these absolutely glorious prints to do the top of it. That would look so stunning. And it would go with any of these here. So it would go beautifully with the black. And it would also go with the white or with the gray. Now, some of these we do have on their own. The black is backing stock. It's by the half meter. So this by the half meter on its own is 3.99. It's not, it's not a really stiff, it's not a really stiff canvas, no. I wouldn't use it to, for dressmaking, it's t it is too stiff for dressmaking, but I would think it would be good for bags, for cushions. It is a nice quality, yes. It definitely is. It's not like a camping bag one, it's not like, it's, it's ever so fluffy, this one. It is just solid black, so <laughs> all these fluffy bits on it. But very, very nice. It's, it's, it's canvas, but it has a soft handle to it as well. So that's really nice. Now we have got another bundle. We've got a blues bundle. And this is just a metre because it's two, again, it's two half metres. So you've got two half metres here. This is 6 99 for two half metres. So that means you're making a saving. So you're getting, that's a metre meter of fabric, basically. So it's a metre, so if I show you a half metre, so you're getting twice that for 6 99 Nice wide fabric, nice colour. This is a lovely sort of jade blue, jade green. So again, would look really beautiful with, if you were making a bag and you wanted to put dark and light that just looks so beautiful together. So there's always, always things you can do with these beautiful fabrics. And it also comes with a light blue. So that's your bundle there. Sort of a jade green and a light blue, 6 99 for the two pieces. Oh, we have got jade on its own. So yes, we've got jade, because we're being asked, so we're, we're responding. So yes, 
jade on its own really beautiful again it's that same weight as the the monochrome bundle it is canvas so it's got lots of stability in there but it's also quite a soft handle it would be good for door stops it would be if you were going to make your own baskets fabric baskets it would be great to line fabric baskets or to have on the outside and if you're making to sell this is an affordable way because it is a good quality and it's got body to it so this is 3.99 for a half a meter or if you wanted a meter just put two units in and then you get two units you get one meter when you buy it individually we have another duo which is the lilac one no singulars i'm afraid you have to buy them like this so if you want the lilac bundle 6.99 for the two half a meter of each again it's that beautiful quality solid color difficult to tell the right or the wrong side so it doesn't really matter so if you've got something and you have like a a turn down lip on a basket or something it will still look lovely or of course again you can bring in one of our beautiful color prints to join with that that looks really good or indeed so does that so these are ones we've looked at earlier so bear these in mind Now we do only have five of these bundles left. If you wanted to buy two, remember they will come pre-cut because they are already a bundle. So you will get two times half meters rather than a meter. So that is our lovely purple bundle. Let's, we're just gonna have a quick look at the early bird again before we finish. Now there is a load of other things that we had ready for the show, but of course we haven't got to. So do bear in mind, you can actually look on the website and you can find them. So, early bird. This is one of the pieces of the early bird. So this is a half meter of this lovely blue fab back back background to this sort of dressmaking fabric. You get half a meter of that. You also get half a meter of this one. Oh, let's put it up the right way. So this is, so you can make such lovely things for your sewing room, for sewing friends, from cushions to bags, to mats to put your sewing machine on, all sorts of things. Really, really lovely. And so that's, another, that's two half meters there, so that's a meter, plus you get this panel, which is beautiful. So it's a five pound saving today. This is our early bird offer. So if you didn't see us earlier, this is a really lovely, big square and it's got these beautiful prints on it and they were sort of all you could actually cut them up as they as they show here or you can leave them as a whole I mean that in itself would look lovely if you put wadding and a board behind that you could actually make a really nice pin board with that or of course bags or you could cut up the panels and you could make smaller bags smaller little caddies for different things now, okay, so that just brings us very neatly on to cutting up panels to essentials. And we were using them earlier today. I'll fold those up in a minute. We have got two rulers. Oh, let's tip those off. So these, we're going to use the longest one first. So this is a creative grid ruler. Now, the thing about Creative Grid, their unique selling point is that they have the sort of grippy surface on the back and it's all the way round. All the way round, dots here, 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 and here, and on that. Everywhere there's, there's a sort of print of something, you've got the soft. Now, that is quite unusual because a lot of rulers will have like two or three. But what that means is it helps grip onto the fabric. It's not going to damage the fabric. It's not really bumpy and lumpy, but it will help grip onto the fabric and prevent the ruler moving. So when you're cutting out on your cutting mat, obviously you can't do it on a table with a rotary cutter, that will stay in place a lot more easily without having to put excessive weight on it. 
because I know that can sometimes be a problem. People holding these down can be the problem. So having those grippy teeth, it also has all the sort of measurements. It's got them half inch in black and inch in white. So this is in imperial measurements and it's all subdivided as well. So you've got inches, you've got some angles, you've got a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle there. So you can cut on the bias as well. And this one's 60 degrees. You can cut yourself just off very easily with this one because it's good, a good length. This is a really good one to have when you want to cut across the width of fabric. So this is, this is often the first ruler. You do pay a bit more for greater grids, but that, that fact that you've got those grippy teeth on the back, they do make them, that is really their special thing. It makes them very special and very, very handy and easier to use. There's nothing worse when you're trying to cut out fabric than it going skew whiff because it hasn't got enough grip on the bottom. And then this is one of our most fav favourite ones. This has checked out so much, it might be better not on the fabric perhaps. That's better. You, again, this is the one that Sally Ann was using earlier. Again, you have all of, all of the little bits on here, all the way around as well, with this sort of self-gripping. And then you've got your angles again. So you have 45 and 60 degree angles, as well as your inch squares as well, subdivided as well. If you want to go down to an eighth of an inch, um, you can do. So really lovely. So the blacks are in half and the whites are in inch. $14.99. This one you, you'll use probably again and again and again. It is very, I'm just creeping it into the shot here. Um, if you look after them, there's no reason why they won't last as well. Uh, they're nice acrylic, which means it's what, it's what you need with your rotary cutter. And they do have a hanging hole in the top. So like you can see, oh, you can't because we've got a quilt in the way, but we have ours hung. So we have them hung, so you can hang them, keep them nice and straight. Or of course you can buy ruler holders, which you sit them in, which we do have on the website as well. If you look after them, they will just last. And this is a great size to take to classes. It's not too big to carry in your bag, it really isn't. So it's a really lovely ruler to have. Now, oh, okay, in the break, we're going to play through some of the other things that we haven't managed to get time to, like the rotary cutters and the chalk pencil and this superb, don't, don't miss this. <gasps> I love it, love it, love it, love it. So this is a cutting board. This is, you can place it. We can't, we haven't got any time, but do look online for that. I absolutely love that. Um, so we're going to go to break because we're going to come back and I'm going to stand. Oh, right, okay, I don't have to move. Um, we have got this beautiful quilt that is behind me. Um, I have just gone invisible. This is already going on pre-order. Sally Ann Harrison is going to come back and she's going to share her tips on creating the most difficult part of it, just so that you'll be confident to do the whole thing. It's huge, as you can see. Look, can you, ooh, which way should I need to go? So yeah, it's uh, over five feet wide because your arm width is your height. William Morris fabric, and some of those fabrics you can't get anywhere else. So you have to buy that lovely quilt. So that's in just a few minutes. So grab a cup of coffee, go through all the other things that we have missed on this show, and be back in just a few minutes. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. 
You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the sewing with her. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Look at this. Just look at this. This is so utterly amazing. It really is. We are already selling this and a lot of people have already checked out. Um, we do have limited stock. I mean, not I'm not saying we are down to the last two or three, we're not. But it is an amazing, amazing quilt. It's huge. Um, I don't know what the finished size is, um, but oh, 183 times 209 centimetres. It is a big quilt and it's William Morris fabric. Now some of this William Morris fabric we have not had on the show before, so it is in this lovely kit. And this is what the quilt is. 
So it's 149.99 for a William Morris quilt. Now, earlier on, Hannah was saying to me, can you imagine if you have William Morris wallpaper? You can't move, if you move, you can't take that with you. And that could be 50 pound a roll. This is a heirloom quilt that you're making and you can take it with you when you move house. You don't have to leave this behind. And you can make it as a wall hanging, you could make it as a quilt for the bed. It's absolutely superb. Now, we do offer it, because it's over £100, we offer it in three split payments of £49.99. So you don't have to take that. If, you, if you've, you know, you're, you're confident you've got the money, that's fine. If you do want to, it means it's an affordable option for you. It's interest free. You get the quilt after you've made your first payment and then you make two subsequent monthly payments. Very simple and easy. Now look. All these beautiful fabrics. So some of those you won't have seen here before. The ones with hairs around the outside, um, the blue and the green. A quarter of the stock has already gone and we haven't even got going on it yet. So I'm going to open up this box. I'm, 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 I'm just sort of holding on to it. This is a really good, lovely gift. Uh, that's what it is. Stand and Stars Quilt Kit. The fabric is from Free, Free Spirit. There's seven printed fabrics of 100% cotton. In total, it's over eight metres. And of course, you get the instructions. If I open it up, excuse me, I'm just going to cough. So, what you get in the box is this superb instructions. So you've got nice clear instructions on how to put this all together. And you get the templates, which you can transfer onto freezer paper or template plastic or whatever, so you can cut your templates out. And then, you get a, some black tissue. No. <laughs> what do you get in here? I'm going to move this box out of the way. What you get is some gorgeous, so eight metres in total of seven different fabrics to create this quilt. Now what you're going to get is enough to do the big quilt front and the binding. So you will need your backing. Look at this. Look at that. I've got one through it all. This is going to be ruined now, Hannah. That means I can take it home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's going to want it now. <laughs> Nobody's going to want this one now. No, mine. No. <laughs> I will unwrap it nicely so I can wrap it back up again. So these are our fabrics. So we have this lovely leaf. I'm just going to look at, open them all up first. Look at this one. Look at this, he's got a bunny. And birds, I'll open it up in a second, but let's just go through them all. This lovely blue. Oh, that's for a star. The other bit of the blue for the star and the border. Just seeing what they've used it for. Mm. The bunny again, but in the, the soft green. Oh, what's this one? It's like a big leaf. And then, look at this. <gasps> this is lovely. This is so gorgeous. Hares, peacocks, wolves. It, it is, it just feels so soft and gorgeous. It really does. So this goes all the way around the outside of the quilt. It, feel, it feels like there's masses here. It is a big quilt. It's a really pretty, really beautiful fabric. Of course, dare I say, if you didn't want to make that quilt, you could use these fabrics to make your own quilt. Am I allowed to say things like that? <laughs> Because I, I just think this is so beautiful.
They're really gorgeous. So that's that's your sort of signature piece, isn't it? That's just like the signature piece there. And then we had, go back to this cream. So this sort of big flowers, it's like, um, now where have they used this one? So that sort of round sort of star and things, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So it makes the star sound. So it's a really lovely sort of almost self print there. Can you see that's beautiful, isn't it? Sort of beige, almost goldy colour or silver. Looks really lovely. It has got the sheen to it, hasn't it? So that's that one. And then we have the green. This is the new one for us. We've not had this one before. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. that is, you can actually see this as a wallpaper as well, can't you? But look at this. Icon they really are iconic designs. We've got the little hairs. We've got birds. This is, this is, it is the sort of thing. If you go to a country house gift shop, and you go look at William Morris fabrics, just for a little bag or something, you'd pay a lot. I don't, I can't say how much is left because you didn't actually make the full no, quilt, I didn't did make you? That was one. somebody else made that. But I'm sure there'd be remnants. I'm just looking at these, these ones in particular. Yeah. I mean, you could fussy cut it, couldn't you, so that you ended up with two birds and you can actually just quilt in the birds. You could. So you could pull one element like the birds and pull it in here and here and here, just the bird each time when you quilted it. You could do, yeah. that would look lovely, wouldn't yeah. it? See, lots of ideas with this. So this is the blue. This makes up quite a bit. You've got this um, for the main star in the middle. What did you call this? A rolling, rolling A star. rolling star, yeah. A rolling star. You've got the rolling star in the middle, but you've also got, it's around the other stars and the border as well. So that's a really lovely blue spot. That's really lovely. Then we have this one. This one is really lovely. So again, this is another part of the star. And the, it feels gorgeous. It just has it's a, such a soft feel to it. I'm not allowed to say you can make clothes out of these ones because <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick kit. <laughs> but that's really lovely, very soft, very beautiful. And then we have our bunnies again. So again, this is the same, same as that mint green, but this time with the blue background. And as Sally Ann was saying, you could actually, you could fussy cut and you could then quilt round the birds or the, or the hairs. Yeah, you could sort of choose one or the other. Choose bring one, that. yes, and make that, bring yeah. that out as, the, as detail yeah. on those particular panels. Because those panels are just rectangles. Yeah. So very simple. But it does make the most of these gorgeous fabrics because they're nice big pieces. So you can actually see how lovely these fabrics are. And then we have this lovely sort of all over leaf. And that brings it together. It's bringing those tones together. Yeah. And obviously the instructions will tell you exactly how much to cut out of each. Now over half of our stock of this have gone. Do remember we do have split pay on this, so you don't have to pay $149.99 in one go. You can actually pay just $49.99 times three. So you pay the first payment today, and of course if you've bought something already, your post and package is covered, and then you pay the subsequent two payments in monthly instalments, no interest is charged, and you get, the, you get your pack, your quilt kit after the first payment. I was gonna say before you finish paying, but. So over half have already gone, and this is enough to make the whole of the front of this quilt. Uh, finish size 72.81 inches. It could, this is, this is the quilt that gets passed down generation to generation, or as a wedding gift. What an amazing wedding gift that would be. So it'll tell you exactly how to cut out what's needed from each, and then how to put it together. All, all, but look at this. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And I love the instructions, very clear and easy to follow. 
as we go over to the demo, we will let you know stock warnings um, so nobody misses. Now we do already have some, uh, also have some wadding, which you can see by and, and backing. So again, you can just look at those on the website and we have got some backing bundles if you wanted to buy the backing that would be big enough to go. But we can talk about those in a bit. But now let's go over to Sally Ann, who's going to show us how to do the tricky Y seams. <laughs> I was um, I was looking for my rulers that I had last. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, <laughs> I put, <laughs> I put them on the trolley. Okay. Um, you need these this, the long thin they, rulers. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Yes. C can we get those, please, Hannah? Sorry. So, what did you think when you first got this quilt, Sally Ann? <laughs> it was like a birthday gift, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it, DPD come and you open, open open the box up and then you've got that sleeve on it and and you'd start getting everything out and it's just well, it's glorious, isn't it? It's it fantastic is. fabric. And the quality is, you know, it's just second to none, isn't it? You can feel it in the quality of the fabric. And of course it's got bunnies on. I mean, and I'm a, a big, we used to have a bunny. Well, I had a bunny when I was a child and I had a bunny, my boys had a bunny as well. So yeah, it, it was just a winner. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect for you. Perfect all round. Thank you. So, what are you going to show okay, us? Okay, so I am going to show you the, uh, the centre star, which is a rolling star or a Lemoyne. So, tell me again, why is it called a rolling star? Because it sort of undulates a bit. Can you see that it sort of like looks like it's... I just think it looks like 3D. I think 3D. it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it looks like there's dimension to it. I did, I mean, it's also called, um, so in this format, you would call it as an eight point or a Lemoyne star. And I tried to get some history because that's probably related to something, isn't it? Yes. The Lemoyne Star. Is, oh, it? Lemoyne, it, would is be, it the American it? Civil War? Is it a oh, battle? I don't know. Anybody out there know? <laughs> Anybody know? I'm sure. What's the why, What's the Lemoyne Star? Lemoyne Star. So this is it. This is it. A Lemoyne. Yes. Is what's it um, referring to? So but anyway, so how do we do this? Okay, so we're going to concentrate on the centre one, and. Right, so the instructions take you through it step by step, like you said. Just winding, yeah, I've got everything here. So you start off by making a strip set. So here are the remnants of my strip set. Okay, so I've made. So a strip set for those of us that, I mean, this is aimed at intermediate, isn't it? Mm, yeah. But even so, a strip set is yeah, basically strips you. put together, isn't it? Yeah. So you can see just here, this is the strip set I've made, and they tell you is width of fabric, so it's quite big. And then you need to actually pull off your template. So the template is on the other back. Yeah. So which I pulled off using freezer paper, but you could use acrylic. Um, so you can use a template plastic, stick, which yeah. I think you just put the graphics on, didn't you? Or you can use freezer paper. Just the freezer paper, yes. So that's 6.49 a roll. Okay, so you, you create your templates from that. Start your fabric. Right. Okay, because most definitely, I mean, you're going to be creating diamond shapes and those diamonds are all those edges are going to be bias. So start your fabric and start it well before you start sti stitching your strip set together. Okay, so you cut the strips and then starch? No, you would starch first and then cut the strips okay. and make the strip set. Thank you. That's best press, by the way, if anybody right. wants that. So here's the remnants of mine plus my freezer paper template. And I just wanted to show you how if you haven't seen a freezer paper template before. So freezer paper has got a paper side and a shiny side and you can iron it on. This is the large diamond. And you can reuse it, can't you? Yes, probably about six or seven times before it loses its useful, stickiness. It? So we've just put that on the... So on the paper side, would help if I had the iron on. Yeah, sorry, I turned it off <laughs> when I was right. there. I didn't want to. We did, I did knock it off the, um, the the plinth the other day, and it was still hot, and it got carpet on it, and Cat had to clean it. So that's why I turned it off earlier. Yes, because if your iron hits a carpeted floor, it makes a mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it makes a mark on the carpet, but it also makes a mark on the iron. So you're just ironing with a, what kind of heat of the iron do you use? So this is on really hot cotton, I think. So it, it, will, it will stick. And you're putting it on the right side of the fabric? Yeah. 
so that I can see. Because I, these have got like, um, what's the word I want to use? Is it like chamfered clips on the ends where they've... Oh, what they've already clipped the ends yes. off. Yes, yes. So you can see the highest point is where you want to go on that seam. Right, yes, to, yeah. But that apex needs to go right on that middle seam. So you're just going to iron. Okay, so you don't fold it in half and then cut it on the fold? No. No, you want to get it as flat as possible. Okay. You, you really want to get the diamonds as crisp as you can so that they fit together. So. And then I would just use a, I wouldn't use a pair of scissors, I'd use a rotary cutter because you're going to get a much more accurate cut. So. so I'm just lining it up with the edge of the freezer paper, taking it off. You want to get these diamonds as, as perfect as you can get them because otherwise nice. it will come back and bite you later. If so. Yes, you don't have to try and do it as quickly as Sally Ann is, obviously. <laughs> um, you just, you know, just sort of, I think we all should take our hat off to the demonstrators because you work at funny angles. <laughs> You're standing, yeah. not sitting. Or sometimes standing on one leg. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to... So you just take off that little bit yeah, just line with, with the template. Yeah. So you end up with lots of these little dog ears all over your house. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, and then you get, just then, peel it off. Then you just peel it off. And then use it again. Yep. So, so I, I reckon... I suppose you know when it's, you can't use it anymore because it stops sticking. Yeah. So I've used... Well, I haven't... This is the ninth time I've used this one. So there's still still sticky just a little bit but you can see it's beginning to lose its stickiness but yeah freezer paper great way of making a template yeah it's very good okay so once you've cut those you can move on to assembling your star and here we go so I've made half of the center star this is how it's telling you to do it in, in, the, yes. in the book, isn't it? Yeah. And here are my diamond pieces. So I've set four and I've got another four to set. And you also need to inset Y seams. So you need to inset here, here and here. So I've got an extra, just so you can see how it's going to go together. I like that, laying it all out so you can see you've got it the right way round. <laughs> I need to do that. <laughs> I was saying um, on the show before, you know, you can do that and then um, just, you know, you can leave it on a big board and somebody said, you could take a photo. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you could do, couldn't you? On your phone, you could take a photo. Well, yeah, that is quite a cool way of doing it. And it does, it helps know where to put all your pieces, doesn't it? Look at that, look how it's okay. coming together just by doing that. Okay. I do think it's stunning. Okay. Right, so that's how it's going to go together. Let's move you away. And let's focus, take those out. What we'll focus on is exactly what it, way it tells you to do it in the pattern, is we'll put, sew a pair together and then sew in the square. Okay, so we're going to do those. Right. Y seams are built around pivot points. So I have marked pivot points on here. They don't tell you to do this in the pattern. They tell you to, when you sew these two together, they tell you to go back and unpick a couple of stitches. But I think it's much neater to actually work from a pivot point. And the pivot points here are going to be difficult to see because it's quite dark. 
Okay. I was going to say, I've got a blue one here. That's not going to help. Is yeah, it? I've, I've got this. I've marked it in red, but I don't know if you can see. If you come in. Oh, I can, I can see it, yes, yeah. which means everybody can. Okay. <laughs> By a distance, I So I'm basically, waiting. that pivot point, I've drawn a line using a Frickson pen, a quarter of an inch in along that side, and then a quarter of an inch in along that side, and that is my pivot point. So I want to sew from there to the middle. Right. Okay. So I'm going to put a few pins in it. I'm going to check that I've got it the right way around. So I'm going to use a 2.4 sort of stitch okay. and I'm going to try and put my needle down right through that point. Okay. Do you then stitch on the spot? How do you anchor the thread? Okay, so what I'm going to do is because I'm not re really sure of this machine and how many stitches it's going to take back, go backwards because yes. I want to secure the stitch. But I'm a little bit concerned about how many stitches it's going to go back. So I'll show you what I'll do. So I'll do a few stitches forward. I'm going to pick, pick it up and put it back in that spot. So then it's got no chance of overrunning. Brilliant. Okay. Because sometimes you press the reverse button and suddenly it takes three gigantic stitches backwards. Yes. Or takes an extra one. Yeah. When you think, you, you know, you set your foot off the pedal or whatever and it takes an extra stitch. Yeah, you think you've been so careful. And then right down to the point. Yes, that's the way it shows you in the pattern. We are actually now down to having 25 left of these quilt kits. Only 25 left. So it is, I mean, if you just look at this, this little stack of fabrics, I'm stroking them, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, unusual fabrics. You do just want to sit and stroke it. I think you probably would do the quilt <laughs> too. Yes, everything you can need for the front and the binding there. A very big quilt. And some of these fabrics we haven't seen before, like the bunnies. So cute. Okay, I'm just doing the same thing again with the next so pair. Say, so you do exactly, exactly the same, same thing again. Yep, with the next pair. So again, I'm going to put the needle down through that pivot point. So a couple of stitches forwards, take it out. I mean, if you know your machine well. Yes, but I think that's a, quite a good tip as well, actually, because sometimes you do find that it goes a little bit further than you want yeah. it to. Accuracy is key for this, isn't it? And you're using a quarter inch foot there, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, okay. we had to hang it on its side, apparently, just so we can see <laughs> most of it on the set. Oh, is that why the bunnies and things are going the wrong way? <laughs> ah. So we've actually hung we've hung it sideways. So you haven't got to tilt your head to look at you to look at all those lovely little critters. <laughs> I did wonder. <laughs> Didn't like to say. So now Kay. you've done both of those. Yeah, so I haven't pressed anything in any direction. Um, I think I'll just finger press it open for a moment. Now they, you, said, certain that you said that the instructions say to finger, finger press them all open, yeah. but your preference is actually to press them one way. to one way, yeah. isn't it? So again, that's whatever your preference yeah. is, I think. Okay. So then I'm just going to, I've got it in front of me, I'm going to pull it down this way and I'm going to insert this square. See? And again, you've marked a pivot point. Yeah, I've marked a pivot point. Yes. Okay, so it's right sides together. You've got the top half folded yep. out of the way. So what I'm aiming for is this. I've pulled it towards me, so it's straight on, and then I've peeled this down, so it lies on top of that one. And then I'm going to put this in here, so that it lines up with that edge. And that cross should then fall 
right on that point between those two fabric seams. Can you see that there? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to sew from there down to there. And do you sew from the very top? Yeah. Right. Sew for the outside edge. Oh, <laughs> Jane from Elna is in the building. <laughs> we've got the 720 Pro coming up next. And we've also got the, uh, which one is it? The 780. 780 Plus, I should say. We're going to probably start with the 780, but we'll see what Jane has to say. She's the expert from Janome Stroke Elna. So we've just got down to that pivot point. point. I'm just going to do a little reverse. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to flip it the other way, she says. Now you've got to attach the other bit yeah. down into, and that's that's some, you know I've heard of Y seams. Yes, a lot of people are scared of Y seams because of that precision on that corner. That's why, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse that pun. <laughs> um, but one, if you if you do as you've done, if you mark your pivot point and only stitch to that, it shouldn't be it problematic, sh should it? It shouldn't be, no. And because this quilt, the, the sort of the, the detail on this quilt are these stars with these Y seams, this is an idle way to master this technique. You'll never be frightened of them again. <laughs> using superb fabric to create a masterpiece. Now you can actually feel that, pi that pivot point and you can feel the lump of the fabric underneath so you know you can almost feel where you need to sew from yes. so if you're not going to be right on the x you're going to be just slightly off it because of the, the fold in the fabric yes. really so but you can feel that yeah as you say okay so i'm going to all oh, right somebody has asked could you get the pattern separately and unfortunately the answer is no these are quilt kits that we get directly from Free Spirit and they come as they're packaged with the instructions and the fabrics all beautifully bundled together. So no, I'm afraid not. It means that we can actually bring you fabrics we don't normally have by the half metre. So we're getting an, op it's an opportunity for us to get you some more really excellent fabrics. So, so on the back, what you're going to do then is finger press it I still quite like the idea of pressing it to one side. It just seems to want to do that more. So I'm going to go with that. Yes. So I wouldn't be too precious about that then. So if you find yeah. it works better pressing open, press open. If it works better for you pressing to one side, as Sally Ann, who is more of an expert than I am, yeah. she's saying to do. Okay. And so there you have one. You've yeah. got your Y seam in there. Okay. So I'm going to do it again to make the other one. So lining them up so that they're in front of me. I just now you see now I've seen you do that. I, I'm I'm with Hannah. Hey, what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> what's the fuss? We've got a question from Susan about about. Uh, can someone please explain what cutting on the bias means? Yes. Sorry, we did sort of glibly go over that earlier. Um, do you want to explain, Sally Ann? When a fabric is woven, you have. I always remember, can't remember which way around the warp and the weft. Weft goes left. Okay, weft goes left, yeah? Yeah. Warp goes down. So when a fabric is woven, you've got threads that go across and down, which are the warp and the weft. Um, if you cut something on the bias, it means cutting something so that you, crosswise, so that you clip all those, all those threads in a crosswise direction, which weakens the edge, so it makes it a bit more stretchy. So yeah. you've always got to be a little bit 
wary of things that you've cut on the bias because these are going to be cut on the bias. Yes, they see. have more stretch in it. Yeah. So um, ba and basically to find the bias, if I use this tissue, if you've got your fabric and you have your cut edge, so the, these are your selvages on the sides here. That's your selvage, that's your cut edge. Let me move this out of the way. What you do is you fold your cut edge up towards your selvage. And you see you've now got a triangle there, sorry, a uh, diagonal line. That's your bias. That's your true bias when your cut edge is parallel to your selvage. There are cutting instructions in there, and if you actually use one of the like, creative grid rulers, they do have um, the angles there as well that you could follow. But that's what the true bias is, and that's what cut on the bias means. Hope that helps. Uh, OK, so just have to say, why Sally Anders, that e next one, we have now got 18 in baskets and less than 20 available. That's not yours until you check out. So in other words, if all 18 check out, we'll have two left. So please be aware if it's in your basket, bite the bullet and check out to make sure it's definitely yours because it isn't yours until you've checked out, I'm afraid. If more people put it in the basket. That is a, it's a system anywhere, isn't it, where you buy anything online. Um, you can lose, and I lost. I lost out on fabric here a couple of weeks ago when uh, I had actually I, had, I was doing it by phone, and I had a my phone went dead, and when I went back again, the, the four meters that I'd put in my basket had gone, <laughs> so I lost. But there we are. As it happens, there's more fabric for me to buy today, so hey ho. <laughs> That must be one of the big drawbacks about working here. Oh, I, I can't. Is that you spend as much <laughs> as you earn. <laughs> I can't go away without buying something every week. <laughs> and the fabrics are gorgeous. And I've got that press mat. And <laughs> I've got one of the steam irons. I've got that. <laughs> so it is, so I think the lesson I'm learning in here is Precision is key, and marking your pivot points and your stitch start line yeah. is the trick yeah. to making it work. Definitely. So that one. So and would you normally go to the pressing board each time to press these, or do you just finger press? I finger press. So I finger press whenever I can, because I'm not a big fan of the iron. Because um, I mean, you could iron it and distort it. Yes, whereas that's finger what I've pressing. Heard, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, the iron is your best friend," and I think, "Well, oh, I'll be a bit wary of an iron because mm. it can distort something." Um, okay. Oh no, my friend who's an avid and, and expert quilter, she's the same. She finger presses. She said, "If you iron bias seams, you can actually stretch them." Yeah as you're ironing them. Yeah, so exactly. And, and you won't be able to get them back no, as they no, were. It's a bit like baking a cake. Once yeah. it's burnt, you can't unburn yeah. it, can you? OK, so let's move on now. So we've got the squares in. So what I'm going to do now it's is I'm going to join those two together. Yeah. And then we'll and work then you on do your putting, y -seam again. Put, putting the triangles in using the Y seam. Yeah. It's effective though, isn't it? It's so effective, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's a stunner. Really lovely. And all this lovely bundle of fabric comes in the kit here. So we are um, getting low on these. And the finished quilt size is 183 by 209. Or in old fashioned measurements, that's 72 by 81 inches. Bearing in mind, most quilters work in inches. Um, so yes, it is. It's a lovely big. It's not quite square, as you can see, seventy-two by eighty-one. Um, beautiful. That's why. That's why we've hung it up sideways so that you can see <laughs> as much of it as possible. And it is a really beautiful quilt. It is sort of. They sort of say intermediate, but once you've mastered that Y seam and, and cutting accurately, I guess that's the thing. You know, it's most of it is quite simple. Look at it. Look, look at that. It's just stunning. It really is. And you can see when you look at it like that on that picture that our little hairs and peacocks are up the right way. 
So don't, don't worry about the <laughs> fact that when our sample, it looks like they're on their sides. It's only because uh, we needed to get as much in view as possible. So this is the, the next one being done. Okay. So do the same again. Yeah. Try and once you've done this star of course, you could you could do this on another project. You could do this as a cushion centre, couldn't you? Oh it'd you? make a great cushion, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Fantastic. Lovely big cushion. I'm gonna have to have a practice at that. So again, I'm going to fold it in half, bring it down. Does it tell you to do this? No. Oh, okay. So, this <laughs> is, so don't forget then, if you, it, it doesn't tell you how to do this. This is, <laughs> this is Sally Ann's top tips here. So um, don't worry, you can always watch this again. You can watch this on YouTube, Sewing Street YouTube. And when you've got your kit, you can watch that. And she'll, she's showing you how her top tip on how to put this beautiful rolling star together with incredible clear points. Yeah, in the instructions it just says um, join them together. It doesn't say, it oh, okay. doesn't so that's go why into the detail instructions of are for intermediate then, because they expect you to know how to do that. Yeah. But now you do, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So, same process. So I'm sewing into the, into the star and then back out every single time. So you don't, you don't sew, don't try and do it round in one piece, you do it bit by bit. No, into the middle, into the pivot point and then back out again. This is looking, looking good. It's coming together. So while Sally Ann gets to that next bit, let's just reiterate what we can. Um, we have this lovely kit and it comes beautifully packaged in this box. So actually, if you're the other half watching indoors and you think, She'd like that. It's a lovely gift as well. So just saying, just saying. And this is what you get. So when you open the box, beautifully packaged, beautifully wrapped in ribbon as well. That's for use later. You get all of these superb fabrics. There's eight different fabrics. So you have this lovely one. This is a nice one that sort of goes round the star to frame the star. It's a border around the star. You have this one. This is new to us, this. But you can only get all of these fabrics like this in the kit along with the instructions. Then we have the bunnies in the blue, on the blue background. But it's bunnies and birds. I think they're hares. But really speaking, they're probably doves. I don't know. Are they turtle doves? Very lovely. Doesn't it? I think, I think that sounds good, turtle doves. And then we have this lovely blue. So this is being used for part of that main centre rolling star. Really beautiful blue. And as we were saying earlier, as Hannah sort of pointed out, that the, the fabric and this quilt is getting you a piece of William Morris in your house. And unlike wallpaper, when you move, you can take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the lovely blue spot that makes up the other part of the star. But this is also used for borders as well. And then the green with the bunnies. So we've got the bunnies and the birds again. So it's enough to do this whole quilt top and the border and the binding. You will need to buy your wadding and your backing. But we do have some of that on the show. OK, I must say there's more people in baskets than there are kits available. We're going to do the wadding very quickly before we come back to Sally Ann. Um, so the wadding, we've got two bundles of wadding here. They're both 80-20 wadding. 
okay this is all right so this one is the this is the heirloom premium it's called cotton but it's 1820 mix it's 18 cotton 20 polyester polyester it's king size so it's 120 inches square or in new money 304.8 times 304.8 centimeters so it's a really it's a lovely soft one and it stitches beautifully if you like to work with Hobbs or Heirloom, that's a good one. We also have this one, which is called So Simple. The picture on the web doesn't really show you, but this is queen size. Both are big enough for the quilt. Um, I don't know, what, it's 80, 20 polyester cotton again. Uh, queen size is 228 by 274 centimetres. So that's another option. So you can have the queen size or the king size. You might, you have less left over of this one. I always thought queen was bigger than king, you know. No, no, it, 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 this on here says queen size 228 by 274. So the king size is the bigger one. And you, if you might have a bit left, that's fine because you can always join it for other projects. Are you ready to do the next bit? I am ready to oh, do the next lovely. bit. Lovely, let's do so the next bit. Yeah, so we're following the, the pattern. So I don't know if you can see. In the pattern, what they tell you to do is to sew two diamonds together and put in a square. So I've done that one, that one, this one, and this one. And then I've inserted that. I'm going to join the two pieces together now and put in the final two pieces, top and bottom. OK. And then, and then that's that done. So. Right. So yeah, this next bit is not in the pattern either. So it's something experience has taught me over the years that if you sew from there to there, it's probably not the best idea because there's a lot of bulk here and things tend to move around or warp. So you're better off sewing from the middle to the edge and then putting it back in and sewing from the middle to that edge. That will keep it cleaner. Invariably though, you will, everybody will get like a little bit of a bump in the middle. Um, I mean, if, if we'd actually sewn to a pivot point at the bottom, which is the technique that I would have used, you'd actually get like a little spray effect. I mean, you could flatten that a bit more, but this technique in, in the pattern doesn't actually call for that. So a way around that, this bump in the middle is to um, wet it afterwards so if you join the star together say so it's joined and then just use a little bit of water in the middle I mean cotton shrinks by five percent so by wetting that middle you're causing it to shrink in oh, and it'll sit better brilliant tip yeah. okay so we'll sew that together now so again with a quarter inch seam and I'm going to try and flatten out my seams as much as possible so that they lie nice and flat So Diana Waterman has said, I so totally agree. I finger press rather than iron and it's yep. much neater. It is. I must be too heavy on the ironing. <laughs> Great demos today. She's enjoying that. Oh, thank you. I know what you mean, though. It is so easy, particularly if you use steam. Yeah. Because as you say, steam will actually affect the fabric. It can stretch it as well as shrink it. It's like stretch it when you're ironing it. Yep. I mean, and it, but the thing is, it looks glorious, doesn't it, on the ironing board? You, you've sewn this piece and you've put it on the ironing board and you've whopped it with steam and it's looking nice and flat. And then you take it back and you realise it's now totally the wrong shape. Yes. I've done it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Especially <laughs> when it's cut on the bias. <laughs> <laughs> so we must, I must encourage you, um, if you have it, it, have this kit in your basket, um, please check out if you want it because there are more in baskets than we have available. Uh, so that will be people will be disappointed, um, you know, if you don't check out. So that's us. That's all I can say. More demand than we have availability. So we're just going to do this centre seam. So we're going to sew from probably about an inch away. I'm not quite sure what this sewing machine is going to think of this bump. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to say, I don't <laughs> care about a bump. I can sew over a bump. Okay. Just to help 
wherever your bum. I notice you've drawn your line again. Yeah, so again down to the pivot point, a little reverse. I like the fact that machine's got the scissors on it. It makes it so much easier because it takes the threads to the back and trims them off. So that's, that's really handy. I love that. Right, let's try and go from here to here. So again, you went from the half and then back yeah. again. We've got to say, this quilt today is the best-selling item, which is not surprising. I mean, we knew it was going to be. I mean, as soon as we saw this, it's just like so stunning. And I think, I just honestly think, I keep saying it, but that centre star just seems to be three-dimensional to me. It just seems to want to pop out. Really, it's going to get you ha-ha-ha-ha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that scene. So now you're just ready to put those last two... And that's when you're saying that, so you could, once you've done that, you could do some steam press. Yeah, so I, I, would, I tend to finger press for as long as I can um, and then go in with an iron. But then even then, I'm, I would start with a dry iron yes. and then move on perhaps to a steam one if I thought it was all falling into the shape I wanted. We've got about three minutes left, okay. sally Ann. Put this one in. Do you want me to put this one in or do you want me just to show you briefly the little star? Could you show yeah. the little star? Because I think we've seen... Because yeah. this is a, another way of doing it, isn't it? Yes. And um, so we've seen you do that, so we know how to finish that. I say we. This is a royal <laughs> we, obviously. Hey, listen, I'm going to be an expert by the end of this. <laughs> no, I won't. So, so the little star, which are these, the, there are four of them. I started them off. So again, you use a template and a strip and then you sub cut from that strip which makes it easier to cut them out and you again you cut out the triangles and the squares that fit in between but what I would the way I would do it is she says I would press all my seams in one direction can you see these are all going to the yeah. left so I would press all my seams in one direction I would also use a pivot point like, like I described earlier that you sew to that point. Okay, that helps with the bulk in the middle rather than sewing right off the edge. So that when you end up with two pieces like this sewn together, you can actually splay out that centre, which gets rid of some of the bulk. So you would pivot point at both ends then? Yes, I would pivot point at both ends, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pivot point at both ends. I would join the whole star together so that would look like this so I would join the whole thing together then I would go back in and I would do the four oh, squares and then I would do the four triangles Again, using the, exactly the same technique, sewing in from the edge to the pivot point and then back out again, and the same here. And again, I would join it in the way I described. I would sew from here to the outside edge and I would sew from there to the outside edge. So okay. it's similar, but you'd actually put the star but, together first. Yes, I'd put the star together first and I'd use pivot points at both ends and I'd press all my seams consistently in one direction. So That's those really are the sort of key points. And again, it looks stunning, doesn't it? It does. They look really, really lovely. Let's mock it up for you so you can see. Yeah, so they're going to look like that. I think it's going to look really lovely. Good. Thank you so much, Sally Ann. It's okay. It's it lovely was working on it. It really was. Was it? Yeah. Really nice to work on. Yeah, lovely. Well, you've made it look so easy. You really have. When are you back in? I'm back in on the 17th of June. 17th of yeah. June. I'll be on holiday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
but I'm sure everybody's going to look forward to that. <laughs> and, and don't forget, if you wanted to look back and see that on YouTube, you can do so. So you can get some of those tips and hints that Sally's added in on, on YouTube. But let me just open this box again. This is the last few that need checking out. It does have a really lovely sleeve on the front, which has just fallen off the table. Um, when you come, it comes in the box, you open the box and inside, it's like a little experience to yourself and it's a little present to yourself. You have the instructions which are very clear and easy to follow. Beautifully photographed, beautifully illustrated with the templates that you need and you transfer those onto plastic template or of course freezer paper. Then you have this lovely piece of black tissue. But take out the black tissue and open up the tissue and we have all of the fabrics beautifully wrapped with a ribbon. Are you impressed that I put all that back together, look? And these are the fabrics. So this is, this is sort of feature fabric, I feel. This is this lovely fabric with... We don't offer this by the half metre, you have to buy this whole kit, otherwise I'm afraid you can't get any of these. So this has got the peacocks, wolves and the hares on it. I'll just open that out so you can see the peacock there. Isn't that beautiful? And that's used around the outer edge of the quilt. There's lots there. Then you get this lovely simple print. Just as it's very sort of silvery. On the, on the white, very subtle. So that's used to give definition. It's really iconic William Morris fabric. This is our lovely, again, we've not seen this one before. This is the lovely hares and birds in the minty green. We've never had this one before, it's really beautiful. And you can only get it here in this kit. Then we have the blue of the star, of the centre star, but it's also the border and it's also the borders around the smaller stars. So you've got a lot in there. So we've got eight different fabrics all together. Um, and there are, it's always the other way around, seven different fabrics and eight metres. I think that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, seven fabrics, eight metres. So you've got the right amount for each thing. So this is the other half of the lovely big star. This is all from Free Spirit fabric, so you know the quality of the fabric. All packaged and beautiful. And they're all Willis, William Morrison fabrics. So again, we've got the bunnies, the bunnies and the birds on the blue. So we then have the last of the fabrics here, which is this beautiful one to really make borders and things around. So this is, this is the little stars and the border around the main star, just to make it all pop out and look stunning. And it picks up the colours. Now, if you've managed to get yours already, well done. We are down to the point of only having a few left, but they are all in baskets. These are all, all these people that have got theirs is just running across the bottom. If you've got it in your basket but you haven't checked out and you want it, please check out because we've got more in baskets than we have available. So if you do want it, that's the thing to do. It is definitely the most popular item of the day so far. Of course, we've got sewing machines coming up. So well done to all of you who have got it. I think you'll absolutely love it. I really do. Now, next up, we have got Jane. Jane's in the building. And uh, she is coming with some two different sewing machines because we have got these fabulous sewing machines back. They're back. We're not selling something that's not available and you have to wait for it to arrive. It is here and it is available. We're starting with the 780 sewing machine, which is fabulous. All singing and dancing, does everything but make the tea. And then <laughs> after that, we are going to then look at the 720, which a lot of people have asked to for and it's now back in stock so that's the 720 uh, we do have some of the other machines that we have shown you earlier the one that Sally Ann was been using uh, we do have that we're not demonstrating them in this next couple of hours but they are there on the um, on the website and do remember that these sewing machines are on split pay oh and the quilt kit oh yes the quilt kit what has it what quilt kit this quilt <laughs> this quilt kit yes this quilt kit yes is on split pay 
and there's no interest when we do split pay and you get the item after your first payment so if you pay today it'll be wicked its way to you within the next few days and then you make your subsequent payments afterwards but we will explain a little bit more after the break um, until then have a cup of tea <laughs> Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it, you spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business, it was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike and they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colors that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 
They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping. Welcome back. I'm really sorry to tell you Jane left the building. No, she no. didn't. <laughs> she, she did, but she came back. No, she's here, she's here, she's here. And we've got some sewing machines to play with. We've got a two hour special. Um, we've got two machines for, and we're gonna start with the 780. Now this sewing machine is back in stock. We have got it. I don't know if we've got many. We haven't got masses of them. We haven't got masses. Yep. Super duper, does everything but make the tea. Um, <laughs> but we will, obviously we're going to go through the whole thing, but we wanted to show you this uh, screenshot of it first. It's um, the price point, 1999 You can get that on split pay, of course. Five payments of 39, sorry, £399.80. <laughs> £399.80, and that gets you that machine um, sent out in the next couple of days. Does it come directly from It comes Elna? directly from us, yes. Yes, so yeah. it comes, although the post and package is still covered. We don't have to pay any more of that. Um, so if you've paid 3 95 for something already, that is already covered. There's no interest on the payments if you take the split payment option. You don't have to take the split pay, of course. You can actually pay the full price um, as it is if you wish to. You will get everything like two-year guarantee um, this is all included you also get various bits and pieces i'm seeing jane's got quite a few but jane will talk those through with us so you're getting quite a lot of extras if you do have any questions please do email studio at sewingstreet.com or on facebook we are doing the 720 as well a little later so we're going to start with the 780 first is that all the messages can we go over to jane Yay. Let's hey. go for Jane. Hi, Good morning. Uh, Hello. Long time no see. Yes, it <laughs> is so actually, cute. isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely to have some machines back in stock for you now as well. And I know a lot of people have been waiting for these bigger machines to come back to yes. us. So, right, where do we start? The 780 plus. It's the top range one that we that we have for you on the Elmers. It's exclusive to Sewing Street. You can't get it anywhere else. Um, 
it's just got so many features. I where know. Would, where would it's I start? <laughs> right, where so to start? we have got here, one of the big things is we've got an 11 inch sewing space here. Yes, so it is lovely really and big, isn't is nice. it? really nice, yeah. So you've got plenty of room to get your big projects with. Not just quilting, we're doing soft furnishing, so you make your wedding dresses or coats, anything that's bulky, yep. you've got all that lovely space for it to go and through. And the lighting Lighting is fabulous, the LED lights. I don't think you realise, it probably doesn't show too well in the studio, but when you actually are sewing at home, it makes a massive difference. I mean, the extra light, especially the LED ones. Yes, yeah, They definitely. are really, really good. We've got 350 stitches on here with 11 buttonholes and two alphabets. So it's a nine millimeter stitch width on the machine as well. So the nine mil alphabet is only an upper case, whereas the seven mil is upper and lower case. So do we start, I'm gonna lift the lid up, I think first, and we'll have a little look in here and see everything is, everything's laid out really well for you. Um, I'll run through all the accessories in a minute. So it's just a case of having a look. We've got all the different stitches here. We've got all your utilities, buttonholes, appliques. I mean, a huge range of appliques. You've got 20 different applique stitches in there. So um, heirlooms, masses of quilting stitches, satin stitches, bridge stitches, which I've just recently discovered using bridge stitches. <laughs> um, they really are nice. So is that for faggoting and things like that? No. What's I a will stitch? show you later. Oh, please do. <laughs> that intrigues me. You've got me. your decorative stitches, long pictograph, play stitches, alphabets. And we also come with three needle plates with this machine. So you've got your standard one, you've got the straight, straight stitch needle plate, and also the HP, which is a professional needle plate. So we run through all those as well. So I think if I start running through what we get with the machine, then I can clear the table a little Please. bit. Please. The stylus has got a little house in the top there. So we get the cover, semi-rigid cover, canvas cover, which is quite standard. Because these machines all tuck in, there's nothing out, then it's more of a dust cover than anything else. But it's got a big pocket in the back and a pocket at the front for you. That's in. nice and handy. The it lovely, is. The bright red. So Elna and Janome, um, same distributors. Yes. Yeah. Um, they are. Am I allowed to say that sometimes the feet can be interchanged too? Yes. If you've got if you've got a, a nine millimeter category D Janome, then you can change your feet across. Yes, by all means. Yeah. So that's quite handy to it know. It is. Isn't yeah. It? If you've got another one at home, a huge extension table. That is comes really big, with isn't it. Yeah. And it comes with the adjustable legs. What I will say is, when you put the legs on, you just screw in the little top piece. Okay. And then these will just clip in and stay. So if you want to store it, you can take them all out so you've got flat storage with it. Don't lose them. But it's make sure that when you pop them in, I've had a couple of ladies recently where they haven't tightened the legs. And they said, oh, they're all wobbly and falling off. Just give it a little quarter Yes, toe. and are they adjustable height? They're adjustable too? height. The bottom adjusts. Let me take this one off. And I can probably show you. This is the adjuster on the bottom here. As you see, we can do it. And in the box, there's some little... Um, foamy pads to pop on the bottom as well so yeah, it's so much table. easier to work with a big extension table yeah. isn't it I and can't believe this is exclusive to us as well it is and a little tip with these with the legs if you alter them to fit your sewing surface what I said is just a little dab of different coloured nail varnish on the bit that stays on the table and bit that goes on the leg so when you put them back on you're putting them back on the right place and they're not going you're not going to have to keep re-altering re re them every them. time that you use that's them that's a good little tip it is I'm full of Wonderful idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> if I say so myself. With these as well, we've got the knee lift, which I know quite a few of you are familiar with, which is great. It pops in here and it just gives you the ability to lift the presser foot just by popping your knee across. We can't fit it on on the table. It's, um, we don't have the space, unfortunately. That goes down there. Huge foot pedal, which is excellent. Also, when it arrives, we've had queries before going, you haven't put the cable in for it. It's actually... It tucks away in the back here, so it's very neat and out of the way. I see it all the time. And you might be thinking, what, what on earth are these? So it also comes, the plate here, you can actually attach this foot pedal to it and you can pop the little auto cutter on it. It's more like an industrial, so you can use that for an auto cutter if you want as well. Have you got, you've got scissors on the machine You've got as scissors well, on the you? machine as well, but some people prefer using that. So it just gives you lots of different options of what you can do. I'm going to pop these I wonder one. what that plate was for. Yeah, there's, they, these and, and does the lead, I see it's tucked in the side. Does, does it, back. Does it yeah. kind of go back on its own? No, you just wind it round. You wind it's it round. It's not a retractable okay. one. You just wind it round. Yeah. Let me put these out of the way. I'm running out of space down here already. <laughs> <laughs> this is fabulous, though. Um, 
we've got the cloth guide as well. I oh, will look at that. I'm going to leave that out because, again, it's something that we don't look at very often. And we have also got our little box of goodies here. So here we go. So All do you the, get this box? You get the box with the machine, yeah, and it's really nice for storage. And you've also got everything that's in there as well. So you've got your two extra stitch plates, which actually sit in the bottom here. And we have got, and put them down there, if you can see them well enough, um, masses of feet on here. Um, got packs of needles. We've got all the feet. I'm going to pop those back in because they're the other little bits that we use for something else. Standard Janome Elna bobbins, the same size fits all. So if you've already got a, a smaller Elna or Janome, you can still use the bobbins in it. We do have some on the website if you actually wanted to buy more. Yeah. Little cleaning brush. The quick on pick appears to have vanished into the mist of time somewhere. I'm not quite <laughs> sure where. <laughs> Uh, they do have this habit, don't they? Quick yeah. on picks of vanishing. I was coming a bit early to make sure we've got everything in the right box. So there we go. So we've got the spill caps, large, too large, with two small ones, one on the machine. And these little grey ones, that a lot of us have got the reels now on really long um, cardboard or plastic inners, um, that you can't use these because they're too long. These just pop on the opposite way, but it will okay. show you in the book. So all these little details Put make that so to much one difference. Side and move these back across. So we have got our straight stitch plate here, which is upside down, which is great. Straight stitch plate and our HP stitch plate as well, which is a professional one. It's a specific foot that works with this stitch plate, and it's this one. It's I don't know if it's got it hasn't got HP, but it's quite distinct. It's almost like an industrial straight stitch foot. Gives you a fabulous quarter of an inch on these. Oh, does it? Yeah. Can you just turn around the other way? That way? Set them upside down. Now. That's it. I can't, That's I've, been, it. I've been doing too much recently. Sometimes it's upside down and sometimes it's... I know. <laughs> it, it feels weird, doesn't it? So the it foot would does. turn the other so way. So that's well. the HP foot that goes with this. Um, we'll look at it later. And that's your straight stitch plate. The machine knows when we've changed them and it won't let you do any stitches which are going to damage it. So if you put your straight stitch plate on and you it try and do a zigzag stitch, it won't, it won't it let you. It it all out, you can't even select it. So I've had ladies crying going, my machine, I've lost all the stitches. And it's usually, I've changed change the stitch plate. plate. <laughs> and it goes very quiet and then it goes, okay. <laughs> so it's just, we've all done it, it's easy done, but it will grey them out so you can't actually see them. Oh, we've got a customer re review here. So Gillian just emailed in. Talk about stitch plates. Mm. I bought the Elna 780 Plus last August, my first ever purchase from Sewing Street. This was a big jump, my goodness it was, from a 30-year-old machine. And I have to admit, it took a while to become familiar with all it can do. I'm now in love with it. My tip for quilters is, is to use the HP foot and plates to get a perfect scant quarter-inch mm -hmm. seam with no chewing of fabric at the start. Thank you, Gillian. Thank you. It's it nice is. to have a review from somebody yeah. else. It's, yeah. And again, if you're doing dressmaking or using time the lawn or anything like that, straight stitch and pop this on because you've only got the single hole in the centre. It isn't going to chew the fabric down there. Now, you're talking about changing the stitch plate. On many mm. machines, to change the stitch plate is quite a faff because you have to unscrew everything. How no. easy is it to on change these. the stitch plate? Just pop this off. Okay, I'm going to take the accessory box off here. I can manage that. And again, on here, let me get the little stylus out so you can see what I'm doing. On here, we've got a lock on it, so I can lock the machine so nothing's going to work. And I would suggest you do that every time you're doing anything. Oh, so you don't have to turn the lights out? No, it just literally locks the machine. Oh, that's the only thing that will work is your auto foot lift. Yeah. Um, and to change your needle plate, there's a little button here, we can see it. And I just press that and it pops out. And, and it's as it. simple as that. See, yeah. I knew that because I did it the other, the other <laughs> day. But it does make a huge difference because so many people... Yes, it knows when it's out too, it does, doesn't it? It will tell you and it will tell you. Yeah. A little message will come up to check you've got the but right it is, press foot it on. It can be such a fag to, to take that throat plate take off. Take the little screws out. And yes, and then put them, them, them back so in I don't again. Lose them. So that really is... I knew, I knew it. That's why I wanted to ask you because <laughs> I think that's such a boom. It, it really, really is. is. It's ideal. Just And it makes really it much way. more easy to change. Therefore, you are more likely to change. Yes. Yeah. Whereas if you've got to start taking screws out yes. and finding this and finding yes. that, you think, no, I'll just leave what I'm doing. So we do. We get all the feet that we possibly... I'm going to pop those back over here now. We get all our feet with it. So pop that foot with it over there as well. So you've got... Oh, the other one I didn't say that goes with the, it's the HP2 foot, that again goes with the HP2 plate, and it's like a little narrow walking foot, and that's really handy to use as well for anything that's got two layers and above, because it just I've never seen a narrow walking foot. It's 
very, very handy. It and is, again, as always with these, the plates will pull off so that you can get extra plates for them. This is the one for the machine. Um, if we get time, I'll show you how to put it on because it goes on slightly differently to the others. So we've got everything in here that you could possibly need to start with. Um, so we've got satin stitch feet, open and closed toe. If we can see those. Oh, I'm doing well, I've got them in the right place. Our quarter of an inch foot, the seam guide on it. Our quarter of an inch foot without a seam guide on it because not everybody wants that little black guide oh, on the see, side I like of it. Black guide, I, I do personally, admit, yes. but I know quite a few people yeah. don't. So. so this would really become your workhorse machine. You could use this for absolutely everything, everything. couldn't you? Yes. Absolutely everything. From just a basic straight row of stitching to all your decoratives, making quilt labels, everything like that. Yeah. yeah. Furnishings. Yeah. Bag making. Absolutely everything. I mean, this stitching. little foot that I said, the HP two foot, is brilliant for bag making because it really just climbs over everything. So we've got the over edge foot. We've got the blind hem foot. We've got oops, zipper foot. Wow. We have got the button sewing on foot, which is fabulous if you've never used it. Even I do buttons and buttonholes now because they're so easy with these machines. We've got the little open toe foot. That's for a variable zigzag, which is one of the features of the machine. And then we've got these two, one, two, and this one. These are for your free motion quilting, which will look at how you set those up. And I use those all the time now. You do get what people would call as a standard free motion foot, which is your, you've got the open toe or the closed toe. The open toe, you get a lot better visibility with it. And a lot of people know these as a hopping foot, a darning foot. Um, I know, there's all different names for the same feet. I know, yeah. and it's just working out whatever it is. You've got your screwdriver, the little brush. There is a quick on pick as well, which say, which has <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> which has disappeared. <laughs> Needles, again, some ne most of them are there. Um, and the buttonhole maker. And again, if you can see, it looks slightly different. We've got the stabiliser plate with it, which is great. If you're doing stretchy fabrics or if you're going over a seam, if you're doing a coat or something, you're going over a seam, it sandwiches between and it just feeds it through really well. Brilliant for stretchy fabric as well. Oh, yeah. yes. So yeah, and again, it's a standard one-step buttonhole. We just pop the button in the back. And do that. So right, I'm going to pop these away now. That's nifty. I've oh, and I almost forgot. Last but by no means least is our fabulous ruler work foot. Oh yes, because that's much more uh, popular, isn't it? Ruler it work is. Now. Yeah, yeah. We do do a set of rulers, but I know a lot of people have already got them. But it's designed to work with the machine. So I know some of the generic ones, you have to be really careful not to use needle up and down and different things like that. But this is designed to work with the machine, and there is a setting on the machine for it as well which we'll go through when we look at sewing applications. Did you um, say you had a hem of foot? Yeah, rolled hem. Yes, rolled yeah, hem. Yeah. Rolled hem. Yeah. I'm just looking at all those feet you've got. There's not many you would need in addition no, anyway. No, and this one again, I would say it's more for, well, it's for lingerie mostly, the little rolled hems like that. But you'd probably get away with maybe a patchwork weight cotton or a light calico mm. through it, which would be I fine. I think things like chiffon work mm -hmm. well on that yeah. as well, so fine silks. Yep, and our quilting guide bar which is a very underrated... I was just saying that this morning. Very underrated that. piece yes. of kit, that one. Yeah. You can, and you can use it in the back of your regular foot as yeah. well as in the back of the walking foot. Yeah, I you, can't, use it all you don't the time. use it in the back of the, um, the walking foot on these. You don't use it in the back of these. You might be able to get it through. But I use it on here all the time for different things. Yes, I use mine all it's the time. It's brilliant for doing cross-hatching and things like that. So you just use that and off you go. Um, and last but not least is a little weird looking thing there. Humper well, jumper. It's a humper jumper. Or if you're doing buttons, it's putting the shank on. So yes. You just pop it underneath. So, yeah. Right, I'm going to pop these away and then we're going to look at the machine. So you've got loads of feet you've there. You've got How everything. many was that in total? A lot. Oh, so we've got <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 feet. So, 18 I think, feet. I think they cover most spaces for I us. I think so. so going just going to quickly look at the price again. So we've got UK exclusivity of this. So obviously we can't find this machine on other sites, um, but we have found it in France. Oh, this is a euro. So this is in euros, 2,599 euros. That converts to 2,233 pounds. So that's in Europe. And obviously you'd have to ship it and everything else and you wouldn't get the local... Yeah. You wouldn't get a warranty. If you buy it from you and bring it into the UK, you'd it's have to not covered to, under a UK, yeah. you have to go back to... Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't make yeah. any sense. 
But we just wanted to show that comparison just to let you know that although we can't show other comparisons with other UK places because we're the UK exclusive, it gives you an idea that we are giving it to you at or selling it to you at a really good price. So very good. And of course, we do have the UK customer services. You do, yes. Don't you? Yes. And help. Because yeah. I know that's really what you're good. particularly or good at. Sometimes it'll get flagged through to me. So if you've got queries, you know, just send them in and one of us will answer them yes. for you. And the other thing is it comes with a standard two year warranty. There is a card in the box where you, where you can extend it up to five years directly with us. So two years and then yes. an add on three. So that's, that's good. And it comes with a manual, I can see. The manual's here, really good manual. So it just shows us, uh, here we are, it even tells me, I've got, it says 23 feet, but we'll take out the humper job, so 22 altogether, different pieces. When you get your machine, it's worth having a look, opening it all up um, and getting everything out and just checking it off to make sure you've got it all. The buttonhole foot often tends to be in the back of the accessory box, so we haven't forgotten to put it in, it's just in there. Yes, because you can actually put things in the front and the, the back front of that, can't you? We'll lift up and we've got the little piece there with the little... Um, circular pin there and also the spare spill pins tucked in there as well and then the back there's another space to put more in the buttonhole foot's quite often in there when you yes the so you've got lots of storage in there there's a storage yeah and again i quite like these on the top here when i'm working you know, i tend to use between two or three feet and i'll just pop them in there so they just literally oh good idea the so ones you're using regularly just pop it in there and it stays there yes so it's usually between the a foot and the satin stitch foot and the quarter inch foot so just in invisible there. zip foot no, I don't do dressmaking. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not one of my one of my passions. <laughs> I dabble occasionally, but not very often. Um, so again, a really good manual. It's got everything in it. Setting up the machine, how to attach the legs, how to do everything. And then it goes through, and it's showing us here. It goes through all the buttonholes and what you'd use them for. You've also that, got... That's so useful because people always say, well... What do I use all these Why have I got all these for? different buttonholes? Yes. What are they it's for? It's useful to know what they're for, isn't it? And another really useful one is buttonhole number two, the memory one. So you can do a buttonhole six inches long using that if you want. And the machine, once you've set it, the machine will remember what you've set it at and it will continue to do them for you. So that's a Brilliant. really nice feature. Obviously, you know, with a one step buttonhole, that covers most things. Well, only up to an inch though. Yeah. Because button, the button that fits in the back is usually mm. can only be a, an inch in it's on diameter. These, there's the option on these. You can just alter it a little bit here, longer and shorter in your buttonhole. If you want to say you've got a domed button, yes, and you're a little bit wider, so you can make it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. But always do a test one, yes, on definitely. the fabric that you're going to sew with, with the interfacing, and make sure you put some interfacing in yes. as well. But I like the fact that you've got an option to do the longer ones because I I teach how to do an extra long buttonhole, but. Mm by cheating the machine, yeah. pretending that you're that little lever that comes yes. down. But yeah. actually, if you can do it by You can memory, do it on here, number then, two on the memory, yeah. and it remembers it, so it will do as many as you like yes. on that. So I mean, people say, well, why do you want extra long buttonholes? Well, firstly, if you get really big buttons, but also yeah. if you wanted to do, like if you were making a scarf and you wanted to slip one end through yes, the other, that's really good, you can yeah. make an extra long yes. buttonhole to do so. So yeah. anyway. Anyway, lots and lots of things. Gone with the machine. Yeah. So again, it comes through, it tells you everything that you need to know on here. We've got stitch tapering, um, we've got the start over key, we've got pattern, you know, pattern combinations, we can elongate the satin stitches, but everything is in manual. So please take time to have a little look at it. Um, and if you're not sure, it's in here somewhere. Yes, definitely. So it's worth... It's worth having a little look at that. So I'm just going to pop this back in again. And again, I had a lady querying a while ago. The pivot pin, the Elner exclusive pivot pin, which is actually taped in the corner down here. We haven't forgotten to put it in. So it's in there. Close that up. Right, so machine, loads and loads of features on it. One I particularly love is the light. It's got the <gasps> light that comes out. That's so cool. It makes a massive difference if I'm sewing at home and you forget to pull that out. You suddenly think it's a bit dark in here. What's going on? And again, you've got a little bit of movement. I tend to, to turn it up this way um, and pull that down because it seems to bounce off here and gives you even more light on your work. Yes, workspace. it does. I yeah. don't know how easy that is to see at home, but I can see that here. So I'm going to pull yeah, that so down and then turn and then it up take a bit. It back. And you can just see, it just bounces it down yes. even more. So you've got a really good... So that's additional view. light. So if you're working yes. on dark fabrics, dark threads... Just anything. Yeah, I mean, I've got a daylight bulb in my sewing room, but this still makes a massive mm. difference. So I love that. So we've got all our stitches on the top here. Um, 
as we do. Threading is pretty much the same as all the machines. It's straightforward. It's almost thread by numbers. I've threaded this up because I've had a quick try on it. So solid line is always for the needle. Dotted line is for the bobbin. Always. Again, stand a bobbin on, pop that across. It, it will tell you that it's going to wind the bobbin. Don't pop your thread through this little guide here because it's actually a cutter. So when you've wound your bobbin, instead of having to go up to the other end or find your scissors, just pop it through there and it cuts it for you. So I know I had one lady, she kept saying, it's not working, it just keeps cutting the thread. And then when I said, what are you doing? She was popping it through there. It doesn't go through there. So, right, I think it's time we have a little look around the screen, actually, on here. So I've currently got it locked at the moment. But we're going to have to bear with me because I'm going to try and get... Can, we, can I move that a little bit? That's better. So we can see, so I've got it, so I'm going to unlock it here now. We can follow you if you need to move it more. It should be, I think it should be. Some people have it right round facing them and they still Do manage. They? Yeah. And we have yeah, the yeah. technology now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to doing it from the back on here. <laughs> there, if I leave it there, that should be fine. There we go, we can talk around that. So again, as with all machines, it defaults onto a straight stitch. When you switch the machine on, it tells us what foot we need to use here. And here we've got the stitch width and the stitch length. Because you've got no width on a straight stitch, and it's a 9mm machine, you've got 91 different straight stitch needle positions that you can use. So you can get absolutely precise with what you want to do. And again, we can pop the little arrow here, pop that up, and it's got here, say, the width, the length, the tension, and the top foot pressure. That's really key one. A lot of people don't use that, and it can be quite handy. We did a lot of quilting with decorative stitches recently. Um, and just by taking the top foot pressure off, I've been able to use a satin stitch foot on a thinnish wadding and it's gone through beautifully because the top foot pressure is what's coming down. So if we're taking that off, it's going to flow through easier. More easily, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's another one. Again, manual. And then sure. having done that, how do you get it, you get it back to standard? So if I change it, so if I'm going to go default, and it takes it straight takes back it straight to the default. Back. Yeah. You've also got the ability on here in settings, it's got a favourite stitch setting on it. So you can actually go in, you can set it to exactly what you want. I tend to do it on applique stitches more than anything. And you can override the default settings on the machine and it will always default back to your setting, which is really handy because how many times I've done it, you write it on a piece of paper or the fabric, you've tested it on and it disappears somewhere. <laughs> And you're never quite sure what you were doing. But that's a really good feature. But again, it's something we can come to in a little while. So we could do a whole two hours on this. At this I rate. know, I know, easily. <laughs> really easy stitch selection. Just touch the screen and it takes us through. And it shows the stitch. Shows and then if you stitch. increase the length or width, it show, shows, shows it that change. There. Yeah, can you see it's changed? Yeah. It's gone up to maximum. And again, so you can see it changing on the screen yes. while you're doing it. And then it will automatically default back to its settings when I go onto another stitch with it. You've also got a really nice feature on stitch number 12 with a little arrow that's going that way. It will sew backwards if you want for as long as you want it to. Which is, I've, right. I never thought I'd ever use it. But to be honest, sometimes you've got something under there and you're thinking, I just need to get in there, but I can't turn it quite yeah. enough. So just a few backward stitches. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. 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 I found it One of those things that you're... Find when you've used it, you'll realise how useful how it is. How useful it is, and why didn't I use this before when it's on my machine? Yeah. I think we're all guilty, aren't we, of sticking to the same sort of half a dozen stitches most of the time. So those are your utilities. They're all the basic utilities. And again, we can scroll across the bottom here. It's got your over edge, uh, blind hems, everything like that. And again, it always tells us what foot to use. I'm back onto here. So the next one, if we come on to the little curly one here. This brings us into the different categories that are all inside here. That's all the 300 so odd stitches. All you these, say. yeah. And again, we can go across and it will take us right through. So if I want to go on to decorative, I touch that. That brings me up all my decorative stitches. It also tells me on the top of the screen here that I've got eight pages of decorative stitches. So you can just scroll through and it takes you through all the different stitches oh, and again it's just touch screen to select them so we've also and a lot of people are not quite sure what this is on the bottom here that's a space so if you're putting a decorative stitch pattern together you can pop a space in between stitches okay. if you want and the lock stitch is this one so it will do let's just go back and 
pop that back on there. So again, on the top here, we've got, this is the automatic foot lift. I'll start sewing in a minute to show you how it works. We've got here, we can select our, so we can put a pattern sequence together really easily. So you've got three little hearts, and you've got something that's a little heart, a little spade, a little diamond, and it just selects one pattern repeat for you. So you can put those through together. If you want to check what you've done before you sew it, and I highly recommend it with labels and alphabets. Yes, definitely. <laughs> you can pop here and it brings up on the screen. You get up to 50 different characters in there so you can check through. And maybe you've put a stitch and you're thinking, oh, I don't think that's going to look quite right when I sew it. You can go back and take it out again. Do you have to do, you have to do all the ones before it? Or can no, you just take if I want one? to take the first one out again, I can just go up here and it's changed colour and pop it in the dustbin and it's gone. And you've got a little folder there, does that mean you can you save can, it? You can, yes. You've also got a USB port so you can save your stitch sequences if you want to um, or if you put something specific together, you know, like handmade by grandma or something that you're using all the time, just save it in there or onto the USB. It also comes with Stitch Composer which means you can, it's a bit of software, it's Microsoft that you can use on the laptop or your, you know, your desktop, whatever, um, and you can create your own stitches. And because they're a nine millimeter width stitch, they are really quite effective. So if you've got a pattern with a little fabric or anything, I'd quite like that in a stitch to sort of complement it. Yes. You can create it. It's just amazing, it's magic. I know, and then pop it onto USB into the machine and then you can sew away and you can save them on the machine as well so you can have your own library. So you're not just limited to what's on the how machine. Many, how many um, stitch combinations or things can you save? How many memories have you got? Oh, I'd have to look up for the memory on there. But a few. I've never run out, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I think and the thing I also to say is, although you know this machine, I, it's okay, it's just under two grand, but I would definitely recommend people buy a machine they aspire to, really, yes. not one that they can use comfortably now. Yeah. Get one that you can learn to use rather than you grow out of. Yeah. Get something that you so can even grow if you're, with. Yeah. If yeah. you're thinking, I'll, I'll never do that. I'll never do stitch creation, etc. Maybe what not now, but maybe in five years yeah, you will. Something might do, or even just because it's there, you can just have a go at it. Yeah. So there's lots of different things. And as for stitch combinations, I think they must be infinite on here because you can combine so many different <laughs> stitches, letters, everything that you want to. You can really just go to town and create really personal things that you use all the time. And again, if I'm just doing the stitch on here, we'll put that one back on the bottom. If I just want to do that as a one repeat, that's when I use my lock stitch. Oh, hang on a minute, why is it not letting me do it? You have it? to get to the because bottom of the sequence. I'm just pop that back in and I shouldn't have some on the bottom of the sequence and it's lock stitch so it'll just sew that repeat for me and then stop. If you're just using an alphabet and you've put it together it will automatically stop at the end of the alphabet. Um, but say with the decor as a rule of thumb I would say if you've got the lock stitch in the corner you need to use it if you don't want it to continue. And, and what so. about um, underneath each one you've got like a line of those stitches. Yep. Are they just, are they stitches you can cut off? Um, I suppose you could unpick them, I never do. It's how the stitch is formed. Let me just have a little, let me just two seconds and I'll get a little piece of fabric and yeah. fill them and we'll have a look. I've had, I was so busy trying to sort the machine out when I got here this morning. I've usually got all this out and ready to go. So we're just going to talk about the price again whilst you're okay. busy getting that out. Now people are putting this in the basket. Uh, this is exclusive to us, so I'm afraid you can't get it anywhere else in the UK. So we can't sort of give you comparisons like that. We did just look at one from France. Um, you know, if you happen to live in France, then that's great. Or if you've got um, a French holiday home or whatever. Just, but it's just to put it into context, really, €2,599, which works out to about £2,200. 233 2,233 by the way, not 233, um, which is obviously more than we're selling it for, 1,999. And you can get it into five split payments, no interest is charged. Uh, we haven't been able to offer this machine to you all of this year. So this is the first time this year. They are like gold dust. We don't have loads and loads. So, you know, we are sort of quite limited on what we do have. You can get five split payments of £399.80. They come direct from Elna, come with a two-year warranty from Elna, um, and they are in the UK ready. We are not asking you to buy them and then wait three months for delivery. They are available to us. 
which is why we're so excited about having them back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Right, so you've got I'm, some fabric for I've us. I've got some fabric for us, so I'm just going to pop this here. And again with these, we've got the automatic foot lift on here, which is this little button. I'm going to run through these before I start. So it's got the automatic foot lift, scissors, need look down, lock stitch reverse, and stop start and the speed control, which I'm going to take down a bit. The stop start means you don't need to use the foot pedal if you don't want to. Do you have to unplug the foot pedal? Yes, take it out because it will recognise that you've actually got the foot pedal in there and it will, it will tell you that foot pedal's attached yeah. if you sort of go to hit that without it on. It's just a really handy feature. So with the automatic foot lift as well, if I pop this little icon on here and you can see it's, got, it's changed colour, that means every time I stop sewing, the needle will stay in the fabric, the foot will lift and you, it's really brilliant because you're free hands and pivoting and free hands, hands. Yes. And again, it's telling me I need to put the F foot on to do these satin stitches. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to lock it out, take the foot lift up, a little black button on the back, so the foot will drop off, which is your standard presser foot, which will be on the machine when it gets to you. Pop that one back on. And they're easy to just clip on, aren't they? they? Line them up. Yeah. Line the pin up with the... What Groove. I tend to do quite often is if I'm not quite level, here's the manual. And that's another lovely thing with these. Some machines with an automatic foot lift, you can't you manually at all. And there are times when you need that manual foot lift just for precision, just to use the hand wheel, just to get it exactly yes. where you want to start sewing. So you've but got both there. I have. And again, this will tell me now, because I've lifted it up manually, I need to pop it down manually. Can't say you before I start sewing. Otherwise, if I don't, when I go to start sewing, it will come up with a little beep, you know, please lower press the foot. I'll put that on. Start, start. Well, I've got it locked out. You see, it does work. <laughs> <laughs> and it will. And again, with a decorative stitch, I never go more than about half speed with them. Same Because the machine's yes. doing an awful lot. It's because it's going backwards and forwards, sideways. Side to side, yes. yes. Yeah. Which again, why, you know, with a walking foot, you go forward with it, so your decorative stitches won't work yeah. well with it at all. This hasn't been set, but you can set it so it automatically cuts and lifts the foot for you. So it will automatically just do that for us. Pop that over there. And that these stitches are designed, they run off the bottom on the pattern. Some stitches, when you combine them, work slightly differently, so it's worth just doing a little test piece first. Put that one that way so you can see it. So you've got that little... That little leaf and little heart. You can, again if you want to put space in between where you just get a couple of extra stitches, there's all kinds of different ways of doing it. It's fine. And you can put lettering in between. That you can too. put lettering in between. The key if you use lettering and then say pop a little heart on the end of it, you'll need to put the lock stitch on and it will continually sew that sequence <laughs> for you. <laughs> so say it's a rule of thumb, I always think if it's in the corner there and I've used one of this screen last, put the lock stitch on. Unless you want it continually doing that for you. And again, you but can you're creating your own ribbon, I suppose, saying sewn with love. Yes. And then you good. cut it up into pieces. Yeah, you want it to keep yeah. on going and going. Keep on going. Or some patterns you put together, you could just be doing all kinds of different things. Some what about do. if you're making favour bags for a wedding and you want to have the wedding date and the couple's name on it? Um, yeah. And you could do that on you that, couldn't you? Here, and yes, then you could leave it and come back and do it another day yes. because you put it in memory. Yeah. You can, you can save it. Or equally, say I went off now and I'd got something set up and switched the machine off, went off and came back and thinking, oh gosh, what was I doing? You've got a resume mode on here, so it will come up with a screen that will ask you if you want to go back to your last stitch that you were actually using, and it will take you back to exactly what you were doing, the same settings, everything. Brilliant. So, that's so really if you handy. set it up for a satin stitch, yep, just maybe. so, yeah, and, you, and you've you just changed it and you're thinking, oh gosh, I forgot what it was. I forgot what I'd set it yeah. at. Resume mode. So we'll have a look at that in a second. So I'm going to take that off. Again, I've finished my sequence. I don't want to use that anymore. So I can just touch little hearts and it goes. It's gone again. So alphabet's the next one here. And that comes up with your different alphabets on here. So you can see your block, your script, your broadway, and the block, nine mil. I'm saying, it's all right, I've been using so many machines this week. We have got... One, two, three, four alphabets on here realistically. So you've got the block, the script, the Broadway, and you've got the block nine mil, which is only an uppercase. Yes. Um, the other block is seven mil and it's upper and lower case. And you can't alter the width, you can't alter the stitches, they are set on here. Which is what it is, yeah. yeah. And it literally is today, just select block nine mil. And it comes up and you can just select what you want with it. And just go out and that's it. Straightforward. I'm gonna actually sew that because it's quite 
quite interesting the difference between the um, pop that down. The nine and the seven mil. A lot of people think, but it's only two millimeters. But it no, it's amazing what it huge, looks how it looks different. different. Yeah. Huge difference for us. And again, you'll see, I haven't put the lock stitch in. It's show me which stitch it's sewing now. And it's just going to stop when it's finished for me. So it is actually locking it anyway. It locks it off. And I'll press the scissors. So that is, that is a 9mm there. And I'm just going to pop this back on now. So I need to go back. Let me just find where I'm going. I can't. There we go. There we are. Um, if we do block seven mil, you so you don't have to put it in again. It still stays in there. I'm going to take it back here. There you go. And it's even come up smaller on there. You can see it. There we go. And again, it will do exactly the same for me, and it makes a huge difference in mm. the stitches. We've got a message coming up here. This is from Nikki. I've had the Elna 780 since lockdown one last year. I absolutely love it. Can you tell me, please, which concealed zipper foot I need for it, please? It's See, somebody else does want a concealed zipper, zipper foot. foot. Just not me. No. Um, it's a Category D. It's a Category D machine, 9mm stitch width. So I think you did have them on the website, did you, concealed zipper I feet? I can't so. quite remember. Yes. But it's Category D that you need for this machine. Okay, Category D. Yeah. Because of the width. But perfect. Invisible zip feet. A must yeah. have. Absolute must have. So again, you can see now here. Up a bit, that's it. Up a bit, left a bit. Nope. So there we go. There, there, there. So we've got nine millimeter and seven millimeter. And I haven't I'm so busy talking, I haven't pulled the loose end off here. But you can see the difference in the size. Yes. It's quite dramatic. It is, isn't it? So you I like that. Yeah, it is quite a dramatic different size difference on there. And then you've got script as well. You've got the script and then on the well. smaller one, you say you can make it upper and lower case. Upper and lower case so on you the could seven put, mil. Um, you know, sewing street up a couple S, couple S sort of thing. Yeah, hmm. and then go down with it. Yeah. So it's just the you know it's the endless possibilities with it. So I'm going to go back onto here now, and say we've got all the different ones here. So heirlooms, satin stitch. I think we're going to look at satin stitch next. So with the satin stitch said we've got a nice range here. We've also got the elongation feature, so we can elongate the stitch up to five times its original length. So I'm going to choose that one. Oh, hang on a minute. Let me just oh. do that one. Let's go. And I'm going to go back onto here and that one. I only want one. So there's two ways of doing this. I can do this and pop a lock stitch on, or I can start sewing and press the tie off button as I start sewing, and it will just do one pattern repeat for me. Okay. So whichever way is easier. In fact, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to do it that way this time. I'll pop that one in. And it will just do that little one for us and stop. It's really handy. This works beautifully with variegated threads. Yes, all yes, satin some, stitches yeah, definitely really do. Really, some really lovely. Right, so I'm going to press the cut on it now. So I'm going to go into here now. And if we can see on here, I'm trying to find the right one, it's got times one here. Yep, so that's if I the press length. So, yep, if I press this, it's times two now. So again, I can just press this and it will sew it. And I'm going to stop it. It's, it should I'm just to be on the safe side. And it will go up to five times the original length for us as well. So it does. So again, you can see you've got standard, then it's double the size of it for you and it still wow. keeps the density. It does. And some of these I prefer, like I prefer this like little leaf shape, I prefer it I prefer slightly the long longer one. than the standard one. But say it's just endless variety that you can get. Just yes. by, it's always worth with a machine like this when you get it. Get some scrap fabrics together um, and do yourself like a little sample yeah, book definitely. and write on what you've done. Again, if you're just using the cotton fabric, make sure that you get some stabiliser on the back to support stitches. Particularly when you're doing yeah. definitely satin stitches, stitches yes. yes, they definitely need that. Um, now, th this has got an auto needle threader on it, it has, hasn't it? Yes. 
It has. Has it got, I, think I'm, I think it's got a terribly it's simple one as well. Here. Just... Ooh, it's in the side here, so it's on the side here, so it's yeah. an auto-needle thread here. So you just follow the thread path, number the seven is path the final through, one. Over number seven, and then it's down and through. Make sure your needle's in the correct position. Um, and if you're not sure, do a needle up, needle down, and it will set it in the right position yes. for you. And it's a little hook that goes through the eye. I personally can't sit to thread needles anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> it saves a lot of time for me. Um, and again, say it's a standard bobbin. It's the easy set with it. So I'm just gonna I think the thing is when people find they can't use their needle thread, often the problem is the needle isn't in the right position. It's not in the right position or, you know, don't be too too brutal with it. No, because you can it's a little hook that, that goes hook. through. Yes. And if you push it to one side, then obviously it's not going to thread the yeah. needle for you. I have done that and you can tweak it back if you're very careful. Yeah, yeah definitely. Very, very careful. So so going back onto these, so we've got all the different categories here. And it's just straightforward. To do there. Oh, bridge stitch, you said you were bridge going to stitch. explain. Bridge stitch, where's my bridge now, stitch? Now, we can't give two hours on this machine, sadly. No. We'd love to, but we have got the other one to bring to you. But if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to send them in, studio at sewingstreet.com. The feature of bridge stitch is, so if I'm going, going, I'm going to pop back now and pick a pattern, any pattern, where are we going? Quilt. Um, and I'll pop through to, say something like this. Okay, so it's that stitch, but I only want one of them. So I'm just going to select one. And then if I go back into my bridge stitches, star down there, um, and you've got the option to put one or three in between. You can put them to the left. You can put a triple stitch in there. So you've got all sorts of options on here. So I'm just going to pop three stitches in. That centre, which I'm thinking, oh, I don't really want that one in the centre. So I'm going to pop it in the bin and put it, on the bottom. So what that's going to do for me now is when I sew, it's just almost going to space that pattern out so you could sew a little button in between or beads or go back and do all kinds of things with it. It's a new discovery for me and I've had this on the machine for many years which is quite quite embarrassing really because you don't <laughs> always look at it, do you? No. no. I wonder what I can do with that. And it makes sense when you say it and you show it. Yeah, but it doesn't say so that. What that's done there is, instead of that pattern being really neck, one stitch in between, it's just put more stitches in between. So again, it's more variations on what you can do with the machine. So it's, I mean, you, although you say it's got sort of 300 odd stitches, actually it's, it's got it's infinite, infinite, infinite really. Infinite ones. Time you, you started mix adjusting, and match mix them, so much yes. odds and lengths and widths and everything else like that. So I think we need to have a quick look at tapering because I say, like you, I'm very conscious of the time. I it? know, I know. It's trying to rush all. And there's also there's a little there's a little garment on the end. I want you to show oh. what that is. So tapering. Some of the stitches here you can actually use for with the tapering function. So this little it's almost like a little index. It comes up in, it shows us which stitches we can use to do that with. So we can just select them. It's one of them. If I pop into here on the bottom, the plus and minus, you can put a different angle of degree on the end. You can do the same top and bottom, or you can alter it. It's absolutely brilliant for doing borders around quilt labels or if you've got some fussy cut something you want to like really highlight this looks fabulous you can do that as well so there's just lots there's so much you can do with this isn't it? On it yeah oh, what's off mean where am i at on these on the tapering thing up above so you don't have to taper at all oh i see so if you've tapered it you don't like the look of it so if you only want one end tapering even just just start it normally um, and then you want the bottom end tapering, then just leave that one on there and leave the bottom end with the taper on it. You can also select how many pattern repeats you want to do, just by going onto, you can either do it, pop onto there, and you've got a little calculator there. So say I want six pattern repeats of that, I just select six, okay, and it will do me six before it tapers the ends. So it would be six full ones with a little taper at either end. So again, it's something, just play with it. It is. Have a little go, yeah. I've seen some lovely borders on labels and all sorts of well, things done with it. Things. Yeah, napkins, yeah. anything like that. Yeah, really lovely. Yeah. It's got such lovely features on here. It's got far too many to get through. <laughs> yeah, well. You've got a little garment. What's the little? The garment? little garment is sewing applications, and it's this is like having a sort of a virtual assistant almost on board. So it's all the most commonly used things that we would do. You've got twelve of them. So. 
seeming. So I'm trying to think a nice one for you. So blind hem and shell tuck. There we go. So you've got blind hem. We'll go shell tuck. But you've got different, different ones you want that you can see on there, and it will set it. So you've got small, medium, and large. So it's on small, not large. It's automatically put all the settings. It's auto tension as well. So it automatically changes everything. So you can just sew. So and you would then put the edge of the fabric against against to get your yeah on the bias. Use the F foot. Yeah. And that is really nice. I so use. that Lynn asked that as well, you see. Yeah. There we go. So we're both both um, and again, on the same wavelength. Then. Manual. And we'll you've look got in the manual. manual yes. Because that really does explain everything. But in I more like detail. the way you, if you're not sure which is the blind hem stitch, for instance, you can come um, into here. You can go into that little little garment and yeah. you can go into blind. It'll tell, not only will it tell you what it is, it'll set it for you. So we've got blind hem. So we won't shell tuck. So if we go blind hem, again, so we've got woven or stretchy and knit fabric. So it even asks you what kind of fabric yes. you're going to pop in. Yeah. There are different ones. So if you've got stretchy fabric, again, it's put the right stitch on, altered it for you, and it's telling you what presser foot you need to use. All the presser feet have a letter on them which corresponds to this, and they are the same across all the machines. Yes. So you yes, don't but, have to think. But you do have to be aware that if you've got a 7 millimeter yeah, you machine, can't you can't use a 9 millimeter no, feet. Because no. that's something earlier on when Sally Ann was trying to find the quarter inch foot, she found a 9 millimeter one, and of course it slips around on the 7 millimeter. Yeah, no, you, you can't, can't get if the you other put, one. If you yeah. put the 7 mil on here, you would break your needle and yes. you might damage the machine. So no, always be yeah, aware. Use that the feet that go with the machine. You can actually see it's quite visible, the 9 millimeter feet. Because it's much wider. Yes. But it's just a really nice feature, this, which I like. And I love piecing on here as well. It, we've got it on the machine, we've got three different piecing stitches on the machine. So if I go to quilting as well, I'm actually I'm going to go back onto the patchwork, sorry. And if you look, you've got on here, so you can do it, you can do it with it so it will tie off front and back for you as well. And it automatically drops your stitch length to 1.8. Normally when I'm doing patchwork, if you have it on a long stitch, as you're cutting and moving, the ends start to come open if you're on 2.2 or 2.4, which is standard setting. So this, by dropping it to 1.8, you get a shorter stitch. Yes. And it just keeps it really nice and firm. So it's thought of everything. It is. It really ha no, it has. The people who, who made this have. Yes. <laughs> and the machine has. It, it really have. It's absolutely fabulous. Well, I mean, you're using the stylus. You don't have to, but I know, I would, I know I with nails, I find it better to use a stylus. Yeah. Because my nails... Please don't yeah. use the end of your scissors or a pencil. No. Because you'll damage the screen. <laughs> so, okay. Why I absolutely love this, I'm going to put it on Lockomatic, and it's just a real, if you're doing a lot of chain piecing, automatic reverse for us, when I get to the end of my first seam, press the reverse, it will automatically do that. I'm set this car. And it's asking me there, do I want to do the same size seam again? And if I say OK, it's going to sew that seam for me for as long as I like. So if you're piecing like patches together all the same yeah, size. Yeah, say chain piecing or something like yes. that. Or if you're doing like little inset seams, anything like that that's got to be really quite specific, you can get the first one done and then it will automatically sew to the same. Is that until you turn it off? Until you tell it otherwise, yes. So that's a really nice feature. And again, you've got the, the, the uh, ability on here as well. I'm obviously still in inches, but a lot of people are millimetres now. They're so millimetres as well. So you've got on here, you've got the option for the, on the settings here, you've got the option for the quarter inch or the seven mil setting. You've also got hand look quilting on here. There's just so much that's built into the machine yes. that you can actually do. Now you've got a USB port, you said. Mm -hmm. What, obviously you can save things that you've done to it. What can you bring in to it? Stitch composer. So, so that's it's a stitch, stitch composer. composer. It's not an embroidery machine. It's a totally different machine. So this is just purely for the use with stitch composer. Okay. So you can do, design them on your Microsoft, um, pop them onto a memory stick and into there. You need to format the memory sticks for the machine, which is in machine settings, which I think we'll have a quick look at now. So again, it's just worth spending the time. And again, when you're coming into here, um, you've got your variable zigzag and it comes across and that's for your ruler work foot which we talked about earlier. It tells me to drop the feed which is on the side here. It's very straightforward to do it. No messing around anywhere. Yeah, no taking forward. things off. And it's asking me if I've got medium or lightweight fabric and it's just set everything then for you to go. 
It really is. So even, you know, this is the thing, even for an absolute beginner, this machine is fantastic because actually it's taken a lot of the guesswork out, it isn't it? It will lead you, th lead you by the hand through it step by step. I always yes. say with a big machine like this, if you've got quite an upgrade, just have a quick look through the manual. If you're already on Elna or Genome, it's lovely because all the buttons are the same. Um, and just make yourself like a little shopping bag or a cushion or something, just to get used to all the different yes, absolutely. pieces on it. And then and start try out some of the lovely it. features. Mm. Then start exploring it. So I'm going to lose that. that. And come back onto here. So it's telling me here now, please make sure, because I've altered it, so it, it, the press, proper press foot's attached, because I've dropped the feed. It knows that I dropped the feed. It's asking me to, you know, make sure you've changed back to your proper foot before yes. you start sewing again. So that's OK. have got about five minutes left oh, on this right, one, So Jane. quickly through machine settings. This is spanner here so we've got on here we have got machine settings so these are common ones so we can alter the contrast um, the volume we can have it set for inches or millimeters if we want to and again if you want to go across you just touch that and off you go and again you've got the touch screen calibration which if you think oh it's not quite well I'm pressing it doesn't seem like you can calibrate it but I don't think I've ever had to do that to be honest um, again USB stick here, so put your USB stick in and um, it will say it will format it. it make sure you use an empty USB stick. <laughs> or you'll you've got stuff on that off. you don't mind losing because <laughs> it will wipe it and just put a folder on it for you. That's the other thing. You've also got on here a standby timer, so this is switched off, but you can put it on so if you haven't used the machine for say 10 minutes, it will just literally go to sleep and then to wake it up again, just touch the screen anywhere. And it and it doesn't, Brings forget, back it to doesn't life. forget the stitch no, that you were on or anything exactly like that. It just, just like your computer. It's a power saving yes. more than anything. So we're going across onto here. So we've got the upper thread sensor which is on. Sewing lights are on. So if we go yes. And you can turn them off if you want to. Some people, you know, maybe sitting in the dining room at night and somebody's doing something that you don't want to disturb them. So you can alter your lights if you want to. You can see actually by when you show, turn them on and off how yeah, effective how the they are. The difference it makes, yeah. And quiet mode is on as well. Um, that does, I know on the embroidery machine that slows down the sewing speed. I mean, this one is like 1,060 1, stitches a minute, I think this is. So, so it's yeah, fast. They go. If yes. you go fast. So why would you turn quiet mode off? Some people don't like, I don't know, I've never. Is it to stop it the beep? It stops the beeps, and some people just want the machine just to run. See, I like the beeps because it tells you when you've hit the When you've stitch done something length. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I thinking guess. when you've gone to the biggest stitch that you can do and things yeah. like that. No, I am. Um, <laughs> it's usually when I've done something wrong. And again, you can change the background colour on the screen. So you've got yellow and pink and white. Underneath, you've got the auto time off settings. That basically tells you how long it's been switched on but not being used. And then on the bottom, you can reset it back to all defaults. And we can go across here onto the stitch settings. So you've got automatic tension. To be honest, I never ever touch that. Once in an absolute blue moon, I'll have to touch that because it sets the tension automatically for whatever you're yeah. asking the machine to do. Underneath here, we've got remaining bobbin thread. So it's got the sensor. So when you're running low, it's on two. I always have mine on 0.5. And there's about a meter of thread left on the bobbin then. So it will come, and if you're going to start a long seam and it thinks, oh, it doesn't know you're starting a long seam, it's not that clever. But as you're starting to sew, if it thinks it's running low, it will tell you. <gasps> so you're not Brilliant. going to get right down a full length of curtain and suddenly think, I run out of bobbin yes. fill six inches after I start. Does it, does it pop up a screen or does it beep at you? What does it do? Both. 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 So it says yeah. bobbin running low or whatever. Yeah. 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 I find that so useful. I don't have that on my machine at home yeah, at the moment. It does make and a I difference. have done that, as you said. I think we run out. Massive curtain. You get to it and you think, oh, that went really well. And then you realise you run out of um, <laughs> bobbin thread six <laughs> inches after you started. So that's so, yes. quite good. And on the bottom, needle stop. We've got this set for down. You can have it set so it always stops up if you want to. On this one, again, adjustable start-up speed. So you've got the two options there. So it's the start-stop button or the foot pedal. Um, I used to tend to leave it on the middle, so it depends. Some people don't want to dive into it going full full steam ahead, as it were. Mm. So you can have it so it starts up really slowly and then speeds up. Leave it on the middle normally. Or you can have it so it just starts really quickly. It's entirely up to you. And then again here, foot height for pivoting. It's really handy. This If you've got, say, a quilt or a coat or something, really heavy curtains underneath, you could take the foot height up 
a little bit for pivoting so you're not trying to drag it round underneath the machine. Useful. We looked at the auto foot pressure before, that's slightly different. Um, but the foot height for pivoting, so when the foot lifts up to pivot, it's going to lift up that little bit higher just to give you so its freedom to move underneath. Top press the foot pressures underneath again. If you've got something heavy underneath, you can take that off a little bit so it goes through the machine much more easily. Variable zigzag, I think that's one we'll have to do one of these days. You use it with a <laughs> knee lift um, and the little, like, almost a horseshoe foot we saw. And um, people who like thread painting, it's a really, really nice feature because you use a knee lift to widen and narrow the zigzag as you oh, free motion sewing. Bit of this. It certainly is, but it takes that out of it because it's set it for you. Um, thread cut after auto lock. See, I tend to have one switched on, so every time I auto lock stitch, it will cut the thread and lift the press the foot for me. Sounds good. We're going to have to leave this one. Oh, we? oh no! <laughs> We've got the other machine to bring on, okay. and we can't. We're not allowed to run on on the I other think end. That's very sort of mean thing. of them. <laughs> it has been so amazing. I mean, yeah. I think you possibly put as much into that as we could possibly get in an yeah. hour anyway yeah. and you can watch that back if you want to if you feel that so much information has come mm. forward uh, you can actually watch that back on youtube later um, remember we are the only place you can buy this particular model um, in, in, in well no in in the uk not in europe yes you can buy it. you can go to france and buy it if you we have to isolate for so many days and the warranty doesn't cover you in the UK anyway. And it's very heavy. Well. And it is, oh it's heavy, it is a heavy, it's a workhorse it's, machine, yeah. it's a machine that you will use for years and years and years and it will do every kind of sewing that you might want, which I think is really good. So the price point is £1,999, um, which you can split into split payments of £399.80 times five. The machine will be dispatched to you once you've made your first payment. There's no interest and the subsequent four payments will be monthly and you are just paying exactly the same price as if you bought it in total lump sum today. So that's up to you entirely. It's how you feel about it. Uh, so the machine is already in the UK. It's ready, available to be dispatched. No extra post and packaging. If you've already bought something today, your post and package covers it. It will be coming directly from Elna. It does have a two year warranty. Well done if you have got yours. You really will absolutely love it. It's a superb machine. Um, so we are going to come back after a quick break with the 720 Pro. It's another sewing machine, but this is a different one, isn't it? it? So this yes. is a very different machine. Lots of people are excited about this one and they have been asking for it. Well, we do now have it. So it's again, it's in the country, ready for us, limited, but we have them. So you're not going to be waiting months to get it, I promise. So bear with us while we go for a quick break. Dra grab yourself a drink and we will swap the machines out and be back. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. sewing street or yarn lane customer no matter how many times you check out in one day you will only pay one postage and packaging so don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out you will only pay one pmp even if you check out multiple times in one day sewing street have our very own app you can now watch and shop from anywhere Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Keep 
up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! And we're back and this time we have another new machine. Now this machine is one that a lot of people have been asking for and they've been waiting for. Um, this is our <laughs> Elmer Ex Excellence 720 Pro sewing machine. That's what it's called. So it's 1699 but again you can actually buy this on split pay if you wish. No interest is charged. £339.80 times five payments. I'm, so, I'm struggling to read that because there's actually something in the way of the screen for me there. So yes, that's on five payments. So you get the machine after your first payment and then you pay the subsequent payments afterwards for the next four months. Um, now we do have people all morning asking about this machine. We haven't had it in stock and on air since January. So this is the first time back and here we are in June. This is a really fabulous machine and this is one you said that you just would never give up for all the tea in China. I have got a predecessor to this which is called the Elmer Quilted Queen. I must have had it for 12 years and there is no way I would ever part with it. None whatsoever. And I've got all the big machines at home. Yes. Um, because it's just such a robust workhorse. So to me it's the closest you're going to get to an industrial machine 
um, without actually physically. I used to have industrial machines, um, and it's it's just everything about this. It's solid metal, metal base. It just goes through so absolutely everything. It goes through absolutely everything, and it really is a good old workhorse. It's, it's going to last. But it isn't. It isn't just basic. Oh gosh, because no, you have no, got. You said two hundred stitches. You've got two hundred stitches, alphabets. nine button holes. You've got the alphabet on. You've got everything like that with it. Um, the one thing it doesn't do, which I was saying, it doesn't bother me because I it might bother you because you, I don't dress me. There's no free arm on this. It's a solid metal base. Actually, I don't use my free arm no, that often, to be honest either. with you, because I find a lot of the time the free arm is actually still too big it's for too a big small for what cup. you're doing. Yeah, and you so can just I always turn sew it from round. the inside. Yeah, you can I sew it inside the circle. Where there's a will, there's a way with this. Always is. For so that wouldn't put me it. off. You're all right. That hasn't no, put me off. It wouldn't, and I say people who have these will never ever part with them. They just don't. They're just such. There's just something about them. They're just such lovely machines, and it's got packed with features. It comes with a huge extension table, which we may yes, be able to find. Yes, we've got a picture with the huge extension table. There, there it is. Go. Look at that. Which that's is the extension table. It is here somewhere. But that's what you get. So you get that with the machine, but you also get some other bits and bobs, you do. don't you? You've got the knee lift with the machine here. Uh, it comes with a soft cover as well with it pull over the top um, and again the first project make yourself a lovely sewing machine cover to go with it. That's true. And um, can, can you use this for business or is it still the considered a domestic machine? It's a domestic, they are domestic machines. I mean these are brilliant if you make a lot of bags and things like that, curtains, anything heavy then they're absolutely fabulous for it. They really right. are. Right. Yeah. So again you've got your standard two year warranty with it which you can extend by a further three with us. So but they just they just go on forever. They do, yeah, I've seen and they these. sew virtually yeah. anything you um, could possibly want to sew. Because it's a really sew. good solid. This is metal here. Um, it's so robust. It really is. Yes, really and it, again, machine. it's got a nice big. It's got a ten um, inch throat space. Throat, it's a little bit yeah. shorter than the seven eighty plus. But it's, again, it's a ten inch throat space. It's really. I will thread this one because you might think, oh, that doesn't look like my machine normally threads. So it does thread. It threads basically the same. It just looks a little bit different from the outside. Um, you've got your top foot pressure lip dial here, which I really like. It's really visible, very easy to use. Tensions here. Um, again, I lived on about four. It's one of those you very seldom have to do anything. Well, modern with machines, it. you shouldn't. You don't. Know. The last thing you need to do is fiddle with the tension. Don't fiddle with your tension either on there or on the bobbin case. Yeah. If you want to fiddle with the tension on the bobbin case, buy a spare bobbin buy a spare. case. That's what I was saying earlier on today. <laughs> yeah. Don't fiddle with the one in your machine, get no, another one. Get a spare one, mark it somehow so you know it's a different one and then you can twiddle away with that. If you're using thick threads in the bobbin and things like that, you might want to. But yes, indeed. That's, that's how Did thing. you say we've got a message, Hannah? Oh, we've got a review here, FIFO review. Solid base, easy to understand dials and function keys. Smooth when sewing, love drop needle and scissor functions. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. And it's just things like that that just make life so much easier mm. for us. They really do. Um, so again, where were we with this one? So again, across. So again, we've got the extra stitch plates with it. So I'm going to pop these. So again, in that lovely box. In the box, I'm going to pop those over there for a second. And that one. And I'm going to pop the box once again here. Here. HP plate again, and the straight stitch plate. You've got all the feet. Um, Got a little bit of me. So you've got a single open toe free motion foot. We've still got little thread stands. We've still got a little quilt guide bar. The buttonhole foot with the stabiliser plate, which works exactly the same. The spool caps, the HP foot. We've just got the AccuFeed, AccuFlex foot here, which replaces the walking foot. The oh, can you show us how to put that on as I well? I will. I'll leave that it was out. one of the queries we had earlier. I will leave it out because they all go on the same. Um, and on this, you've got the convertible quilting foot, which again is one of those little feet. Now, I know they were here earlier because I looked at them. There we go. Which again is one of those feet. Once you've used it, I tend not to use these for quilting anymore. Um, it's a convertible one. Um, you've got the closed toe, the open toe, and the circular here. And they just change with a little screw on the back. But the beauty of these is you've got the option here of changing the height of your work. So just this little screw, whoops, a little screw on this side. So if you've got a really heavy quilt underneath, you can take it up. If you've got something really light, you can take it down so it's not dragging or pulling on the fabric. So that's a really nice foot to use. And again, we've got, I'm just conscious there's so much on <laughs> this know. again. Yes. We've got the quarter inch. We've got the over edge, we've got the zip foot, open and close toe satin stitch, blind hem, 
rolled hem, button sewing foot as well, plus your quilting feet here, and you can put on a quarter standard presser foot's always on the machine. You receive it. Easy chain stitch plates again. Let me just pop all these here. Oh, so is it like the other one? It just sort of pops out. It pops out, but on this one, it's on the corner here. Let me just pop that there. The nice thing is this way, you've got your standard foot lift on here. You've also got the extra high one, which stays up. And it up. stays up. It wow. stays up, and that's great for taking like heavy things underneath yes. it. Yes. Stitch plates on the corner. Just pops out on there again. Takes out. It's a brilliant way to get in a cleaning machine really well. well. I'll pop these back in again, pop it back in again. Good firm press in the middle, yeah, it's just a little one on the corner for this one. Extra high foot lift. There's a little piece on the back which has got all our stitch charts we can have on it. So I'm going to pop that again onto here, put that facing towards me. So I'm just muttering to myself this morning, aren't I? It's been a very long way. <laughs> So again, we've got mode one, you can mirror image, you've got mode two with all your decoratives and some lovely quilting stitches in here. Straight stitch needle plate, a professional grade, which is the HP. Let me turn over and you've got your alphabets. So you've got the seven mil upper and lower and the nine mil uppercase only. And this actually lives in the back here. There's a little, little attachment you screw on when you get it and it just sits there. And then when you're not using the machine, you're going to pop it away. You just slide it down the other piece at the back and it just tucks away out of the way down here. It's Which really is handy, isn't yeah. it? It's all thought of. Yeah. Now, we are, do only have 30 of these left now. Um, so just be aware of that. We were only able to get a limited number and this is now what we've got left. And it has been very busy already. So if you're thinking about this one, um, this is really absolutely fabulous. So do consider, just so you know. Sorry, we're back again. Them, yes, <laughs> yes, back, back, back to. Jane. You've got the chart there, but you've also got the um, the LCD screen on here, which I am probably going to have to move this around definitely because I can't see on it. So I'll do that. So I'm just going to pop this out of the way for a second and have a little move. Again, we've got a really comprehensive manual. So again, just it's got all the information that you need in here about everything with the machine. So it's well worth having a is, little. Is it just in English? Yes. Because again, that's really sometimes handy. it is when you get sort of you know they they produce for different countries, so you might get three or four languages, and you're I scrolling like the fact through the pages. It's just the one language purely though. in English this year, and again it goes through. It tells you it's got your shell tucks here. The lady was asking about earlier the settings, so your different buttonholes yes. and what would you use them for. So you know, and again you've got your memory buttonhole on here, so you can make large buttonholes if you want to. Everything's in here. It's worth spending a little time familiarising yourself with it when you start mm. because the screen is slightly different. So again, you've also got on the back, which I love, I've got loads and loads of industrial cones of thread and they just sit on here and you've got the little spool, I don't know quite what you'd call them. Spool caps, I suppose. They're not spool caps, see. They, they, actually, they caps. actually sit on the bottom. Small. They actually sit on the bottom Oh, they sit underneath. They sit okay. underneath, so because, because of the, bigger the big spools, cones, yes. they've got a bigger space yeah. on the bottom, haven't they? So they just stop. Them. You don't have to use a big, no, you don't have to no, use a big No, you don't have to. I mean, spools. I've got just yeah. a normal size on here, but a lot of us now are buying, if you, especially if you're doing a lot of curtains or soft furnishing yes. and things like that, you just buy the big cones and they, they do They good. last longer, they don't they? They last longer, yeah. And again, through here, it's exactly the same as with most of the machines for threading. And it tells you, on the top what you're doing so the thread here is one it comes through this little guide underneath here again let me do that make sure you press the foots up when you thread as usual because it opens the tension yes disc, so the machine i'm going to have to lean over to get this down so it's under round, and just pull it round underneath here and then pop it down that's just put the tension on through the take-up lever down down. I'm going to see if I can, if I can thread this backwards. I'll be very impressed with myself. <laughs> Which we have. There we go. Needle threader done. Sorted. And oh, I like that. It's so nice and quiet. It's too. just literally down and round the back here. Some people look at that and think, "Oh, that's I'm not used to that. It's something different." Well, it almost looks old-fashioned that mm. dial, doesn't it? Because yeah. that's sort of what they used mm. to look like. Yeah. But no, just threaded it just, just as fine. easy, just as easily, straight round and through, no problem. What's on the very far side this, 
No, um, just up, just above the tension thing, there's a, like a little dialy thing, yes. This here? Yes. That, that is your top foot pressure. Oh, right, which okay. Which is altered here. Um, and it's brilliant because you can really see, and it's very easy to do, you haven't got to go into anything. Because it's such sort of a, a workhorse of a machine, I would probably alter my top foot pressure a lot more on this because I might be using lots of layers with bags. I said to you before, I've had a horse blanket under my old <laughs> one of these in the past. I hope the horse and things wasn't like that. It. No, he wasn't wearing it at the time. It was a bit muddy though. <laughs> Um, and canvas, all kinds of things, yes. and then you would probably use that a little bit more, but it's very easy to access. It here. is, isn't it? Very yeah. easy to change that. Yes, it's quite straightforward to use at all. And it's got all the features we're used to. So we've still got the stop-start, so we don't need to use the foot pedal, which again, has disappeared somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, reverse, lock stitch, needle up down, automatic cut, speed control. One of the other things I really love with this machine as well is we're on a straight stitch, is what we always default to. And you can see it, yeah. But you've got your width and your <coughs> length here, so you can literally alter using this. Or just using a little dial. Just using those. And I just find that so handy. I mean, it's great with the little buttons we can press normally, but that I just find so handy. So your width and your length, and again, because we've got no width on these machines, you've got these huge amount of needle positions that you can use on them. And it's just it's one of the features that I find really handy on this machine. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I like that, like you're turning the dials. Yeah. And it's like it's just there, it's in front of you, you haven't really got to think about. It looks as if you've got a twin needle button. You've got a twin needle function, you've obviously got it on the 780 Plus as well. The twin needle function is designed to work with the twin needle that comes with the machine, which is a two millimetre one. So you can pop it on, I'll pop it onto a different stitch, but you can go onto here and it will show us that it's active and it will come on there, so then I'll take it off again. Um, but some of the more decorative stitches will zigzag, it will actually drop the stitch width to accommodate that 2 mil twin needle. And um, if there are some that they can't, will it not let you it stitch it? won't let you do it, no. If it you've bleep. selected that twin if needle. If I select the twin needle, it doesn't want to do twin needle But it is for that. the 2mm gap one. 2mm yes. twin needle that comes in a little pack with the machine. Um, you can get wider ones. I use a 5mm for stained glass yes. bias tape. Well, but again, doing denim, sometimes you want yeah, it. Because like on denim like like jeans, the you have that double line. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, I would not use a wider needle for doing a more decorative stitch. No, here. definitely. No, no. You've got two needles that have got to try and, yeah, and they're do moving. all the sideways. And, yes, they're yeah. moving. And they thread slightly different as well, the twin needle, but it tells you how to do it in the manual. So... The main difference being when you come down to this end, you thread the, the left one as normal and the, the right one will come through the front here and straight through the needle. Yeah. But it does show you in the book, it's quite straightforward to do. I'm just going to pop these away. What else would you like to know about Ooh, this? Oh, I mean, oh, oh, hold on. We've got half an hour, so what do, else do we want to look at? Has anybody asked for anything specific? If not, can you sh can you show that um, aquafeed foot? Yes. Uh, because we did have that query yes. earlier about how do you yeah. put it on and off. So again, I can lock the machine out, exactly like we've done the others with the little key. I may have to come around the other side. I don't know if you'll be able to get this or not. So the, the aquafeed, this is the place to walk around. And the other thing with these, you can pull this bottom plate off so you can get different plates available for it. So you can have a quarter inch or in the ditch or the open toe. And it's nice because you haven't got to buy a whole new walking foot unit. Yes. It's just the bottom pieces. So it pops on. The big difference is this little piece here. Normally we have the, the little arm almost on the side that sits on top of where the needle screw is, don't we? That makes yes, it actually right, walk. Yeah. This one actually clips into the back. And you need to make sure that you've got it clipped in because that's what's making it walk. So I'm going to have to pop around the other side to do this. Press the foot down. Again, thank you now. Oh, that's on tight. Now you'd normally have the machine facing you. I would. You? So I'm going to take this off this side. And again, take the whole foot holder comes off. Um, I tend to leave the foot attached to that. I do, because you know why? Um, Far otherwise, too easy to lose it. <laughs> it's not only just that, but I have seen people trying to put it on back to front. Well, if you've got it, the ankle oh, attached yeah, to the I foot, you can't that. get that wrong. So again, this just sits around here. In fact, when I put it on, I may actually turn the machine around so you can see. Let's just take this out a little bit. I like the fact you haven't got to take that screw out completely. No, it doesn't. And even for check, you know, for putting the free motion feet on, you yeah. don't. A little tip for the other big walking feet, I always say to people, when you take it out, 
pop it back in a couple of turns before you try and put your walking foot on. Makes life much totally easier. Totally agree, it does. And again, make sure you always give it that quarter of a turn with a screwdriver just to make sure it's really tight. I'm going to try and turn this round now so we can see at the back where it goes to because it does look slightly differently. Oh, gosh, I'm going to let me pick that up now. Can we see the back of the what machine where the foot is? Let's then. have a look. Need to see me. There we go. If we can go in. There and you are. can see on here, that little silver piece actually clips in to here. So it uh, clips in easily. Have you clipped it in already? I've so clipped it, it in, in really already. Easily. Do you want me to take it out and redo it so people can see? Would you? I yeah. Think. So I'm just thinking of the query we had earlier. You know, all these feet go on the same way, so that's out yes. now. I'm going to pop that back in because I've just taken it out. So let's put it on. We put it round, and you can see that's just gone straight in there. Right, it's clipped in. You need to make sure it's clipped in because if you don't clip it in, it won't walk at all. In fact, it won't do. I need to finger tighten that. And then I say again, always that quarter, quarter of a turn. Same with the needle when you change that. And that's it. It's good to go. So was the 780 walking well, it's exactly the same? the same. So yeah. it's the same thing. So goes exactly that, the I can't same. remember the name of the lady. I think it was Lynn, but I'm not sure. Um, hopefully that answers her. Oh, she wanted to know how to take it off. Do you have to just pull it just out? Just take it off, yeah. So you do the same thing. Unscrew. Just unscrew it. And just pop it out. And it comes off. And you do like just it. sort of yep. pull that's it off. It just comes off. Yep. comes off. So that's fine. what she was asking. Yep. And yes, she was right to do that. <coughs> That is brilliant. Um, now you've looked at, so you can put that back on again, you've looked oh, at some of the decorative that. stitches on the other machine and it has decorative stitches on yeah. this one. Yeah, it does. Um, does it do the combination bit? Can we do we that? We can do, we could do all kinds of things on here. There we go, let's just have a little, there we go. Pop that, let me turn it back round again. That we can, it's, it's quite substantial. This, I wouldn't yes. want to carry it around. So, this anywhere. isn't one to take to classes, this is the one you have in your no. sewing space. I've taken it to quilting classes before for like free motion stuff, but I wouldn't recommend it. I've got a bag that it just fits in a trolley, <laughs> but it's it's quite substantial to yes. carry around. I'd say mine is actually smaller than this, so yeah, so it's, it's got a standard throat space on it. So, it's yeah. nice and robust, isn't mm -hmm. it? it? Can it handle is. all sorts of things. I just don't hesitate to put any. Well, I wouldn't hesitate to put anything under the 780 plus either. But this one again, a lot of ladies' bags are very popular at the moment, aren't they? Yes, bag making absolutely. Things, yes, a lot of the yeah. groups have got these. That's what they use because you've got you've got that sturdiness of it and the heavy duty, but you've also got the decorative stitches in there as well, which is really so. handy. We've got another message apparently. Across the, it's not across my bottom. Uh, hey, what is the max speed? Thank you. I've got Lee. to think on this. I've Lee got a feeling. Yeah. I haven't. Um, I will find out for you. I've got a feeling it's about 1,100 stitches a minute on this. The 780 plus is 1,060. These are all over 1,000 stitches a minute. Which is fast. What I can do, I'll put it on straight stitch for you. And um, we'll just put it on full speed and see how fast it goes. <laughs> It'll be fast. Pop that down again. Press the foot down. I think often really, and don't forget to put your speed dial up. Okay, going up onto there. I'm going to zoom off again. So it moves. Yeah. Now I couldn't count that far. <laughs> I love it because they are used to always have industrial machines and you get used to the speed of them. But I mean, it's great if you're doing long rows great of stitching. Great long rows of stitching. Great rows of stitching, yes. So yeah. if you're doing furnishings, like curtains, for instance, like yeah, even Brilliant some, some you know, binding okay. on quilt, yeah. and it's just yeah. a long row. And it pop the HP foot on as well, again, okay, with the plate, and just go. And remind me again of why the HP plate and foot is better. The HP is a professional one. It has got the single out in the centre here, it's almost like the industrials, and it works purely with this foot, which if you look a lot of it looks like a little straight stitch foot, it gives you an absolutely brilliant quarter of an inch on it. And again, the machine will grey out everything that you can't use with it. So the hole in the plate is that little tiny it's hole little just tiny there? Hole here, yeah. And it's brilliant for fine fabrics as well, because you haven't, with your normal needle plate, we've got sort of all the space here, haven't we? It's usually straight yes. across. This is a straight stitch run, but it's usually straight across. So you've got all that space for it to take the fabric down, especially when you start sewing, which is why sometimes it chews it when you start, mm. if you start on the edge. But with this, it's just that single I'm interested hole. that the foot is narrower as well. It's very narrow, straight stitch foot. So it gives you an immaculate, well, a scant quarter of an inch is absolutely brilliant with this. 
Yeah. So that's really good. Mm. So what about the other buttons on the top of the machine? Buttons on the top of the machine. So we've got we've looked at the width and the length on here. Mode. So we've, we're in mode one, mode two, mode three. Mode, and back to mode one again. And that corresponds to the stitch card. That's that the stitches, got, which it? is here, but because we've got them on the screen, whether I mean, I tend to use this because I'm used to using it on mine at home. So we have all the different stitches on here. So again, if I want a different one, I can put number eight. So all the utilities, I just put number eight, and it takes me onto it. And is it showing you a picture that of what number eight is? Yep, it's on here. It's on the screen. That's the screen there. That's and the screen. It tells you the foot foot again. Kind of stitch. So if I want eight, so I want number four, number four, and it takes me onto stitch number four. So you've got all what the classes utility stitches in mode one. So you've got your straight stitches. You've got your straight stitch as well, number two, which will automatically do a few reverse stitches, and then at the end, press the reverse, and it'll do it again for you. Um, so many days ago, I'm just fed up of having to press the button to go backwards mm. and forwards a few stitches. The stitch number three has got the little lock stitch when you start and then it will automatically lock stitch when you finish and what's lovely on this one number four which i think we're on now no that's number four that's your piecing stitch that's a quarter inch piecing stitch you haven't got to go into any anywhere else to find it it's on there already instantly for you and um, you've got your zigzag uh, your elastic zigzags on here as well number seven is a little applique stitch there are more in mode two lots more but that's sort of a standard one Number eight, I love this, is a serpentine stitch, which is really handy for doing long, say, borders and things on quilts, because we're not all perfectly straight sewers. So do one that's not supposed to be straight. So, exactly. <laughs> that's my Keep theory, it simple. exactly. And again, there's a couple of other bits and pieces, and so you've got nine on here. Um, oh, that's a nice one. And then zero. When you come onto the other stitch, into mode two, and press mode two, and say I want stitch number, oh, I'm going to have a look at, we'll do a decorative, so 98. But if there's a zero in front of it, then you need to put the zero in as well. And it will just change it for you. It's quite straightforward to use. Very straightforward. Yeah. OK. We've got a question. This is from Lorraine. So Lorraine has said, could you please show how to thread the needle on the 720 Pro? Yes. I certainly can. We did. We did just. We did do we it. Just show it. But let's show it again. We'll show it again. Let's show how easy it is to do. So we're going to take that up. Actually, don't need to cut. It just makes such a satisfying noise. It this does, machine doesn't it? As well. is, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm finished. So press the foot down. Oh, hang on a minute. Need up. I've been using far too many machines recently of different types, and you have to <laughs> press the button. You think that button isn't on this one. So press the foot down. And take on thread the needle, so it just threads perfectly normally, and it goes through. I'm going to have to lean forward on here if you can see. It goes through. There's a little piece here on the side. If I come round, yeah, you might be able to see it a little bit better. It comes through underneath. Um, where are we at? There we go. Through the thread guide on the front here. Through there's a little piece here. Yeah, so it goes through. And that's it. Done. So that's like number seven or something, isn't it, in the stitch? Yeah, some of sequence. them have got number seven on the front, but this is just a little piece here. Yes. Um, and then I can just pop this out and it's threaded. Just pull on the loop. So I'm just, I think it doesn't always, sometimes it's, I'm, oh, sometimes it's, I'm left handed and sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it depends which side of the machine I'm at. But it's very straightforward to thread. It, the key is making sure that your needle is in the correct position. Yes. That's a real And you've got key. a needle up down button to do that. You have, you? which is the two little triangles. So you make sure that that's in the correct position for threading the needle. Yeah. And I just do that automatically. I do now, yeah. The other thing that can put it off, I mean, one, if you have too fine a needle. So if you're doing a needle like um, a 60 or 70, sometimes yeah. it won't work. It won't with those. And you definitely can't use it the twin needle. Definitely, no. <laughs> Don't. I've done that. And Broken monofilament that. thread is another one that I always have to thread by eye. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't like to try and use it yeah. with that. And again, if you're using a heavier thread, obviously, hopefully, you know, you, you match your needle it. to your thread. Um, but it is usually the finer needles that it might not go through. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, definitely the twin needle. And the other, the only other thing, if it still doesn't work, if you've got a, like an 80 or a 90 or whatever needle in, 
make sure it's up high enough. Yes, make sure you've actually put the needle in. It's all very well in. lowering and raising it by the button, but it isn't, if it isn't in high enough, it won't be in the right position. Yeah, and again, with your needles, the same as the feet. Just give it that little quarter of a turn when you change your needle. And again, change your needle regularly and match it to your project. Yes. Yeah. That's speaking my thing here. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I just, the, you know, it's, it's a whole other thing, that, isn't it, all the needles? I don't think we've got any needles on with us today, have we? No, not today. There's a whole other subject, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so just let's recap the price again and the split pay. So it's £1,699 for this really super duper machine, but you can get it on five split payments of £339.80. No extra cost, no interest charged. The machine will be sent to you after your first payment. So if you buy it today, it will be sent in the next few days. It is in the country waiting to be sent. Um, and then your subsequent payments will be taken on a monthly basis. We have got a price comparison. Oh, it's not. Okay. It's exclusive to you. Yes. So you won't oh, find this it. one's exclusive to it us is, too. It is, yes. Ah. So currently unavailable because it's exclusive to us at the moment. Okay. So that's, so if you look elsewhere, make sure you're looking for the 720 Pro and you won't be able to find it. Um, but so this is exclusive to us at the moment. Again, so as I say, five split payments if you wish to take advantage of that. Post and packing remains the same. So if you've already bought something today, you don't pay it anymore. It's going to come directly from Elna to you. They have a two year warranty on it. And I have to say the customer services for both Janome and Elna are second to none. They're absolutely excellent. You really get good help and frequently you might actually get James. <laughs> frequently. <laughs> People are always surprised when I phone them up. They're going, oh, <laughs> they're going, you're on the telly. I expect you to the call me. You shouldn't be answering. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so you've got that sort of really personal touch. And I think that's important to know because when you're buying something at this kind of price value, you want to know you've got good support mm. available. And yeah. I think that really is so, and so I mean, very say important. say we do excellent manuals and it's so many people I know don't look at the manual. <laughs> you only look at the manual when things go wrong. Yeah, and it's worth just having, you know, don't try and digest it all in one sitting, but have a little flick through yes. when you get the machine. Check everything's there, and you've got all your bits and pieces, um, basically how to thread. The other thing with this, um, and I just take it for granted because I'm so used to it on mine, is you've got an independent bobbin winder. Oh, so you that's can actually handy. wind your bobbin while you're still sewing. I like that. Yeah. Because how many times that's have we done it? You run out and think, oh, I've got to unthread the machine now. Yeah, unthread the whole machine to do it. Yeah. And have you still got the, um, does it tell you when the bobbin's winding low, when the bobbin's low? Oh, no, I don't think it does on, this, on one, this one, no. Okay. I'm, I'm, hang on, I'm saying no. I think it, I, so long since I've been on this particular <laughs> one. Mine's not as high tech as this one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just pop into settings. So we have got, so in the settings here, you've got the screen contrast, the noise. Automatic cut needle up down. Let me have a look on here. Start up speeds again. Favourite stitch, which we talked about before. Um, got the bobbin. Let's just. So again, you can actually customise it, can you, to yourself? You can. You've got all the different pieces on here. I say this is more high tech than mine at home. Um, so we have got all different types of pieces. Got bobbin winding speed. You can alter as well. So if you want to. Um, once they say put insuring elastic or something on the bobbin, you don't want it with any tension on it, really, do you, when you're sewing it in? So it's True. just things like that. Yeah, yeah so, so you can just adjust that. You can alter it, yeah. Yeah. So now I have to just bear with me okay, a second. So you've got some there other, we go. little, set up other little things. Have thing a little play with it. That. So I'm just. So you've got all your stitches on the bottom here for decorative as well. So just by pressing this, and um, again, we can go through them. Just by turning yeah. that. Yeah. And if. That's the one you want. Have we, can we do a zap on the screen? Nope. I had a little play with this when I came in, and it's not one that I've played with that often, unfortunately, at the moment. So I tend to, to be honest, I go into mode to select my stitches. So mode two, um, and I would just scroll through. To what or I you can just want. put the stitch number in. I do put the stitch number in. So if I want 095. And that's it done. That's the way I tend to go through it because that's how mine works. Yes, that's, uh, that's so how I would. I made that look very complicated. You did, because you don't, because by scrolling through it, 
you're taking longer actually you're you taking longer you've got the stitch number. chart so i just go in and go right i want that stitch so yeah, put the and in. i just pop the number in and go but just remember to put the zero on the front if it's got a zero yes otherwise um, you're good. but it, but the good thing is you see the stitch as well you can see the stitch again um you've also got your mirror image you've got the elongation with the satin stitches that we had on the other machine as well um your favorite stitch setting so we can save those um start over key again is one which is on the other machine we don't look at that often enough that's really handy for if you're doing obviously like an octagon tree skirt so you get to the corners and decorate thinking oh you turn where's the needle going to now so if you hit the start over or back to beginning key it starts at the beginning of that stitch again for you even if you were halfway through it oh, so that's right. really handy yes. And that again, is. it's really handy for applique as well. If you yes. look at your applique when you're doing it, the other machine and same application has got an applique cornering function with it, which works in a very similar way. But this is brilliant for doing your applique. If you watch, you can press back to beginning, so you can turn your corner, pivot, and know exactly where the machine's going to. So start from the design again, not yes, halfway through not halfway it. through, yeah. yeah That's that's, that is that. really handy. Very handy little... Um, it's a little there's a little lot little of machines, and people don't often, they just... I think we just look at what's familiar to us, yes. don't we? But isn't Anything it the same else. with your cooker, you know, and yes. you cook, well, I cook everything on 200. Or the washing machine. <laughs> or the washing machine, definitely. Yes, two programmes. Two programmes, yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's it. it. We're all the same with it. And again, you've got your lockout function on here. I think this is just such a robust, solid machine. It's an it absolute is. workhorse of a machine. It, it, it's a good workhorse, isn't yes. it? Yes, very Definitely, so. yeah. I wonder if you, if you stitch a lot. It's yes. a really good one to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's just such a popular machine. And I mean, say its predecessor was the um well, the Genemi Quint the six six hundred or mine. I've got the Elna Quilt. I think that was Queen. the six six hundred. I think that's what I've Debbie's had, got. Yeah. I, that's what I used to use. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know Debbie's got the six six hundred yeah. as well, which she absolutely loves. But it is, even have one it of is these a lovely now, machine. Sure. And it's just such a nice solid machine that you can throw anything at it and it yes. won't bat an eyelid, no. It is very good, and I like the way you can uh, adjust the pressure of the presser foot. Yes. Um, which is really good if you're sewing with all these different fabrics. Yes, and if you're doing you know, bags and you've got like two layers of fabrics and a zip going in and things yes. like that. You can use the pleathers and yeah. lining and wadding. Uh -huh. And again, as you get used to your machine, you will know when you need to alter it and how you need to alter it and everything like that. It's just almost second nature. It's like all the machines, and you just get familiar with what you're using on it. Very nice, it's lovely, same. lovely machine. It's, it's just a shame. I say, we can't say with the extension table as well, it just gives you so much Yes, if we can, can we see that picture with the extension table again? Look yeah. at that. It's a large table. It's a really nice large table. So that's really good when you're working on bigger projects. I mean, to be honest with you, I tend to leave my extension table on full stop. Mine never comes off. I'm lucky enough I've got a sewing room, so yes. I can just leave it on the table and don't have to. Yeah. But if you haven't, the ideal thing again is with that table, the legs fold in, so it just is flat, so it will just slide down the side yes. in some way. Yeah. You haven't got to leave it or manually, you know, think, oh, I've got to take all those off to put it away. Yeah. We'll get it out again. Well, we've so. got 10 minutes left. Is there any last bits that you can show us on this machine? Shall we, shall we do a bit of stitching? Yeah, let's have a look. Let's, let's find one of the, you've mentioned about tapering and things. Tapering's on the other machine. Tapering's okay, on so the other machine. It's not on this machine. You've got the satin stitch stitches. You've got the satin you? stitch on it. I'm going to have a look at some applique on here because you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've got about 15, 16 different types of applique stitch. The, the lovely one on here, which I'm going to go on to, is it's like a little tiny, it's brilliant for invisible applique. It looks like a tiny, tiny little blind hem. Oh, yeah. Again, it tells yeah. us the foot on here. Oh, I better slow it down a bit, haven't I? Yeah, you I don't want to fast speed. Um, and again, we can alter it. And we can alter things as we're sewing. So you can you can get you know your settings can be. Let's just press that to stop. So you can really really set this exactly how you want it. Again, you can set it to automatically cut for you. So you can set this. So you can see where I've just been altering. That's your default. And if you'd got this in, say, a white thread or even a monofilament, you wouldn't actually see, see it see on the at machine. All, and again, I've altered it out. You can alter the width of the bite here and take it back again. So there's so many different things. I just love that. In fact, you can, can do it whilst it's working as well. You can do it while it's working. You can do on that on the other machine as well. Um, and and you've, got, you've got an M. Does that mean you've got a memory? Yes, it's just, it, it just memorises your sequences. So if I wanted to memorise, let's pop back into, let's have a look onto here. 
Um, oh, I've got, I've got my favourite stitches on here. Okay, and you can see it's memorised that for me. So my second stitch again on here is one. Memory, and it'll be one, nine, three. Memory, and that's it. And again, 202 is a lock stitch. So if I only want to repeat this once, 202. And that's it. Don't forget your memory. So and that now will stitch out that little that sequence. That will stitch out that little sequence for me, which is one of my favourites. And will it, actually, will it stay on there, one. or does it, when you turn it off, it Turn goes. it off so it will go. Yeah. Right. But they're so quick to put together, these. And again, with a 9mm stitch width, it makes a massive difference on them. But they are very quick to put together the sequences. And to be honest, I very seldom keep anything in the memory, even quilt labels, because they're just dumb. dumb. Yes, so easy to do. I'm going a bit... That's my fault, it's going a bit squiffy, because I'm oh, talk, yes, because talking and looking the other way. Going, it oh, look, <laughs> shall we go this way? Yeah. Well, what have you got there? These are lovely for doing borders on labels. It's a little needle and thread, the cotton reel and the scissors. It's on oh, the other machine so as cute. well. And it's just so quick and easy to put Is that on this one as well? It is, yes. They are so lovely, They're so I like sweet. that. And the 9 mil, you've got a really good size stitch on there. Yes. They're lovely for quilt label borders, these. And it just would be straight if you fed the fabric straight. Pardon? It so would be great. Be straight if I, yeah, I was too busy talking, <laughs> getting distracted. Like, and sewing at a very strange <laughs> angle. <laughs> They're very, very We've easy. We've got a really nice message from Tim here. Uh, I have the Janome 6700P, yeah. equivalent of the 720, and it's brilliant. Easy to use and really robust. Can't recommend highly enough. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. I think that's the one I've had before. Yes, yes. probably. Yeah, yes. It is. Yes. It, I mean, it is a lovely, robust machine, isn't it? They are. It does what it yeah. says on the tin, really, doesn't it? Yeah. It does everything I it think says. Once, once people sort of get one of these, they go, right, that's it. That's just what I say. I've got my old one. I must have had it for 12 years now, yeah. not longer, and I wouldn't part with it. And I've got... All the, top all the singing and dancing well, the ones old as singing, well. But, you know, with some stuff, I'll just, I'll just get that one out and do it. And I love it free motion quilting as well, I yes. like. And how, oh, how do you change the feed dogs? Is it on the side like the Feed dogs one? are on the side here oh, again that's like again, this. that's easy. That's down and back up again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite straightforward to use. Everything's sort of here. So it will tell you in the manual, so there's no need to sort of think, oh, gosh, what's going to happen? Look in the manual. Yes. It'll be in there somewhere. All the different stitches and their applications are in there as well. How to alter things, um, how to change your needle plates, how to use the buttonholes. Yes, you can sew buttons the, on with these the as well, which is lovely. Um, there's a little button sewing, so you can actually sew your buttons on as well with these. And yes. the same on the other one. It clips on slightly differently. It clips on the back of the machine and up, so it's fixed. Um, and it's brilliant. If I'm, to be honest, I never used to do buttons and buttonholes on anything. I'd just do a lap on a cushion, it'd be fine. But since I've had these features, everything gets buttons and buttonholes on it yes. because they're so quick and easy to oh, do. Oh, they are. Exa exactly. They, they are. really are. Well, if you had a son who often had buttons taken off his shirt because friends would pull him from the back and it would unpop, mm. you'd soon learn to mm. sew your buttons mm. back on. Yeah, no, I didn't have one of those. <laughs> oh, I did. I had one of those. <laughs> just a daughter. Boys. Yeah. yeah. But they well, are, I mean, it's great. It's such a lovely machine, this. It is, it isn't it? It really is. Oh, they both are. Both fabulous machines. Yeah. So thank you ever so much, Jane. You're very welcome. So do you know when you're back in? I think I might be about next week. Next I'm week. I'm not quite sure. Not sure though. Because we've actually got some stock back in now, which yeah, is great. Yeah, it's so exciting. We've got machines. Yeah. got machines. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. That's really lovely. Um, so let's just recap our two machines. So the one on the picture, not the one sitting next to me, is the 720 Pro. That's 1,699. That's the sort of semi-industrial-ish um, it's the uh, Elna Ex Excellence 720 Pro sewing machine, so a very robust machine. You can't buy it anywhere else in the UK, um, currently that is, and we have been waiting since January this year to get this stock back. It's got over 200 stitches, it's got an LED screen, it's got the scissors, it's got the stop start, the st it's got, it's got extension table, which is, that's the one with the extension table. Lovely big area to sew. So it's all your standard things plus, you know, and the speed of sewing, if you so wish, um, is incredibly fast. So two year guarantee, two year warranty with it, um, and a really good customer helpline. We also offer this on split payments. So you can get it at £339.80 
times five payments. After you've paid the first payment, the machine will be dispatched to you. It is available in the country, so it is ready to go. And then you pay the subsequent four payments over four months. Um, don't pay anything extra for that. We don't charge any interest whatsoever. We, it's just an easier way if you, you know, if you don't sort of happen to have £1,700 in your bank account waiting to be spent, it's another way of getting this superb machine now. However, we don't have endless amounts of these machines, so um, they are less than 30 of the 720 Pros. So if you are interested, just be aware of that. Uh, you might want to speak to him indoors later. We appreciate that. You might want to think about it, but they are um, on the website, on the live page, and they'll be there all day. So look on the live page, um, and that's there. That, that'll be there all day for today. Right, that's that one. But we also started this two hour special with this one. This is the 780 Plus. It's not plugged in, so I can't turn the light back on for you. But this also comes with an extension table with adjustable feet. It has this lovely big LC, L -E, L -E -D, LCD, LCD screen. I know I get those mixed up all the time. It also has the extra light that you could pull out. Um, I don't know how how you did that, Jane. I'm going to leave it. Just there's a little button on the back. Can you see on the top, top of the machine? That's it. There, yep. Just press forward slightly. Oh, there. there you go. Oh. There we are. So all these lovely extra features. It's got memory, so you can store things. So you can store your stitch selections. It's got a USB point, so you could go to Stitch, stitch Customizer on Microsoft and create your very own. Um, oh, Gillian, who's emailed in, said she's got this machine. And she has said, I bought the Elna 780 Plus last August, my first ever purchase on Sewing Street. This is a big jump for my 30-year-old machine. And I've had to admit, it took a while to become familiar with it, with all it could do. I'm now in love with it. And my tip for quilters is to use the HP foot and plate to get a perfect scant quarter-inch seam with no chewing of fabrics at the start. Thank you, Gillian. That is really useful. It does come with three different throat plates and they're really easy to replace. You just have to push a lever and up they pop. So no screws to unscrew, which also means you can keep it clean in there as well in between your projects. So this one is 1,999 available on five split payments. If you prefer that method, £399.80 per payment. It is sent to you with the first. It is available in this country now for us. It is exclusive to us. Um, and again, two year warranty, great customer service. It comes with so many feet. I think you said 20, 22 it feet, didn't it? 22, 22, 22 different, different feet pieces, plus the humper yeah. jumper. Yeah. Um, and a nice little box to keep them all in as well, which is really nice. Excellent manual. Now this will stay underneath us on the live page. So if you, until midnight tonight, so if you want to think about it today, you can of course do so. Um, talk to a partner if you need, because it is a big spend, we appreciate that. But we have limited stock, so just, just be aware of that really. Um, we don't know when we get them back again, and it's not something you can find elsewhere in the UK because they are exclusive to us. So we now have to look at the menu for tomorrow. So tomorrow we have got at eight o'clock fabulous fabric. That's going to be exciting. And then at nine o'clock we've got a baby changer with Julie Kelly. I should imagine she's talking about a changing mat and bag as opposed to swap your baby out. We know, never know. Um, at 10 o'clock, Delphine's back with me. Oh, lovely Delphine, doing her applique animals. I just love that. That is going to be so busy. It's going to be so much fun as well. And then Julie Kelly's back with her bread bag and cushion panels. So it's really going to be jam-packed with lovely information there. And then we move on to Yarn Lane tomorrow at 12, when we have needle felting landscapes with Delphine again. And her needle felted landscapes are absolutely brilliant they're really really fabulous and we've had them on before and they're lovely so i am back in tomorrow because that's what i'm doing so i'm going to be here with julie and with delphine which will be really nice i'll be doing fabulous fabrics first thing if you want to buy one of these beautiful machines please go for it um, and don't forget they'll be on the live page up until midnight tonight 
other than that, all I need to say now is enjoy the rest of the day, enjoy the sunshine, stay safe, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.